We're finally yeah. doing EFAP again. Yeah. yeah wait, this is year six beginning, right? That's how that this works? This is the beginning of the year six arc. Man, what yep. crazy adventures will we have? Who knows? Yep, EFAP number one of year six. We gotta make this a real banger, or else they'll all leave. Yeah, this is, this is the pilot episode for the brand new reboot. Uh, run by Disney. So That's right. People are worried about Disney. it, but they shouldn't be. Disney are great. Disney controls all the seasons of all the television. Hmm. That's why it's all so good. Yay. That impeccable eye for quality. So, um, well. when we were premiering Ahsoka episode one, people were like, I really want to see what they have to say about episode four. It's like, yeah, because everyone said it's good. <laughs> if you think episode four of Ahsoka's good, you're retarded. I mean, I, it's already been spoken about in a couple of other streams anyway, so it's not like there's some kind of huge reveal. But the main thing is uh, good old Ray Stevenson. Take him out. Take his performance out anyway. And uh, what exactly is so great about the episode? It's hard to say at that point. Yeah, it has uh, nonsensical combat, wastes a lot of time. People, like, nobody does anything intelligent. Um, I have no idea what the stakes are. We've introduced amazing things to the uh, amazing capabilities involving <laughs> the temporal nature of reality who knows what will happen but i can't remember, wait to see guys, the star Filoni whales save star wars fix the yes. problems of whatever the hell they're going through yeah baloney's gonna save star wars guys it's gonna be he it's, did. It's, he's like oh yeah it's true he did and boy he did such a good job at doing that oh boy i think everybody wow. would concede mando seasons one two and three with boba fett and kenobi being added to Star Wars has helped it dramatically. Most people say, like, when I think of great Star Wars, I think of the OT, and I think of all the TV shows. Mm. I think. Definitely not fodder content that is to be forgotten, and, and most people can't even remember what happened in Mando Season 1. Nope, they can't, but I can, and it was never good. <laughs> How could you say that? Random oh, wow. film talk. Have you seen all of these wonderful shows? Uh, hello. And um, I have seen Mando season one and season two. And then I watched Kenobi through EFAP movies. And I have no interest in watching Ahsoka um, or oh. Boba Fett. Um, should I ask, how, how does Ahsoka compare to the others? Uh, um, um, it, I, I, I'm going to say that by the end of this, it might be like the worst. Jesus. When we're done, it might actually be the worst. Um, it, 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 it's, it's proudly introducing it, the multiverse, so yes. Yeah, I, so it, that's a terrifying prospect. It might be the worst thing that they've made. As in, like, alternate timelines kind of thing? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's scary. So, me. yeah, from what I've heard, like, Ahsoka's gonna view herself on different paths in the world between worlds. And then she's going to realize that her fate was always to be where she is now or some bullshit. Ooh. It's, okay. the, it's funny. There's like fan speculation on what's going to happen. And every one of the ones I've read, I'm like, oh, God, I hope not. Oh, God, I hope not. Oh, God, I hope not. But I mean, I don't know why there would be any cause to speculate in a way that's going to improve the story, you know? It's so funny because what as much as Star Wars sucks, it's like, at least it doesn't have multiverse stuff. That it's like, wait, 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 wait. Now wait. We're in the era of multiverse right now. Yep, and it's doing so well uh, with Marvel stuff. Why not introduce it to uh, Star Wars so we can do everything for Star Wars that it did for Marvel? Hooray! Isn't it nuts? That's um, what people are wanting. This is probably all the damage that came from stuff like No Way Home. What we were talking about when it came out, it's like wrong lessons being learned. Everyone's like, let's get these multiverses going, everybody. And, uh, mm. you know, a lot of them are still cranking up at the point of everyone being incredibly exhausted of them. It's like, maybe don't. Maybe don't. Well, the fact that everybody's exhausted of multiverse stuff a couple of years into the trend. Uh, meanwhile, there's probably still a whole bunch of things in production <laughs> that have multiverse as a major component. <laughs> you as we know, this... Marvel's locked in for the next four years. There's so many writers that are like, what do you mean they're tired of it already? We've got loads to show them. Like... Oh. Yeah, they've been so great so far. True. They've been amazing. That's why people aren't tired of them at all, because they're so good. Yeah, mm. That's why people are still going to the theater to watch Marvel movies <laughs> in, in record numbers. Man. Um, I haven't seen The Flash, the new one. Does that have a multiverse? Does that try and do the same oh. thing? Or... 
that's, that's the, the one that um, yeah, made all this discourse volcano, yeah, basically. Like that's the mass. one that people think that it killed audience investment in a multiverse. Well, I guess the audience that was still left that went to watch it, yeah. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Progressively killing it one film at a time. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, I'm kind much. of wondering, like, there's, there's a whole bunch of reasons why theoretically using a multiverse as a storytelling uh, device would be something that you may want to do because it allows for the cameos and the nostalgia and it allows for different versions of projects to uh, be ongoing at the same time. Like you can have the Robert Pattinson Batman. I don't know if that's having a sequel um, at the same time as yeah. however many other yeah. Batman, which means that you have more projects. So theoretically, if more of them are hits than misses, but then that doesn't work when you're spending $300 million on each miss. So the interesting thing about that as a proposition is that I don't think that that's the motivation uh, for the most part. I don't think Marvel has any interest at all in creating a continuity beyond their mainline MCU. I think uh, everything will always revolve around their MCU and whatever stuff that they take from the multiverse of like existing properties like Fox and Sony, they'll all try and incorporate it and have it all revolve around their MCU. Like, that's probably what Deadpool 3 is going to do, right? Is integrate, like, the Fox stuff in there. But it all revolves around, like, the mainline Marvel Universe rather than creating alternate continuities that they can, like, fire multiple shots and see what works. Yeah, I saw um, a rumor that... Batman is an anomaly, I'd say. That's yeah. supposed to, like, set up the next Avengers film, Deadpool 3. And I was like, how weird is that? Is a Deadpool movie because... set up Avengers. Well, I mean, the fact of the matter is that, like, Deadpool is probably like more profitable at this point than the majority of yeah. uh mcu projects we're about to find out just how profitable right like in the same way that we are with pretty much everything because um mm -hmm. there'll be fears for all of it there'll be fears for batman when he pops out part two or batman yeah 2, whatever. i think um, so especially uh, with brand potential brand confusion and everything well let's say it caps out at 700 million i feel like that's that's going to be like a amount it's like well Got a good run there, Matt, but we're gonna we're gonna commit with wow. Brave and Bold Batman now. When the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rides is made over a billion dollars over ten years ago, seven hundred million ain't fantastic. It's not terrible, but it's not it's not amazing either. Mm -hmm. I mean, not when you're spending. I mean, how many hundreds of millions uh, are these I think per the film? Batman so. was actually cheaper than uh, a lot of these other films. I think the yeah. Batman was like one hundred and fifty million. Yeah, which is which, you um, know, compared to the other ones, it's cheaper. Peanuts, yeah. It was. I just looked it up. It's better. the Batman was two hundred million, uh, oh, which okay. is going to be cheaper, but it's still, you know, oh, it's I a lot it was of money. Less obviously, than that. Damn. yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, maybe I'm the really next worried one will be for Deadpool cheaper? three. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm worried for Deadpool know, three as well. I'm hyper worried about Deadpool three. I mean, it's probably going to have like crazy time travel shit in it. What did you guys think of Deadpool two, by the way? Because I rewatched that fairly recently. Uh, so the thing is, I remember really liking it, but I haven't seen it since it came out. Same. So. Okay, fair, because, I mean, there's obviously time travel shenanigans time travel in, that, in that one. But yeah. it's condensed to, um, it, it's not multiverse. And whether they, because you've got the whole post-credits sequence where he, you know, goes backwards and forwards in time a, a whole bunch. And it could be that maybe they're going to use that gimmick to open the multiverse. I, I don't know if they've said that they're not going to do that or anything, but... I, I, I mean, don't, it would surprise know. me that, yeah. like, that thing that they could use. I guess it's more so that I imagine that 3 is going to revolve entirely around it, whereas 2 more so just sets up the scenario. Yeah, 2 kind of uses it almost oh. like the Terminator does. Yeah, kind of. Until but you get to the, you know, the post credit scene. Yeah. Deadpool 3 will probably be like hyper self-referential about like time travel. It'll probably have crazy like things happening in it. Because it's not going to take itself very seriously, which uh, the thing is, all Marvel, like the fact that the director of the Marvels is like, you know, the thing that will make our movie stand out is that it doesn't take itself very seriously, that it's like a sort of fun movie. And just find that statement really Yeah, funny. and you're like, oh, oh, uh, it's going to be shit which, then. Well, just which one wasn't trying to be the funny, goofy, like, movie, you know? Which, which Marvel movie? I guess Secret Invasion wasn't trying to be that. Maybe that's why they said that, to try and distance themselves from it. Yeah, we're not like Secret Invasion, the one that we all agree sucks. At least we all did agree 
<laughs> that's oh, nice. On that one, that was nice. Yeah. The whole world was like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Eternals, that's right. Eternals was also one of the ones that took itself seriously, and nobody liked it either. But I mean, nobody liked Ant Man. That's <laughs> that true. Was taking it, that wasn't taking itself too seriously. Bum, bum, it's almost bum, like bum. it's just bad writing. Almost, it, yeah. Dominator. Um. But anyway, welcome to EFAB yeah. episode 251. That wow. is one out of 50 episodes toward the next uh, anniversary. I'm going to keep pointing We've that out as we go. reached the second quarter towards 1,000. Because years just go by. They go... And um, yeah, it, it's still kind of... It feels weird. Six years? Year six? It feels That feels like a chongus number. Um, I think seven is going to feel like a real big chongus number. And what better uh -huh. way... To celebrate the return, than to have a guest that has been requested again and again and again. And it's good to finally have you, sir. This is, for everybody who doesn't know, random film talk. Uh, welcome Hello. to EFAB, officially, I guess. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, yeah, thank you for inviting me. And I guess thank you to everyone who has asked you to invite me. Because um, I'm still pretty new, relatively, to this whole YouTuber thing. Um, and, yeah, I, well... On Tuesday, like three days' time, is going to be one year from when I released my first Rings of Power video, mm. which is essentially what caused my channel to grow. So I'm uh, I'm very, very new to this whole thing, and I'm kind of learning as I go. Well, uh, I, was, I think you're doing pretty well for someone who's pretty new to it. Uh, well, that, thank you. that Rings of Power has given a lot of people potential careers. It, uh, <laughs> it's, just, it's just that good, you know? Everyone couldn't stop talking about how great it was. <laughs> um, yeah, you've uh, you, you tackled the Hobbit um, after that sort of right. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm still in the process of doing it because um, the way that I mean, I didn't plan to do this from the start, but the way I've found that structuring videos makes the most sense is to do one on each episode or each film in the case of the Hobbit, mm -hmm. and then to do like a final roundup at the end where I cover everything, knowing like perfect information about the whole. You know, I, I don't need to know what comes next because I've seen the whole thing now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that I'm still working on for The Hobbit, and um, part of part of what I've done today, actually, is I was checking out a couple of the fan edits of The Hobbit, just to see uh, what differences they uh, what differences they make. And there's one that I watched that cuts out 51% of the footage, and it's unironically, it's pretty fantastic. That's what I've heard. Oh, yeah, about right. some of the yeah. fan edits. Yeah. So I'm going to um... watch a couple more, but. Um, cause I, I think that a lot of them are going to chop, chop out different parts, but there is a lot that you can remove without, uh, changing how coherent the film is. Um, yeah. And, and you went after Barbie. Why would you do that? Wow. Yes. Sorry. I'm a bad person for that. Women. I was, uh, well, uh, yeah, I wasn't planning on doing that. Um, same with Avatar 2. I actually, I did an Avatar 2 video, um, which was nowhere near as long, but I did Avatar 2 and Barbie just cause I went to the cinema and saw them and was like, yeah, I probably have enough to say about this to warrant a video, and then my notes just kind of kept getting longer and longer, and I thought, you know what, it might not be uh, Tolkien-related, but I'm going to make a video, and I'm going to say what I want to say. So, mm. Plus, I hate women, so there, there is that. Ooh, yes. That makes it easy. It does, yes. It's, uh, that's the hidden motive. Um, what have you got in the pipeline? What are you interested in? What do you, what do you think needs to be taken down a peg, or perhaps raised up? Are you any praises? So... Um, well, this one might be controversial because I know that you, Mola, have said that you don't like this. Rags <laughs> and Fringy, I'm not sure. But the first video essay that I did was about three years ago uh, when I had like 50 subs or whatever. And that was on Blade Runner 2049. Yeah. Um, so I really, really like that film. Mm -hmm. um, that is the one video essay, I guess, that I've done that's positive. Um, and I as Barbie. <laughs> oh, oh, of course, of course. Um, as for what's going to come after the final Hobbit video, I don't know, but I think I have decided that it's going to be positive. So one option is the Lord of the Rings. Um, I could try and approach that in a similar way to how I've done Rings of Power and the Hobbit. Um, another option is Arcane, because obviously Arcane is going to have just about just that, yeah, yeah, it's going to have more seasons, which means that theoretically, if it, I mean, I I really, really, really hope that it maintains the level of quality. Yeah, we all do. Uh, yeah, but if it if it doesn't for some reason, then there's I'm going to have a lot to say about that anyway. And I feel like if there is any chance of me having a lot to say about season two, I might want to 
um, unless I come up with a better idea, I might want to cover season one first. Um, apart from that, I don't know. So at the moment, my brain is just in full Hobbit mode. Well, you've got uh, exciting prospects ahead. And, um, well, and, 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 and look at that. Look at you, you could be doing all those kinds of things, but instead you've been dragged on a 10 billion hour podcast to talk about art fundamentals. Ugh. Yeah. Horrifying. But at least well, that's true. Format, but of checking out a video you know that's that's exciting who knows where it'll take us but before then it is worth talking about <gasps> the vinyl figures -na -na -na. absolutely guys there's only four days and 23 hours you and 38 need... minutes and 23 seconds left go go Buy go, them go, now. go do it if you run out of time they're gone forever this is a, it's a limited time They'll run explode. after this Yes, ab yeah. absolutely. All the ones that aren't purchased will explode in the warehouse, killing millions. So you have to make sure that you buy them because after four days go by, they're gone forever. You will never be able to get your hands on them. They'll get onto the black market. They will be, the, the prices will be exorbitant because they're limited time and unique and amazing and cool and very awesome. So you better buy them now. Yeah. They come in real neat packages, and they can stand on a shelf, on a desk, on the floor if you really want. Yeah. I don't want to judge people too much in terms of what they end up doing with them. You know, it's really up to you. Yeah. That's the beauty yeah. of private property, I guess. Yeah, because <laughs> here, at, here at EFAP, we, we are pro-private property. <laughs> You can own your own figure. You can own your own private property in the comfort of your own home today. Floor so game. buy now. Yes, Seriously, links buy now. in if, description. They will be gone after four days. Yeah, you you that, need that, to get them. That's worth emphasizing. Yes. If you were thinking about it, if you were holding off for a while, now is the time if you want to need grab to one. Buy them. Yes. You've got less than five days left. They'll be gone forever. Uh, gone. Damn, and everyone else, out, what, what, what's going to happen is you're going to see them behind all of your favorite YouTubers, whether it's, well, not the three of us, right? You'll just see us in person, so it's different. But when you go and you see Az, when you see Drinker, when you see all those guys who have all their super cool stuff behind them, look at us, we're neat, we're awesome, we know what we're talking about, you'll be seeing them there, staring at you, and you'll be asking yourself, fool that I was. Fool yeah, because anybody who has like just a you know, plain was, background, it's like, what are they an expert in paint? I don't know. Like that seems to be. What are you trying to imply? Got to fill it with figures, otherwise, how is anyone gonna know? That's and as just... we all are going to learn, paint on a wall is is the really good art. Yes, so, that's yeah. that's gonna be relevant actually. Yeah, damn, I didn't even think about that because I was just sort of it's memeing. True. But there it goes. You know what? Art imitates life, or life imitates art, whichever. Both. Fuck it. Both. So yes, they are there. Uh, only under five days remaining. Today, though, we're going to be checking out a video called... Uh-oh, I accidentally killed my own wash together. Whoops. That's uh, cool. but something... I didn't mean it. I just did it. I, I'm sure you didn't mean it, but nevertheless, you it's fool. Been I was too busy buying even more of those incredible vinyl figures Maybe because he knows that in four days, five days, they will be gone forever. <gasps> he knows that procrastination is not the name of the game. Not mm -hmm. today. Maybe another day it will be, but today, ironically, it is not the name of, of the day. Uh, there's only three people in the watch together. Who's holding out? Hmm? Hmm? Well, uh, I think it was random. Wow. Uh, no, I'm in. No. <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. Oh, all right. Okay, okay. It there it is. All right, he got in. He got in. We're good. My yeah, screen must have been lying to me. Good. Yeah, he, he got he got in, guys. Don't worry. We he was able to get in. Pop in lost. His little icon popped in. Oof. He was lying. No, nope, that's not true. I don't have an icon. You, you, that's you not true. Lying. That's impossible. Yeah, <laughs> because of everyone. It's just your. You're devious. Lies you know, and slander, that's where we are now. Not me, look at my face. I'm not deviant. Well, actually, I do have a bit. I've, I've picked my especially devious face. Um, <laughs> but it's just an act. I'm just cheeky. I'm just cheeky. This is called You're okay. Wrong About Modern Art. And okay. the reason that I was made aware of it was because it's a response, in part, to Moist Critical's controversial opinions on art. 
Um, oh, and I was like, well, I wonder what his controversial uh, opinions on art are, yeah. because he's not one for controversial opinions. He um, like, he plays no. it safe, 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 safe. So he's a safe boy. He said something, and then it pissed off this guy, who's like, "It's time to learn you about modern art." So before we hit play, <clears throat> we know the meme. Everyone knows the meme. You had art, and then modern art was like this this bin on the floor, and it was like, what? No, literally, it was just a bin on the floor. That's modern art. Mm-hmm. So it was like, hmm, what's this? What's going on? And then someone said, that's bad. And then someone else went, well, what is bad? And then <gasps> they, they were like, whoa. And that's where we're at, pretty much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> whoa. So uh, it summarized it real well. Uh, I, I, I guess, it, you know, we, can, we, we could talk more. Or we could let this man take it away. It's, uh, it's really up to you guys. Well, what would you, um, what would you propose we discuss before we start? With a title like You're Wrong About Modern Art, maybe we should put out our opinions mm. on modern art and what that means to us and what we think about modern art. We've all, I assume, got a story where we went and saw some modern art and we were embarrassed to be human. Um, yes. That's all, that's all happened. Uh, I've told mine several times. I believe Fringy has too. Uh, yeah, just a big canvas that was just red. I was talking with my <laughs> father the other day about this, that, and the other thing. And my father is an architect. And he had mentioned to me that one of the things that you have to do as an architect, there's a lot of city codes and ordinances and rules for if you erect a building or if you add an addition to an existing structure, there needs to be a certain amount of work that you put into maintaining the style that is already present um, within the local area. For instance, there's a lovely town called Deadwood up in, I believe it's South, uh, South Dakota, uh, I think it's in South Dakota. I went there once, and it's like this old west town. That's where Calamity Jane and Wild Bill Hickok are buried, and it's where he got shot. It's an old west town. It's really cool, but it's modernized, and it's a bit touristy, but it really has that vibe. However, <gasps> on one of the main streets of Deadwood, which isn't a very big town, uh, there is this ugly gray box that's just this modern building that is constructed for pure utility and probably pure ugliness. And it sits in the middle of all of these buildings from the 1800s and early 1900s that have this gorgeous brick and rustic signs. And it, it's a it, marvelous looking town except for this one horrific building. And that to me is what comes to my mind when I think about modern art. Because architecture is a strong part of art. And I really hate, and we all know my opinion on painting bricks, but <laughs> I, I really hate this uh how modern art comes through in the buildings because buildings are things that we leave for future generations typically i don't like the idea of saddling those to come after us with these horrific ugly minimalist gray and white boxes called buildings um what was the question the is the funny the words modern art don't really like that 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 concept doesn't evoke what the words are supposed to mean anymore just art that's yeah. new. It's like, no, it, it evokes like the negative. shitty art. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, okay. Hmm. Are you an artist or are you a modern artist? You and know? then people be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't like anything from it? And it's like, no, 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 no. I don't want to be too hyperbolic. Yeah, um, have you guys... Weeks through once in a while. Have you guys heard of that one? Um, I wish I had the name of it, but I assume you guys know about Martin it. Martin Luther King one. The, the robot that is constantly cleaning up its own leaking. Oh, the blood. One? The blood... One. Yeah. Yes, uh, I that do. Doesn't ring yeah. a bell. Okay, Fring, you'd love it. Um, I probably I would. would like him. It was. Uh, it. Yeah, it was. Here's an image of it. Um, the the construct itself is just a machine that's constantly mopping, or rather, you know, just pushing back all the blood that's coming out of itself, or oh oil, God, blood, whatever. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, there's so much to draw out of this. You watch it as it, yeah. it's just desperately trying to get the blood back in slash oil, and, and it just keeps coming back out. Um, I think it ran for like a year or something, and yeah, people just watched it, and they would think about what this thing evokes. And I understand that, and I appreciate it, and there's work that went into the creation of this thing, and holy yeah, moly. it moves, it's striking. I mean, the blood on the floor, this concept of... You know, are we, is that what we are? We're constantly trying to clean up our own messes. Is life futile? 
and all sorts of things you could draw from it. And, th and that's like, oh, that's interesting. That's neat. One must imagine the robot happy. One must imagine the robot. Yeah. Oh, and we, um, and all that stuff, uh, we watched a Harmful Opinions video, Mahler and I did, where he brought up a lot of cool uh, modern art, uh, things of that nature. Yeah, so, so uh, that's something worth mentioning before as well. I, uh, uh, turns out this video had been responded to by someone called Harmful Opinions. It's going to be one of those, like, a name I've not heard since the before times. He's, yes. um, uh, the, I think the most well-known thing he did was uh, calling out Candid, I would assume. I'm not actually sure. I don't want to summarize his career that incorrectly. That comes to my mind but... for his big thing, I suppose. Um, always a lad with very interesting perspectives, and uh, he talks about uh, this video and how he's got uh, some favorite more what would be called modern artists versus not, and that, um, you know, the value and the blah, 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 and, and obviously he had opinions about this video as well. <laughs> um... I, I guess I would say, yeah, I'd recommend it. I recommend the channel. Um, you're not going to find you agree with him on everything, but hopefully you'll find that he's no, got right. insightful POVs on a lot of things. I like the way he makes arguments. I like the cut of his jib. Yes. Might, might it be uh, worthwhile to mention before we start that we have a, we have a, what I would say is a more broader definition of art than a lot of people have. Uh, do we? I think we're. I, th I think, I think we're certainly after watching this, there video, are a lot of but... people who would say that there are certain movies that aren't art. Oh, that uh, sort of or, perspective. You know, are yeah, they are they being hyperbolic when they say that, or do you think that's for real? I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure. But someone says know. like this isn't I, even I, art. Like, do you think they mean it or? Sometimes I do. Yeah. Sometimes I think they do. Sometimes I don't think. Sometimes for example, I think they would, like, Sometimes they do mean it. Yeah. Someone might say Quantumania is not art, and you're like, why? And it's like because it was made strictly for money. It has no artistic like integrity or merit, and it's 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 the opposite of what we should be striving for in the in the industry or aspect or skill level of art or something. And you'd be like, okay, but loads of people like even if that was true, I'm not sure I buy that as an argument. But loads of people worked really hard on that film. A uh, lot of artists as well. It's, I think it would be impossible to call any one film that if if the requirement is as long as one person uh, felt artistic and and inspired when they were making something as a part of it. Like, I, uh, I guess the the point being that uh the way that I and I presume you guys would approach it is it's bad art. It isn't that it it's not art. It is creative expression. <laughs> it's bad art. Good. What well, yeah, mean? and now you've unraveled. Oh, no. you've... Oh, no. Well, I mean, the worm I can, can is open. It has bad and the worms cannot be put own, back into the can. Again, based on my own perceived, you know, like my own perceptions of reality, my own subjective experience of existence. I do like. So then, yeah, all right, leave me alone. Yeah. You know, they sit there with art, not art. You're like, here's the problem with that. You explain it all. You're like, let me present an alternative good art, bad art. And you're like, wait, you think that makes things easier? <laughs> you're like, uh, well, I, I, I'd like to think so, yeah. It's like, how People do you have like good it. and bad? People seem to really not like it when we present to them an idea that they believe in. They just don't use those words for it. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's... I have a feeling that in this video, and it happens all the time, all the fucking time with people we cover on EFAP, people will say, no, 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 there's not, there's not good art and bad art, it's just about X, Y, Z, different interpretation of it. But then they'll say, this movie sucks, this movie's great, this statue's great, this statue's horrible, this music stinks, and they'll, they'll always do it, they'll say it all the time, and then they'll say there's no such thing as good and bad art. Well, the thing is, like, if we if we want to just we, that's fine. We can I can just change the words to you know art I like and art I dislike. Yeah, that <laughs> that'd be the one that's the most agree. No so, one's gonna uh, criticize you for okay, that. Okay, sure, we'll, we'll we'll run with that then. It's not that I would say that something isn't art. I just said no, I boring. Like it. We, go. Go, we got to do more than that today. We can't just say it's about art we like and art we don't like. Bye, everybody. Da, 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 da. Well, <laughs> so, bye, yeah, everyone. Toodaloo. I mean. I mean I think it's I think it's interesting to dive into why what Rags just pointed out why everybody ultimately feels pretty comfortable in one way or another. The best example the is when quality of art beyond their own subjective experience of art. You know, I believe there was a chap we covered slash interacted with a long time ago who said to me in a call that there's you know, you can't you can't call the Last Jedi bad because there's not really any such thing like it's really down to the individual, blah, blah, blah. and then I said, okay, well, what about the room? And he's like, oh, we all know the room is bad. Like, I feel like that breaks the entire system. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it has to. You can't, just, mean, you can't just say that. Like, 
fucks it with I guess, I guess the thing is to me is like, I don't feel like saying that I think something is good or bad, you know, obviously, the more contentious when you say that you think something's bad, de like devalues something as a form of creative expression. I mean, it is creative expression ultimately. I feel like dismissing something as not art can be a little bit more like, cool, oh, all right, calm down. Mm -hmm. So, like, but if you were to go, to sorry, go on, Fringy, were you? Oh no, no, that's it. Sorry, um, yeah, I was going to say, like, you could go really extreme with it, and like, what would you guys consider to be something that, under no circumstances, is art? Because I'm kind of of the opinion that anything, as long as like the the viewer or the person perceiving the art, um, quote unquote art, if they're able to draw something out of it then that makes it artistic. Um, so even like nothing, like literally silence. Um, I think someone may have mentioned this before, John Cage, who, uh, the composer who wrote a piece of music that is, I think it's called like four minutes and 33 seconds or it's something like that. And it's just silence. Every bar is just a rest. So you get the orchestra up on stage, he counts them in, and then they just do nothing for th four minutes and 33 seconds. Um, if someone quote unquote hears that, and is able to draw some kind of meaning out of that, then silence is art. I believe that the better way wow, to probably sorry. put that is that they experience it, because that is going to create a sense in us. If you turn up to an orchestra and they don't play any music, that's going to create something. However, I do think that most people consider that below the bar for qualification of, like, you know, creating yeah, something. Yeah, like, if you win an award for that, like, fuck off. Sure, yeah. but if the <laughs> point... If the point of the piece is to make a commentary on what you just described, then would that not be enough meaning for it to be considered artistic? Um, I don't. I don't know if I would want to cancel it out from being considered artistic. In fact, it's it's a pretty good hypothetical. Once you decide that, or if you decide that art has to be intended, it can't well, be accidental. I would say that as, uh... I would say that art needs to be either purposeful or sufficiently subconscious. In the sense that we've, if you are, we've had this conversation. I yeah. remember before. We might, this might take a while if we. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like a year ago. It's time again. Yeah. But but yeah. yeah, I guess to wrap it up, if you are um, uh, taking a photograph of something that you find meaningful or interesting, is an artistic thing. But if you accidentally drop a camera and it just lands and snaps a photo of just whatever it was in front of it. That is not art. Yeah, so I disagree. If you drop a camera and then take a photo, the second that you recognize something in there that you believe has like some sort of value to you, then I would say that's, that that's different. Art. Um, yeah. I'd say that's different because if you see something and you pull some sort of meaning or something out of it, and you're just an observer watching it, I don't think that makes it art. That just means that you are able well, to wait, pull something that, out of it. So, so like you drop a camera. And then it snaps a pain, uh, like a picture accidentally. And then you look at it and you're like, oh my God, this is like beautiful. No matter, and, and let's say it's like genuinely, like everybody on the planet thinks it's beautiful, but because you didn't mean to do that, it's not art. It's not art. Okay, is a, is a yeah, mountain art? <laughs> no, I do not uh, think that a mountain is art. Unless a mountain was created purposefully uh, by some sufficiently capable agent in order to express themselves, no. But a naturally occurring mountain is not art. So if a, if you were to believe in God, then that would make the mountain art. Mm, um, I mean, it would have to, right? Because that would be like intention. It, that, well, the it, reason why I'm asking is because that's a justification that a lot of religious people will give. Um, you know, the natural beauty of our world could not possibly have been the result of particles smashing into each other at random. Is is the argument? If people if people make that argument in their mind, I, I suppose they would consider that art. Yes. Well, I so, wouldn't, though. Out of curiosity, Fringy, what is absolutely not art, as a uh, random film talk mentioned earlier? Um, so, uh, I would say that, like, nature as it exists, like, without some sort of perception of it and uh, some input, I don't know if I'd say that, like, existence itself is art. Like, so I don't know if I would say that a mountain is art in that it exists, because obviously I believe that it just occurred as a process naturally, and that, like, how do you draw the difference between Some, that and the f random photo from the drop camera? Um, I I think the I think that um there are some amount of uh I think that something I would say for that is that there are some amount of even even if it's like I'm not I'm not sure how I want to square away accidents in terms of art you know 
Mm. Like, I'm, I'm not sure that I want to, because how do we, how do we deal with like, you know, happy accidents or something? Well, of course, yeah, uh, an AI generated like hair um, simulations, or you drop a bunch of balls in a in a pachinko machine, like, and and what they end up, maybe they're all paintballs, and where they end up splatting down, does that count as art, or is that that too much randomness to now count? I assume it still counts. Uh, I, I, wait, sorry, it could you say that last part again? So, like, you throw a bunch of paintballs into a machine that bounces them around on pins, and then wherever they exit, they splat down onto a piece of paper. Whatever image they create is now yours, right? Even though, like, your your artistic imagery, even though there's not much intention between you and the final image. I oh, I get what you mean. Well, it's possible to be intentionally random. You can yeah. you can say I'm going to create a, a painting by you know randomly throwing paintbrushes at the wall. Yes, it's going to be random, but the intent was there. Mm -hmm. I, I figure that's just uh, an example of how you can create some gray well, I areas. Thing, right, is, I mean, would you make the argument by virtue of you even having the camera in your hand that even if you dropped it, that you could you know attach some broader intent to well, that? I think that this, the, this uh, hypothetical was to try and highlight zero intent on the creation of the image. Right, right, like yes, like a, 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 a literal accident. There was no conscious effort yeah. made in uh, that process. Whereas even, like my my floor for art is very, is fucking subterranean, but there's that huge chunk at the bottom that's virtually worthless, but technically qualifies. Um, so like a, 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 a 10 year old being told by their parents, you need to sweep the kitchen, it's part of your chores. The child sweeping the floor is an act of, you know, in a way, it's an act of their expressing themselves. Technically, is it art? Sure. For the purposes of most discussion, would I call that artistic? No, it's, it's basically worthless unless there's some more conscious process and making the sweeping of the floor some sort of expression of who they are. And I think that whatever uh, framing you, you create or limits any kind of boxing in of any of this, the, the extremes always come up and they're difficult to deal with. Um, mm -hmm. The tough yeah, topic. and then people get really mad as well about it. I think well, people really <laughs> seem to be unwilling to bite a lot of bullets when it comes to the artistic discussion. And once you just, once you just like close your eyes and let it wash over you, and you're like, yeah, yeah. sweeping the floor is artistic, whatever. Yeah, like well, at I that guess, point, I mean, the definition kind of loses some of its use, even though technically speaking, I would, I think I would agree that the kid sweeping his kitchen is a form of art. It's, well, it, it's just not really a useful definition at that point. It's kind of funny how um, most people might resist that right up until the kid out of boredom, you know, hits two dots and a smile and makes a little face. You're like, oh, well, that's definitely I art. At that point, somebody would say that's art, yeah. I mean, I would even say that if the, you know, parents come down and they're like, holy shit, you did a really good job. This looks amazing. Like, they, they, you could arguably consider that to be art because oh, for, the I, perception I, I, of the parents. I'm exactly. saying that, like, yeah. to get it to a point where people can understand it easier is just uh, one stroke oh, okay. in the pile of dust. Someone would be like, "That's just that's just dusting, whatever." But as soon as you make a face out of it, they're like, "Oh, I understand now." You're like, "Yeah, there you go." Right, but then it's just how far do you want to push it in terms of a uh, in terms of what what it means as a process. Art as a process or a product. So the know. cleaning is not art. What are you art about? <laughs> yeah, like... this, so I saw I saw somebody say that like a lamp post isn't art, which I hate to break it to you, but it absolutely yeah, it is. is. Yeah, you need to check yeah. out some more lamp posts. So maybe. this is the thing you gotta when you're just like, no, that's not art. You need to chill out. And we do this all the time. We expand the it. minds because a lot of people, yeah. uh, you would say like designing a car. Yes, there's like artistic elements, but it's not. It wouldn't be art. It's for function. It's like a what are you talking about? <laughs> a car is obviously someone, an absolutely art. During a recent trip um, over to South Carolina, we went up a bit, about an hour's worth, to a North Carolina transportation museum where there used to be a Norfolk Southern like railway station, and and they had a whole bunch of old cars out there from the. 40s, 50s, 60s, and the trains of all eras, and it makes me kind of lament how a lot of cars now just look bland and boring and shit, when cars used to look really cool. Man, and, I'm not sure I agree with that. I feel like cars still look really cool. Um, some do, uh, but I think that there was a certain aesthetic that cars used to have that was very striking and prominent that I think we, for the most part, lost. I think the vast majority of vehicles now are very bland, non-distinct, um, and uh, uninteresting. So it's it's interesting because you might have, like, there are going to be a lot of cars that are built 
not a lot of cars, but there are cars that are built for uh, form, not form, for uh, practicality overall, you know, land speed record, Formula One cars, all that kind of thing. Um, you don't, apart from like the color that you put on it, there isn't really any thought given to what it may look like because all you care about is whether it can do the thing that you're building it to do. Well, and most cars Formula One cars look thought. awesome. A lot of most cars you see on the road, a lot of thought is put into their aesthetic, but I feel like the aesthetic that is uh, agreed upon and decided upon in uh, focused towards making is not an aesthetic that is anything nearly as interesting or striking or um, pleasant as what we used to have. When Would you we say had. that's reflected in uh, buildings as well? Yes, I think in a way it is. Uh, I think with interiors of buildings as well uh my parents watch uh, hd tv shows and so sometimes when i'm over there i i kind of watch them and a lot of these shows have very very cookie cutter kinds of concepts for the interiors of buildings things are very structured and organized and flat a lot of grays blacks and whites a lot of boxes straight lines very kind of sterile kind of looks um and I think that's often reflected in the way that we uh, design a lot of buildings now as well. Um, I think we see that reflected in the painting of brick and you know, the biggest horror is when they like add on a modern thing to an older thing. Like it's like like an infected thing that's poking out of yes, it. Yes, an addition that's modern. Yeah, and a lot of places will they will literally not allow you to do that. Um, if you had, I know once my parents did an addition for a courthouse, uh, and the courthouse was it was like from the, I think, 40s or something. So it was brick, and it had columns, and it looked really nice. And then, yeah, exactly like that, you know? McDonald's look, like, too clean and sterile. They look... Too many buildings look like, like penitentiaries and sanitariums. Yeah. They don't look like places where human beings with hopes and dreams and expressions and creativity live. They're just dull and boring and bland, and they're so copy-paste. But it's um, art but yeah, still or no? It's art, yep. Yeah. It just, I hate it. <laughs> so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, which pushes the, I mean, if we, you know, it depends on how much time you guys want to spend on talking about what would qualify as uh, art when they're, I don't know. It's the more difficult. Not too much, because this is a 43 minute video. Well, the difficult like follow-up question probably... is, um, what would make it good or bad, and is that even possible? Yeah. I, uh, that is a... That is a question that I don't think can be answered in any short amount of time. Like no. if you, even if you were just if it eject storytelling like for a minute, and if you're just talking like McDonald's, um, the the image of the McDonald's that they put in, like why is one better than the other? I, I feel like you could talk about that all day. Yeah, uh, and, and... Um, well, you could because I don't I don't even like dislike the way that McDonald's looks now. I think it's fine to decent even. Yeah, <laughs> I think honest. it looks. I, if if it wasn't a McDonald's and it was like maybe a bank or a, an insurance office, I'd be like, okay, but I don't know. I feel like we've lost something. I, I would happily concede um, it mean, evokes it's, it's um, oppression sure. yeah. to an extent. Oppression, uh, yeah, unity at all costs. This is like this is the building I imagine that the Nazi headquarters, <laughs> <laughs> the McDonald's in Germany, nineteen forty. I, I mean, just see I, the big red swastikas draped over the front and the sides. I would love it if, like, more banks and like estate agents and everything looked like the uh, the before photo for McDonald's. That would make them, you know, make them more fun, more approachable. Insurance is fun. Yeah, and they have a little uh, playground outside. But yeah, um, there's no reason why we can't tangent when we're into the video. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we start her up? See see what this this uh, this artwork has to offer us, eh? I would love to do that. Very well. I'm going to hit the play button now. And I will listen and interrupt intermittently. With I like commentary. the banana duct tape wall. Oh, well, that's not a good start. Oh, no. The banana <laughs> duct tape wall is shit. <laughs> but is a, it hard? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it is. But I'm happy shit to concede that. But yeah, I would be like, this is... I think it's super lame. Some I do the... not find it appealing. Ah. Uh, I think... I think... I mean, I mean, this then gets into how much people uh, value, like, perceived hard work when it comes to art, which I would say most people value a lot. The, oh God, this one's this one's complicated because if we were all doing a presentation in, like, let's say, college or whatever, and uh, you know, everyone's working really hard, some guy comes in late and drunk, he's been partying, he hasn't done any work, and he's got a banana, and he's like. <laughs> 
yeah, fuck. Yeah. And he puts it on the wall and goes, there we are. And then, like, the Look teacher's me, like, I'm this, Rembrandt. Is, this is incredible. The guy's like, yeah? <laughs> mm. Awesome. So, I know we're only three seconds into the video. Um, so, <laughs> Good start, so, the, um, yeah. What I was going to ask, I, I, I hope this won't take too long, and maybe it's something that this guy's going to cover, but the, the banana on the wall has intent. If you remove the of intent, and, and we're just talking, um, you know, someone has dropped the banana peel on the ground, and then the other people in the art exhibit, it, oh, ooh, like, you know, they think it's a piece of art, but it no longer has the intent. Does that affect whether or not you guys would consider it to be artistic? I think, well, I don't think that art and artistic are necessarily the same. Um, people can, if, if someone dropped the banana... And in, in the hoity-toity fancy modern art exhibition, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, it means so much. I can't believe, oh my gosh, wow, this is so unsafe for go-karting. And then everyone was staring at it, and they're thinking it's amazing. The banana would not be art, but that doesn't mean people are by no means uh, excluded from being able to draw out whatever, you know, meanings and things that they want to from something in the same way that I've been moved to tears by landscapes. I don't consider the landscapes, like actually being out there in the mountains, as a, I don't consider that art but it is powerful and striking and moving and it makes me think about things and my place in the world and so but there obviously, is a difference if, there. If you would agree that it becomes art with intentional framing like if you painted it yes you with intentional framing it. i agree yeah. it becomes art yes or if you were to take a photo of the landscape yes yeah. okay i have mentioned it before i shall again that one of my most memorable and favorite moments of all time in in life was moving through many rooms in a big old gallery exhibition-y thing. Plenty of awesome things, plenty of things that made me think. And between two rooms, a little room, fire extinguisher in the corner, five people watching it, looking at it, very curious, thinking about it. And I was looking at it for a little bit, and then I was like, I don't, I don't think that's a, I think that's just a fire extinguisher. I think that is actually just a fire extinguisher in the floor, like in the corner that's meant there for safety. And, um... That one's probably one of the most interesting because it was placed there for the intention of safety, not for art. <laughs> but well, and, the... then it became, and then it came, became perceived as, as art, is that... Yeah, uh, how, uh, what, what do you reckon on that one, Rags? How are you feeling? Hmm. I mean, do you Placing think a fire, a fire extinguisher is, uh, like, maybe that might be a good place to start? Is a fire extinguisher art? Yes. <sighs> it has artistic qualities, if that... Wow, so I think people would I mean, fight the lettering, that right? Uh, At least I think tech, probably technically yes, but hard, I mean, but the, barely. The old, uh, old fashioned red fire extinguisher. Yeah, I, I would say that, that like, and that's an interesting aesthetic. I think people would have to admit that there's I'd say somewhat technically value. yes, as far sure. as it, it is exists as art in regards to being in a gallery. Um, I'm wondering if I consider the pure utility based placement of an object in a building for safety code as being. Um, art i don't think so but possibly i'd say by default no but it could be so like i see some people disagree and at that point it feels like you would have to seriously like unpack what we like because the idea of it's utility not art there's a, like a car is utility but everybody would agree that like a car is is art right or maybe they don't that's the thing. <laughs> I would hope that they would. That that should be pretty I clear that there, a lot of work would... goes into making the ugly ass cars Obviously. of today. And not, yeah, so, and, and not yeah. even if we're talking about like the most beautiful cars. If you're just talking about like a Honda Civic or something, it's like there's obviously a design, a, like a thought process behind the way that it looks. It makes you think like the people need to know that when the thing was created. Let's say the fire extinguisher in this case. It was a guy who was like. Oh, I love the way that this is placed, and oh, I got to put this here so that I want it to be eye-catching, but I also don't want it to be off-putting. And this needs to be here. Oh, this is you know, like a guy who's clearly into it and enjoying it, and considers it an art-making form, and then it all prints out and completes, and they have the fire extinguisher. Would then people be like, okay, yeah, okay, fine. But seeing it in its, you know, in and of itself, knowing that it's meant to just put out fires for safety, it's not. It's not like anything. It's not the same as a canvas that has a painting on it. And it's like, mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> but, I mean, arguably there are pieces of it that certainly were when it was uh, created, so yeah. A lot of people are trying to go with the... Um... I wouldn't hang a car in my living room, but, like, a car is still art. Whether or not I would hang it on my wall doesn't... Like, yeah, there's that's... plenty of artistic works that I would not hang in my living room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um, like, that's... <laughs> that's not a... But it's not a very compelling argument. The banana like and tape banana. shit just seems to me like it's 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 almost the realization of hypothetical. Sure. Um, yeah. Which That's in a way is a good thing. 
like in and of itself for that. And and someone could be like, Sue, is it not making you is provoking thoughts and feelings in you? Because if I've already concluded its art, now someone could try and fight me on whether or not I think it's worthwhile or good art. Sure, which is a different conversation completely. Yeah. But if it was like those conversations are often blurred, that by virtue of you saying that it is art, that it has some implied like transcendental value that can never be like you know, or, or that it puts it on the same level as, I don't know, like a Baroque painting or something. Or like an Impressionist painting. Which, uh, I don't know. I, and yeah, I there's, there's an be... inherent thing in people, like, I think, yeah. to be like, you don't deserve to be respected in the same way, banana. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, like, I mean, that fine, depends geez. on how much respect you put on art simply for existing. You know? Mm -hmm. I'll say it. That's I, that's pretty cool art. And then when that guy came up and, Tell me why. and ate the banana, Coward. that's even more art. I used to hate wow. my... I mean, uh, 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 it's even, even more art? How is it even more <laughs> art? I guess, it, I guess he's saying that you had the art and now you have another moment that is another art. I don't know. Is eating uh, guess, things like, art? Eating, is eating it like performance art or something? I guess it can be. That's I, another I, one, I isn't it? <laughs> you guys know of the um the the Banksy shredding his his picture after it got sold at an auction or something? The banana I'm not guy eating with that. Okay, the banana guy just reminded me. Um, I don't know how this factors into the art discussion because I'm not sure I would. Well, yeah, I don't know if I would call it art, but so obviously a Banksy painting is art. It just it's as clear cut sure. an example of art as possible. Um, it gets sold at uh, an auction for a a lot of money i can't remember how much and the f then you know once the hammer is struck and a deal is made then the frame starts making a noise and it starts shredding the painting because he had rigged the frame to shred the painting as soon as it got sold um did they so know the that? act of oh oh it was the person who bought it did not know that and there was some obviously legal issues legal. yeah there, there were legal issues there definitely but i i don't know enough about it to say what they were um the reason why I mention that is because it's similar to the guy eating the banana in that it raises the question of is the destruction of something that is artistic art? I mean, I guess it depends on whether we want to say it's like performance and everybody would agree that performance is art when it comes to like a theater play or, you know, acting yeah, on you stage express or yourself playing music. Yes. I mean, I mean, yeah. So I think, I think the instinctive reaction would be, no, of course not. But then I don't know, like and <laughs> try and separate, uh, for anybody thinking about this, we're not talking about justifying the action. That's a whole different conversation. Like, uh, no, that's a different conversation for sure. Yeah. yeah. You guys are spirally out of control. It's super easy to follow. <laughs> You're going to be fine. Don't worry about He's it. Calm. You mentioned the banana, but like calm people down. who. Like people who make these kind of videos and they say things like that. You're you're just a coward if you say something like that and you don't tell me why. He's like, why is a banana cool? Because you're wrong. It's shit. That's what the They're whole like, video is about. Rags. Cool. Yeah, maybe well, he'll thing explain thing. it. Maybe Do that it. was his yeah. hook. Maybe he's going to explain it. Do it. You're a coward. Started. He's hooked me. You don't know if he's a coward yet. We don't know <laughs> that. <laughs> Modern art. I used to think it was too simple, too easy. It's not like the Mona Lisa. I mentioned it before. I thought it was the one for me was uh was uh went to an art gallery and it had a whole bunch of different like it had you know older paintings, newer paintings, and everything like different different uh genres. And then it was just like a big red canvas, and I really didn't like it. Bugged me <laughs> when I saw that there, especially knowing that they paid a lot of money for it. It was like yeah, that's it was like bullshit. Yeah, you know, that's that's just, it was like bullshit. things like that will be. Raised in this video like, as well. Um, again, I think I think a lot of it does. I think a lot of people do feel like, man, that one took like a lot of hard work, and that one it feels like it didn't, and that's bullshit. <laughs> like, yeah, and that's that's just, one of the easiest like, ways for people to very... understand uh, a, a a sort of like kinship in being like, yeah, that thing's bad, that thing's bad, and they both be like, because of how shit it is, because of how much effort it didn't take, because how much talent it didn't take, right? But yeah, yeah. Like it's super easy to agree on, um, but then because like uh, the one the thing for me wasn't just seeing because it was a giant square or rectangle or whatever, and it was a big red splat. It was it was enormous. The one thing I found impressive about it was how huge it was. But uh, the mm -hmm. thing that really cinched it was the teachers were staring at it, and I remember asking them like, "What's what's the dealio?" And they were struggling to explain anything. They were like, "It's I, I it's." Think that's it's no, interesting it, when that's the case, right? It feels like you grasp it. I, because I remember there were a lot of conversations that we, because I was part of a school trip, and uh, 
the the kind of things that the person who was taking us on the guide was like saying i just got the distinct feeling of like man i feel like you're reaching i feel like you're I feel like you yeah. just made all of this up. I feel <laughs> well, like and what's I the difference? Actually and draw this from the creation. If someone were to argue that like our interpretations and viewpoints of a thing are what almost defines whether or not it could be considered art, at least from that person, what if they're lying? What if they're making it up? What if they don't even know that they're making it up? As in, like they they're adding a bunch of their own shit onto it. Like, does that devalue the art well, I itself? Think I think it's something that Rag said is like somebody can look at something and absolutely extract a lot of meaning from it and value from it, and they can even extract value from it that was not intended or that wasn't even there. Um, but like whether or not that makes it art, the fact that you extracted something from it, it depends. Is it is it a, is it like a is it based on the viewer? Or is it based on the creator? Is like a definition. I think uh, for some something pretty much anything can be artistic if it's from the subject's perspective. But that's not something that's not actually a part of that thing. It requires a subject. Whereas I think that something being art is intrinsic to that object uh, in the creation process. But um, so they would can that exist be the case there was like, no... I, I remember we had this conversation when we talked about this like a year ago, but let's say, I don't know, you just take a painting, like Mona Lisa or whatever, and then everybody doesn't exist anymore. Is that still art? Uh, yes. You don't want the lack of context... Mean? knowledge yes, if all viewer. if all agents in the cosmos disappeared uh all the things that we consider art would still be art um that wouldn't go away the ability well, to what? appreciate those things would not exist it wouldn't be capable it'd be like color and things of that nature but those what things would remain that? art in my uh sure in my opinion. i'd be happy to settle on it's not like whether or not it is art is not determined on whether or not someone can see it or experience it it would be based on the like intention in the first place basically yeah and knowing as well that we can't always know what the intention was the creation was for example if we found out i think we did this as well in, in the future if mona lisa was actually constructed because a bunch of paint randomly fell onto like a, a page right, right. in the future and they sent it back in time just to see what people would think about it and they said oh it was made by this guy <laughs> yeah definitely that guy mm -hmm. like it well, also oh sorry go for it Sorry, I, I was going to say it also can't uh, necessarily be dependent on people being around to perceive it, because uh, like if uh, if people just went extinct, things that are art are going to continue to be art, even though there's no one there to view them. Mm. Yeah, which is uh, hence there seems to be um, a line between the ex like what we call the experience of the viewer and what it means to the object for the viewer to have that experience. Um, because, of course, I think a lot of people, uh, even non-religious people, might think, like, uh, the, the landscapes that make you feel a lot, like, I think I think have a, they, they have a natural inc inclination to say it's art, when uh, I think it can. Because uh, what I want to avoid, I want to avoid making it so that it's everything. <laughs> I want to, uh, you know, you, you don't yeah, want to have yes. that. You want to make the categories useful to yeah. some extent. And if it gets broadened out to everything, then it's like, okay, cool, awesome. <laughs> like, that's yeah, very productive. Cool. I'd well, have actually, to be argued down from everything, because my gut is is telling me that if you can find art, if you can find meaning in something, I'm trying to be careful with my words. If you can find meaning in something, or if artistic intent was put into something, if either of those um, qualities are present within a thing, then I'd be comfortable calling it art. Um, there are more both of them. Uh, I would say one of them is necessary. Uh, because now I'm thinking about, hey, let's say that there's a painting, and I don't know, the wizard says, I don't know if someone made this, uh, but there's, there's a less than, there's a more than 0% chance that somebody didn't make this, that this painting that you get the distinct impression that somebody created it, yeah, you know, it could have just happened randomly. Like, what, like, how do we, how do we feel about that? Like, I don't know, again, you just take some painting, uh, and then, and then the wizard says there is a greater than zero percent chance that this occurred naturally. Are you trying to highlight uh, the issue of like if I adore? Let's just take um, any of my favorite art of all time, and then you turn out you know it wasn't created by an intentional author or anything. It's random. It came together randomly. What does that do for you and your? Because uh, I would argue like that changes nothing about what I draw out of it myself. But then yeah, um, would it be considered yeah, art? Um, maybe not. Unless I was mistaken. Yeah. Because. Um... I, I think we can all agree that you can draw, like, because, I don't know, do, how do we, do we, how do we feel about nature as art? Is that a, is that a yes or a no? We already covered it, didn't we? No. 
Well, yeah, yeah but I, uh, random. What do you, what do you make of like art? You uh, said like yes. Nature? So. Uh, my, I would have to be argued down from yes, um, I because I, I, I think, I think yes, even if there is no, like I'm not religious, so we're not going to like throw that into overcomplicate <laughs> things. But um, if it is just a completely natural thing, like the example of the uh, random number generator that came up with the Mona Lisa or whatever it was, uh, that doesn't change the fact that if I see artistic merit in it, then it is. God. So I'd be way more based. <clears throat> Meanwhile, your, more if, based on so your, if uh, Soma your were randomly created, I would happily say that, uh, that I don't I don't have as much of an emotional attachment to labeling it art, but it wouldn't change okay. how much I draw out of it for me, like and the meaning I get out of it. In the same way that it wouldn't uh, seeing a mountain, like Rags mentioned, like it might make you ponder about your uh, position in the universe. That doesn't. If someone said, "Yeah, but it's not art," it's like okay. Yeah, I think the, the meaning the is the important is bit. Being able to take artistic like things out of it, I think those are two uh, yeah, completely different things that are actually in no way reliant on one another. Mm -hmm. Well, so this would be the... It seems like we've hit bedrock, then. It's the uh, one side of this would be it's the creation, the context of the creation that decides whether or not it's art. Uh, the other argument would be it's uh, what it does for a, a subject. That's what decides whether or not it's art. And at that point, uh, random right. film talk, I'm curious, if someone spent a million years and all of the talent in every way, shape, and form to construct the most beautiful you know, piece ever in existence, so to speak, and someone walks up to it and says, um, you know, I feel the same way about this as I do just a bit of rocks I see on the floor when I'm walking by, like, and if I feel nothing, basically. I assume that doesn't reduce the uh, art, the, 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 the artness of the, of the piece itself. Um... I feel like that's almost a different question because um, from my perspective, something being art or not is binary. Something being good or bad is not. It's it's a sliding scale. I don't think that there's a sliding scale on whether or not something is art because it, it's a yes or a no. In that case, it would be yes? Um, I would say in that example, the perfect piece of art and the pebble on the road um, if the guy walks past and says, I feel the same about both, then, I mean, I would say, yeah, they're both art. There's just a, there's a massive disparity um, in the quality, which is an argument you, that you could then make. Sorry, I wasn't trying to go that direction. I was trying to, oh, okay. um, maybe the pebble confuses it. I'm trying to say he feels nothing. He's, he's completely apathetic about this piece. Absolutely nothing comes to him from it. So... I would say that that this is where we're getting into the two different definitions, and yeah. that's why I feel that one, not necessarily both, one of the definitions needs to uh, it needs to adhere to at least one. Um, because if I if I write a book that's really 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 good, but I don't show anyone, and then I die, that doesn't change the fact that my book that no one will ever see was art because I created it um, with I guess artistic intent. I was able to get something out of it. And now that I'm dead, and or now that the book is gone, or whatever, that doesn't change the fact that it is or was art. I think that's um, probably very common as a perspective that those two things can make it qualify. Uh, but now I'm settled on uh, the intentionality of the creation aspect. I do, I do find that more convincing and more easy to box things in and separate things out. And that um, I would defend the something I find meaningful doesn't have to be considered art necessarily. Like I can, I can separate those things out, but that I could also find that people be like, how do you separate those things out? Which would lead us further and further, but we can carry on if that's all right. Yeah, let's do it. Now, I, I, came well, up <laughs> I, I had another thought. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> is, a, is a garden art? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so let's say, you know, we're we're trying to we're we're restoring a forest, uh, and then one what do guy. You mean? Oh, you, restore! You said you said restoring, I, I, and then I was like, that that confused me. Restoring, of restoring, restoring, to store yeah. it to store it somewhere gonna, else, like it needed to be moved up, or something. We're gonna fix up a forest by planting some trees. Uh, so a guy plant uh, a bunch of trees in a neat little row next to the road and then like, you know, arranges them that way backward. Is that art? I think you're, are you getting at the Pachinko example I already gave? It's just I, uh, adding levels and levels and levels of less and less control. <laughs> yeah, because it was, yeah, I guess so, because it was gonna, well, but uh, again, just for clarity, do you think that's art? Yeah. 
and then we push it to the furthest extreme. He's just flying in a helicopter and just throws them out randomly. Just throws them out, tosses them out. Like Jackson Pollock that's... is an artist. Oh, uh oh. Well, I mean, that's yeah. not controversial. <laughs> yeah, you're the controversial one right now, Fringy. Okay, I'm trying to imply He's that just... tossing seeds into a garden wouldn't count as expression. The well, argument I, I, you could make there is that he's making the intention of creating randomized art. So that's that's that would be my argument. Yeah, I, yeah I if think he was, counts. I think it counts. Yeah, I'm not sure. This might go into like I I'm not going to be able to determine it. Potentially yes, potentially no. I think it depends on how he goes about doing that. Um, what? Well, so like if he throws him out gracefully versus just tosses <laughs> about like a lunatic. I mean, <laughs> but, kind hey. of. Yeah, like there. I you think there's some element to be said about how he makes it because technically it's not random but is he doing this and like with any intention of doing something or is it really uh, just oh i just get yeah, just throw him out there like in, in no way is that like him expressing how he does it it's not really like a conscious effort in any and sense we gave um, the strength of intent i don't know uh that's why I, I don't think that this is one that i can uh i could ever answer in terms of technically I feel one like of them is true but i don't know which one it is right yeah no i i, I get what you mean like it's just that I feel like there can be stronger and lesser amounts of extent uh, of intent. Somebody could Absolutely. view it as like way more utility, but still have some tiny amount of consideration for how it's going to look versus somebody who is very, very, very thoughtful about how it's going to look. But yeah, yeah anyway, there's, moving on. there's plenty of jobs that people do that they do so often and it have become so habitual that they're basically on complete autopilot. Uh, like sometimes if you drive to work, you just like suddenly realize you've arrived and parked into a parking spot and you're at work. And you can't remember like anything about the trip. You're just there. You are on such autopilot mode. It's be it's so habitual for you. You don't even remember the conscious act right. of doing the thing, even though obviously driving to work takes conscious effort. So mm -hmm. like that would be an interesting element of, you know, it just goes to show how our, I guess how our brains kind of work and that kind of thing. Sorry, I've just seen two comments. Much like cleaning, gardening is not art. <laughs> Okay, it definitely dude. is. I mean, what are those? What are the? What are those Japanese tree thing? Bonsais, right? Well, those are. Uh, yeah, that I mean, hell, like boil it down to just a garden in front of somebody's house that they put a lot of time into making beautiful. That's obviously got. A, that's obviously creative expression, and and you would have to concede as well some amount of hard work. Okay, and talent. Sometimes I wonder. It's like, do you need to see the example oh, of the sorry. person who grows a bunch of green flowers and then a dot, a dot yellow, and a smile in yellow, and then you got a little face? Oh, look at that. Right beneath it, Jackson Pollock isn't an artist. He is. Fuck off. Oh, he is. He is. <laughs> He's, yeah, he is. I know, I know what you're appealing to. You don't like his art, but it's art. It's yeah. fine that you don't like it, though. It's, it's... okay. Uh, I'm, I'm gatekeeping that shit. He's absolutely an artist, and there's such a thing He's as thinking that art is bad. I'm more than fine with you saying that. You can go ahead, but... I think he's not an artist. He is retarded. He is not. He is not. <laughs> <laughs> Your comments <laughs> are art. Up in and ate the banana. That's even more art. I used to hate modern art. I used to think it was too simple, too easy. The admission here it's being not some like... things can be more art than others. I assume I that was like a getting. passing joke comment. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, because it makes you wonder. Um, I would also that... uh, just say quickly as well the whole like I used to think like you guys. I used to think modern art was silly, and it's like, uh huh. Yeah. Did you? Okay. Did you know? Yeah, you were never one of us. But I teared up. <laughs> I discovered the truth. Oh, I used to be an atheist. It's like, oh, that's not true. Oh my god. Now nah, people say that all the fucking time. <gasps> They're like, well, I, I found I Gord. I, like, I used to be an atheist and then became religious, you mean? I, I hear all the, yeah, they see all those videos and stuff. Back when I was an atheist, and then they say something that's like fucking batshit insane. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Mona Lisa. That's art. I thought it was less valuable than something more realistic because it didn't take as much skill. I Wait, used did to they think call it the the Mona Lisa. Hmm. Could be his accent, it's but like yes. Said Mona Lisa. Yeah. Mona Lisa. Yeah, I guess it's an accent thing. I, in fact, I've probably said that before. <laughs> it's just I noticed. It's like, oh my god. That movie's ruined that fucking. <laughs> picture for me yeah Something about it burning and the film being like this is amazing and she is so cool for burning oh yeah yeah that ooh. why'd you remind me of that 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 was oh. like 
that that man that made me really Memory upset hold, but now here we are yeah. <laughs> that was really upsetting i did not like that at all um uh, yeah he's he's presenting the um the like this the, you know this is a common perspective i would argue it was too the... simple too easy it's not like the Mona yep. lisa that's art i thought it was too, less too simple and too yeah. easy lacks talent lacks time lacks effort that it truly um, be considered Wait, while I agree I, it lacks a lot of those things, um, I don't think it doesn't make it art. Um, well, art can I guess be easy and simple and that sort of thing. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the point that Maul is making, is that in, intuitively it just feels like, nah, it's bullshit, you know? Like, this one took yeah, hard I think work, it... this painting was made in the 15th century that would have taken, like, five years to construct using, like, much cruder instruments than we have now versus, like... People intend to insult things up, when they say you know? they're not art. That's, that's the goal. Yes, pretty much. And like, especially artists. People don't like calling Ryan to... Johnson an artist. They're like, he's not. And it's like, no, he is. He obviously is. He's just, I just think he sucks. Yeah. It, it does remind us of our React discussion, where there is this element in our brains that's like, man, you just took that, and he worked hard on it, and you're making all this money off of it. And mm -hmm. like, I don't know, there's something about that that makes me go, eh, that's not I, Well, I think it's just that a lot of it's, people value the sense of like fairness and the idea that like something that you whipped up in an afternoon can be put on the same level as something that somebody worked on for years that has like clear and obvious talent behind it there's something about that that doesn't feel right intuitively yeah. i feel like he's uh potentially conflating the idea of uh how valuable something is as art with the question as to whether or not something is art in the first place yeah, because mm -hmm. throwing in the word valuable in there, that, that definitely uh, shakes valuable. everything up. It's like, whoa, 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 hang on. Because valuable to who? We're not there yet. Yeah, you, well, yeah. Exactly. That's and valuable. What, like, what it, yeah, like if we were talking about intrinsic value, the value like monetarily or how each individual per God damn it knows how each individual person values it. That's like a whole different fucking conversation. <laughs> we got to figure out what art is first before we can talk about that. Yeah. And ate the banana. That's even more art. I used to hate modern art. I used to think it was too simple, too easy. It's not like the Mona Lisa. That's art. I thought it was less valuable than something more. Yeah, I don't even buy that this is a perspective he has because modern art yeah. as a whole, there's plenty of incredible works in modern art. Like, you'll yeah, find them. Yeah, art there are plenty of like, disgustingly hideous sculptures that must have taken months to make. There's that. So. Well, so, yeah. 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 I was going to say that there are still things that we would all be very impressed by and do take like a lot of work as well. They're out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I think it's, um, I don't know if it was either you, Mola, or Rags who said it, that, that, uh, you know, modern art, it's like, that's not a great title for it, because when people say modern art, they don't mean art that was recently created, they mean yeah, something yeah. else. Well, and, and it's certainly bad for this video, because if he's, if he's mainly saying, well, modern art, I mean the art that I think is, and then all the descriptors he just describes as modern art, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, just, well, that was pointless, mm -hmm. if, if you just mean the ones that you thought were shit. You know what I mean? Like in a video about modern art, this this we had this problem with philosophy tube and others where it's just like this is the one where you really need to be careful with the words you use. Yes. More realistic because it didn't take as much skill. I used to think that until I actually went to an art museum and I learned about the stuff I was looking at. Yeah, and that was the opposite for me. I learned about modern yep. art by going to a museum. And the opposite I didn't for me like as it. well. Uh, yeah, the, that's the yeah. The big realization that uh, it wasn't, and so this is super interesting too, because that red splotch one I was talking about, where I was asking different people and nobody was drawing anything out of it. If someone says to me then, oh yeah, but you didn't read the history of it, I'd be like, hmm, I'm not sure how I feel about what, that. that I, need, I need all of this third party material there, to get it, <laughs> you know? Yeah, like there is an element of how much... What is to be said about a piece of art that exists only as um, a way to convey an idea, maybe, or a story that in no way actually requires the expression itself? Um, hmm. If I'm supposed to look at a, a, a block on the ground and it's like, well, this represents that's 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 so it's really not even about the block. At what point I'm like... Yeah, well, uh, you make the block? well, I think that's the, I mean, a lot of our discussions, right, about, like, movies and TV shows and video games, well, a lot of it, all of it. We're oh, yeah, with themes. People, we're, we're trying to draw things from what actually exists in the story that we can point to clearly. Uh, and usually it's, you know, it's pretty obvious, right, what's the, the intent is a lot of the time. But, like, 
the the idea that you can like derive a whole bunch of things that exist like completely and utterly independent of the original creation kind of makes you wonder like why am I even here like consuming this? Yeah, if why... everything I draw from it doesn't exist from this thing that I'm looking at. That red we, blotch. We talked about this with themes, yeah. Uh, mm. If if the plaque of its history was basically just the entire story of Lord of the Rings, and the red blotch is supposed to represent the Eye of Sauron, I'd be like, okay, that. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you <laughs> like, say that, but like, I don't, I don't know if I believe you. Well, and if someone was to try and argue like all of that meaning that I just got out of reading that history or slash context, well, I feel like, like the history reading would be the art. Yeah, of more, course, well, not the art. It would be the the better thing. The, the, yeah, the thing that I drew all of the great meaning <laughs> the from. That you drew the meaning from, yeah, rather than the the other thing. And so, like, the fact that he said what changed his mind so much was discovering the context for the creation of, like, these things and seeing them in a gallery. Which, by the way, what a self-report. Like, I came to this conclusion well after going to galleries. Like, why were you, why were you so proudly ripping into art when you hadn't seen any of it, like, in person? All of the stuff that he's been ripping. And I, I wonder, too, well, I mean, like, what does it mean that none of it survives being taken a photo of and seen on, like, Google Images or shared online? All of it dies yeah, when well, it hits I that point? Really? That's kind of fascinating, isn't it? Because the a, robot I mean, example, you, I only showed a picture of it, and... I, yeah, and I still, well, and, and I mean, of course, if, you know, a, a theater play, like, if you record that, and then I watch that, you know, it's like, it's not like, it's not like I lose everything from that experience. Yeah. If I watch a recording of a play, rather than seeing it in person, or, a, you know, like a recording of a concert, yeah, recording rather an orchestra. than seeing it yeah, in person, exactly. or an orchestra, exactly. there's a difference. But there, there's you're obviously still a definitely, difference. Yeah. Well, yeah, that that's a good example actually, because obviously the acoustics of like the room that you're in and being in that is going to be different than like, you know, like how it's recorded, anything post processing or anything, even just the quality of the microphone, it changes the experience. But I mean, there's still, you know, like how much do you lose compared to the idea that you lose everything by like looking at a picture of a piece of modern art rather than going to see it in the gallery. I'll give you an example. Yeah, I'll, I'll, something. I'll give you an, a, an America moment example. Uh, on this trip I made uh, recently, a lot of us went out there, and there are about 10 or so of us, and we're all pretty, pretty big gun guys, and a lot of us brought firearms with us, and we went to a range outdoors, and at the end, we'd been out there for hours, but at the end, before we packed up and left, 10 of us got in a row, we all loaded up our guns, our ARs and AKs, and Garands and all the stuff that had been brought, and we just unloaded everything at the same time. One final little foof, you know, before we left. And the concussive force and the dust and the noise was like legitimately an intense experience that I've never felt before. But how many times mm. in video games and in movies have you seen a bunch of people shooting and it just has like no effect on you whatsoever? But actually being there with all those guns to the left and the right and you going and the heat of it all and the casings hitting the ground and the noise, it, it was legitimately intense and incredible. And how do you feel about that as art? Oh, it was glorious. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So just context quickly before you hit play, there's, there's something that he said that I, I wanted to hear him say it twice because I wasn't sure if I misheard him. I don't like that he's equating difficulty with how art, the artness of something, True. Um, well, I, because, like, as an example, making a film that involves dogs or children or just animals in general, not that children are animals, I guess, but you know what I mean. Um, animals are worse, yeah. Is, is, that's really hard to do, especially I'm like, I'm thinking of the um, 101 Dalmatians live action. Loads and loads of dogs, most of them puppies. D getting them to do what you want is going to be really, really hard, which makes it impressive, mm -hmm. but it doesn't make it more art than. Um, let's say the exact same film that just used visual effects for all of the dogs. I think he's presenting that perspective as the wrong one. Um, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. He's, he's saying he, he learned from having that perspective that that was wrong. Yeah. Like okay, going to a gallery. Right. Like more realistic. He was saying, like, you know, the Mona Lisa being art is because, like, more effort and talent put in, so the yeah. other one's simple and, you know, lame. Because it didn't take as much skill. I used to think that until. I actually went to an art museum and I learned about the stuff I was looking at. I learned the context, the purpose, like, the ah, skill behind Interesting. Hmm. You learned about it. Makes me wonder, yeah, the, the background of it, the law of it is the, uh, the deciding factor then, which is very, very strange. As a... it, 
you know, it can affect it, your perception. It can affect your enjoyment. Absolutely, but it can affect again, it's, I, 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 if he's going to fall back on whether that makes it art or not, I just don't see how he can make that uh, argument if he is going so to make the argument. The thing that's awkward for me is that w when he says that, my impression is, ah, so they convinced you. <laughs> like, well, um, <laughs> you know, you have two Jackson Pollock paintings. One he made as an expression of his rage toward his marriage or something and, and the desperation of trying to make ends meet through blah, blah, blah. And it's supposed to talk about the uh, calamity that is the universe uh, coming down on him or something. And the other one, he was like, I was bored. And I just splat some shit. I'm guessing he would does his his, his perspective now that uh, it used to be that he'd think of them as the same, but now if he heard those contexts behind both of them, one of them would become super art and the other one would be like meh. I guess it's really interesting because if you presented them and they look like basically identical to me, if you explain this like with well, that one he was just fucking around, but that one that meant a lot. It'd be like okay, like it doesn't yeah. really change anything <laughs> about how I feel about it, you know? Like, I still don't really value it all that much. And by the way, the same goes the other direction, right? You see something you think is incredible, then someone says, he, he made that, like, out of boredom. He was half asleep when he made it. I'd be like, I don't care. Like, okay, it's still valuable to me. Yeah. yeah. And this I, goes again. I think I would sort of, uh, by default, generally value, like, all things being equal, the one that took more effort, and I guess, to do... I think, in a way, seems a bit more valuable. But I always appreciate um, um, aspects of that, like stuff behind the scenes, oh, filmmaking stuff. When they talk about like efforts that you didn't even know about, but they were like, "Oh, they actually overcome this incredibly difficult thing." It can make the scene more meaningful when you watch it again in future. But of course, definitely. Um, I, I try not to let. It's almost a death of the author, like tangential thing of of yeah. you know someone saying like, uh, "Actually, did you know how shit this was in terms of creation? This happened. This happened." And you're just like, "Well, it is what it is now." For example, uh, mistreatment of actors. Like this scene's incredible, but did you know that they were like whipped to to get them to do this? You're like, "Oh well, that that's unfortunate and bad and wrong and illegal, but it's a really fucking good scene." It, it is what it is, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you know, the thing is the thing. The backstory and the info can give you a different appreciation for it, and in a way, can help you value it differently. But you know, not necessarily. But sometimes, you know, making these pieces, and it started to make sense. And since then, I feel like I've only benefited from having more of an open-minded perspective. Super Mario Galaxy but... music. Why not? It sounds like, um, like the you know the ones where you're in outer space, basically zero gravity, and then you grab onto the different like grappling points to get Mario across. That's what the music sounds like. Mm. Yeah, I think so. That's beautiful. How was that? Yeah, no, it's, it's... I Man, Super Mario Galaxy soundtrack. God, I fucking love it. It's so good. You made it sound excellent just now. Yeah, no, I know. I, the, I mean, guys, chat, that was... Look, that was odd, okay? It was. <laughs> Indefensible. Uh, <laughs> what's interesting there is he just said that uh, that process, he would describe it as having more of an open mind. I wonder, in uh, isolation, if it really is or not, going from you treat a piece as is, as presented, or you adhere to whatever you're told about the piece's history. Which is the more open mind, uh, would you say? Wait, could you, sorry? So Just he's he's again. described himself as having upgraded. He's got more of an open ah, mind yes. now that, and, and um, I understand his yeah. logic is that <laughs> he went from, you know, the piece is what it is to me versus the piece is what it is to me. But also, I'm I'm interested in hearing what people have to say about its creation slash the creators, um, blah blah blah. But um, one could argue easily the opposite, which is that he's being told what to think and feel about it. Um. So <laughs> the awkward thing for me is like, I don't know, I feel, I feel pretty cynical about sort of like it, sometimes I get the impression that um, the way that some people would talk about modern art is essentially kind of like, um, man, look like at a, how like a way for and them knowledgeable to... and I am, yeah. I can distinguish myself from the plebs because of my greater appreciation for art. Sometimes I get that impression. It's kind of like. It's almost like a cope to try and make yourself feel like more special. Um, you know what reminds me of <laughs> is uh, Chris Stuckman continuously watching Blade Runner until he had the oh, correct yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that one is that is not fascinating, right? Because was, it's yeah. like you're you're a film guy. You're meant to like Blade Runner. You didn't, and you had to keep watching it and watching it and watching it until you could make yourself hold the perspective you were meant to have. That is, yeah, that's not indicative of an open mind to me. It's one that's desperate no, I, to I, follow the trends. Well, I think it's boring, I, yeah. I don't know if I'd describe it as like open or closed mind. It's just like a weird way to approach art. It feels like less pure, doesn't it? 
it's it's like too mired in in how you'll be perceived or like how uh the way that yeah the way that you're supposed to think the perspectives you're supposed to have it's like peter right when they're all yelling at him because he said he didn't care for the godfather you know that's that's peter peter's got the the perspective he's not supposed to have and then yeah and you know then they they, they gun for him over it even though and all he said is he didn't think care for it the open mind <laughs> aspect is being open to the new information but that does not define like you know uh quality now like that's the next step of deciding whether or not you believe that additional information uh changes anything was it stuff you missed was it stuff you miscontextualized or misunderstood or do you just think what they just said is kind of bullshit? It's kind of made up? It's kind of a lie or or something yeah, that doesn't like, relate to the thing or it, doesn't change the thing? It almost feels like um like there's something there that's worth, you know, considering and listening to, right? That there's like something calling out from deep within your soul of like, hmm. Well, and there's also a purity like of being like, I don't care how the thing was made. I don't care what the author says the meaning of it is. I'm going to appreciate it as yeah. is. Again, I think um, it is, you know, it's kind of the reason why death of the author is an interesting concept beyond the concept itself is, uh, is, is the idea that like, it, it, it's, it, it is, it is intuitive in a sense, but then it's almost like some people kind of get taught out of valuing that, that it's like, well, no, the, in there always has to be, you always have to have like the intent that's suit this i'm I'm trying to organize this thought in real time it feels like somebody could be convinced out of like feeling that death of the author is true um and that like intention is something that has to be like inextricable from their analysis of it like they have to hmm hold on i'm trying to i'm trying to figure out where i'm going with this thought um okay. mm -hmm. do you think the death of the author is like intuitive do you think that do you think that that's something that people like whether or when not you, they've heard of the concept is something that they ab apply. When you gather a huge, take for example the Grey. If someone took watched that movie and got a, a, an invigorating sense of sort of uh, you know wanting to live and and experience meaning and move on and change their life, and someone said, you know, no, that's not what that movie's about. It's just an action film about guys escaping wolves. Uh, like the 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 director and writer told them that. I would hope that they'd be like, I don't care if you think that. That's not what the movie's about. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's, that to me is death of the author, right? Like to stand in the way of the of the intention if the thing itself matches enough that you can draw whatever you, whatever you drew out of it. And I think that a lot of people would experience that and understand it very well if they had those kinds of potent experiences. Because that's a very strange hypothetical. That would probably never happen, right? It's not going to be such a blatant interpretation of a thing that the author is like, nope, not intentional whatsoever, but it has happened. It is out there. Like, I think I would probably say that what the author or the writer has to say about a particular piece of art is likely or possibly going to change your perception. Uh, but that doesn't, as you've said, it doesn't change what the piece of art actually is. Yeah, and I think the intuitive position is that the author decides what the meaning is. I guess um but I, I guess where I'm going with that thought is like how how common do you think that it is that somebody would like go and try and find out what the author how often do you think it is that somebody watches a movie and then tries to go and find out exactly like what the creator of that film or the creators of that film were like going for? How I many people would don't just believe that happens much at all. However, if I showed my what? dad like some movie and then I said, This movie was about communism, by the way, he'd be like, Oh yeah? And I go, Yeah, the director said and he's like, Oh, okay, yeah. Right, right. He wouldn't go like, uh, I don't think so, because blah, blah, blah. He'd be like, sure, you know, the, he I would guess, know best. He's I'm the guy who made it. That um, it's not common that somebody will, even, even if somebody holds a perspective that like what the creator says essentially determines what it's about, that even if somebody believes that, it doesn't mean that they're likely to go and find that out every time they go watch a film or read a book. And it's like, well, now I need to know what the creator said to like form the complete perception of this creation. I mean, I always appreciate additional information uh, from different contexts. Even any mm -hmm. random person being like, my take on this thing was this. And I'm like, that sounds insane. Let's hear it. Like, you know, th that's oh, I, always I fun. Saying, um, it's like, I, I guess my question is ultimately, how often do you think a normie is looking at behind the scenes stuff? To Not much out? at all. It'll depend yeah. partly, I think, on what, if we're talking films, what the film is. Because if the film... Um, if it's your regular, you know, whatever is out, you know, Marvel in cinemas, movie, yeah. Star Wars or uh, Marvel, most of the time, basically, you know, those films are designed so that when you watch them, you 
should hopefully be able to understand them is mm. I think the goal. Um, whereas if you had a quote unquote normie watch something that was a little bit more abstract and it didn't hold your hand quite as much and they watched it and they were like, I don't know how to feel about that. I'm going to go and do some research and do some reading and then it clicks or doesn't click. And then they, they then have a greater understanding of their opinion of the film based on additional information. Like one example, have any of you guys seen the film mother Darren Aronofsky? No, not yet. No. Okay. I'll avoid. Yeah. I'll, I'll completely avoid spoilers, but let's just say that the film, if you don't know what the allegory of the film is going into it, which I did not. And if you don't kind of get it while you're watching it, then the film is almost going to seem like incoherent nonsense. Um, and for some reason, it just didn't click with me when I saw it. And I watched it and was like, well, I feel like there was a point to that, but I can't work out what that was. Mm -hmm. Did a little bit of reading, and it was a it was a very coherent, might not be the right word, but a, a strong allegory for something in particular. And it was like, okay, that explains everything. My opinion of this film has now gone up. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, that, that can happen, right, when you get information. But, I mean, it almost feels like it wouldn't be appealing specifically to the fact that you – like that it was, you know, the author's, it'd be like, it, it just, it, it makes it all coalesce. It makes something click right in your own, uh, yes. Assessment of the film. It's like, this is new information that helps you kind of in the same way that like, you know, watching more films can make it easier to understand and appreciate or, you know, grow to dislike other films. It's just new experiences changes how you go into something. Yeah, the equivalent with the, the Lord of the Rings lore on that blotch of red, it would be more so like, a paragraph's worth, and it's a really well drawn image, but you couldn't quite make out what, like, the, oh, there's, maybe there's flames, and then there's some some chains, there's some demon creatures, you're just like, I, is this hell? I don't know. Then the paragraph is like, no, this is a representation of heaven from the viewpoint of someone who, you know, hates the idea of conformity slash uh, pleasure or something. You, just, you read all that, and you're like, okay. And then you look back at the image, and you're like, oh, because that's the, oh, oh, okay, now, yeah, mm -hmm, uh, I get it all. As opposed to the red blotch, where you, you look back at it, and you're like, what? I, I don't, I don't, you know, that additional context has done absolutely nothing. In fact, I think you're just cheating. <laughs> like, you're adding a bunch of stuff that's not actually there. But that's just, you know, that's going to be down to the individual again, probably. About art. Wow. I guess he was having a bad day that day. Yeah, modern art can be weird and frustrating and confusing, but rather than embracing and trying to understand those feelings and why you feel them, so many people choose to let that frustration trick them into thinking the art is at fault. It's not, how is it being tricked? Tricked is an interesting, uh, it's an interesting word to use here, isn't it? What, yeah. what exactly, can we wind it back five seconds? I think I need to hear that again. He's, he, all he's saying is the people take modern art to be weird and strange and they don't quite understand it and that um, they'll be tricked into their position as opposed to genuinely thinking that it is strange and weird. Well, yeah, so this is kind of funny, right? It's, 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 it's being spoken like the way he's saying it is meant to be like a more of a, ah, oh, you know, it's okay, but like what's just been said there is pretty hilarious. Well, is the art ever at fault? <laughs> ever? No. No. No, never. Maybe. I don't, well, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> That's not true. I don't it's know like a defense he, mechanism see. for nuance. Before we get into it, though, this video is sponsored by Raycon. Defense mechanism for nuance. I, I don't understand that. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Nothing that... really. Um, no. Now. It's summertime. Now. And the song of the summer is already here. It's Pineapple Upside Down by Queef Jerky. Pineapple Upside Down, yeah, in the toilet. <laughs> I make a brown, yeah, in uh, the ocean. <laughs> Oh, okay. that's so a, the... that's so while technically that's art, it's what we call really shitty art. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm in oh my god. I, I, don't, that... I don't want to be rude, but when we were talking about how difficult something is mattering. <laughs> uh, my, you know what's my, funny? My, my perspective on it's, art is changing as we speak. It's multi-layered. <laughs> He's convincing me. Because not only does the thing itself seem no offense, shit. Uh, it's totally art, though. I'm not, I'm not gonna take that away from you. Yeah, um, the way you art. incorporated it into this piece of art, being the video, was pretty bad, my dude. We just went from, like, a very yeah, fundamental yeah, okay. and important statement to, time for my Raycon ad, it's uh, summer's music time. Blah, 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 blah. This is like, what the fuck? Like, I was not ready for this roller coaster, okay? Yeah, we already Pacing. have a song for the summer, and it's Kokomo by the Beach Boys. So, we no longer need your 
cake toilet song. Thank you very much. In that. And if you want to hear the new song, you're going to need premium audio. And thanks to Raycon. Well, I'm you're not going to want no audio. You need to be able to hear Pineapple it, Upside Down. You need it, Frank. You need uh, premium I need, audio. Okay. I, need, I need Raycon quality to listen to this wonderful song. They're one of the more, audio. like seemingly reliable sponsorships right they're, like, oh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure they're just making headphones right yeah. so they're probably pretty Raycon. chill you have to raycon's wireless earbuds start at just half the price of other premium audio brands but you get all the same kind of juicy sound quality in there Sweet. they have noise isolation 32 hour battery life you Whoa. already know we already know all this listen mike oh, okay we already knew <laughs> <laughs> just move on. No need for the ad. Tyson, yeah. Snoop Dogg, Ray J. Ethan oh, yeah, I've just online. noticed. So Whoa. he's got he's got Garfield. He's got an Among Us guy. He's got Totodial, and he's got is that Sonic holding like an Xbox 360 controller? Yes, five, isn't it? It's... I, yeah, it's a PlayStation or controller of some PlayStation. kind. Oh right. Oh yeah, yeah. The, both of the the analog sticks are at the bottom there. Ah, yeah, uh, okay, Among interesting. I. That is yeah. not something I expected you to make the mistake of, Ringy. I'm surprised. I think it's it's because the text is like over it right now, and I'm just trying it to. Is, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a no. That's a PS4 controller, right? Well, it's one of them. Uh, obviously, being red, I can't yeah. quite tell. Yeah, that's a PS4. I think that's that's not the Dual Sense. I think that's a Dual Shock Four. Oh, and he's got Spider Man. He's got another Among Us down there. Is Among Us art? I wonder what he thinks. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, video games are that's, art. That's, I mean, that's art being settled. Roger Ebert was totally wrong when he what? said video games are not. <laughs> You're taking him that out of context. Absurd, that was an absurd thing to say, but... He's you know. not the only one who said it. I'm pretty sure Amazed Atheist said it back in the day that video games don't count. Yeah, right. A lot of people can that. be wrong, as we've I'm discovered. That's so fucking nuts, really though. <laughs> like, why would when you... did he yeah. say that? I can't remember exactly when it was, but... Oh, I think it was in the 2000s. It wasn't like... It wasn't like... Even, even if you said it in the 80s, you'd still be wrong. Super Mario Brothers is art. But, like, I Pong. Think it like, it's recently. art. Yeah. Why would you even suggest otherwise? Well, yeah. I like, can understand Pong someone saying that Pong is not art. I, I don't agree, but I can understand that. Um, um, I don't I just, think I can understand, like, a film guy saying that. I don't think I can understand a guy who's... who's familiar with like, art yeah, concept these are the should not be saying who that. should never say that, yeah. yeah. You you expect better from these people. I guess so, Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe not Amazing Atheist, but you expect better. <laughs> Someone said that's ever. actually TJ's least worst take. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> we all have in common. We love Raycon. There are so many different colors to Raycon. choose from, different fits, different yeah. patterns, different styles. Yeah. You're definitely going to find the pair that's made for you. You will. Raycon even has oh. a 30-day return policy, so if for whatever oh, reason you don't love the earbuds, yeah. you can send them right back, and they won't ask you any cinematic questions. Wow. Shot, by the way. I listen to music every yeah. day. I can't stop. My new song just sounds so good. And I like using eh. <laughs> Raycon I mean, because it's just a quick and easy way to your... get that juicy yeah, premium okay. sound quality without breaking the bank. If you click the link in the description, you can get 15% off your Raycon purchase Whoa. or go to buyraycon.com. Is there anything wow. wrong with getting like buying percent. like relatively cheaper? Like how, how, how much different is the sound quality in terms of All the right. ear earphones? I don't know. Oh, no. I can't speak to in-ear stuff, but... It's weird, I'm referencing a lot, but on my trip, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Dion, he, he brought some headphones, and they were, they were like $900 headphones. Oh my and, God. He wanted, and he wanted me to listen to them. He said, listen to these. And they were fucking incredible, to the point where I'm like legitimately considering buying some. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I guess it's one of those things where, maybe it's like monitors, I suppose, and FPS and stuff like that. Sometimes you just kind of have to experience it to know but with sound i guess in but in-ear stuff is getting so good that you I know there's so. gonna be a big difference because like i understand over ear headphones that makes a lot more sense to me in terms of like a massive difference in terms of the way yeah. that they sound like a 20 dollar over ear versus like a you know 400 500 I guess it's inevitable I would, yeah, yeah technology, technology and, of time and everything how we're able to cram so much into little, you know, spaces of the head, you know, in-ear stuff. You know, if we've probably come a long way since the, you know, the first ones. I know growing up as a kid, I had some, and they were fine, but yeah, I bet modern ones are really good. I mean, I'm I, yeah. not an in-ear guy. I just, I have a hard time describing anything like that that is wireless as anything approaching like audiophile level of quality. And I'm currently using a wireless headset, but um, I don't use this when I'm doing any audio uh, work because what is, um, go on sorry what is, what is your favorite audio file because uh, I think it's like mp3 for me <laughs> is a is a classic I really enjoy that one uh, well, I know there's some others but I'm just not that really into WAV, the hobby, come on. No, much of the difference 
So Obi-Wan KV is very good. That's right. This is the thing is on something like I, I don't know Raycons because I've not I don't own any, but like I have wireless earbuds that look similar to that. And on those, you basically can't tell the difference between um like different bit rates and different file types and all that kind of thing. Whereas if you're wearing like the really nice nine hundred dollar headphones that you mentioned, you'll absolutely be able to tell the difference between an MP3 and like a lossless audio file format. Um, um and that's one of the things that like mastering engineers kind of lament now is that they're you know you you spend however much money on all of the gear to write to write and record a song uh, you get it mixed you get it mastered and then it gets played on like 50 dollars earbuds so what was the fucking yeah. point um there is even the, the same yeah right. like the you, you go ahead go ahead i was just gonna say it's probably the same right for you know in terms of films and then someone puts it on their like shitty like you know badly color corrected tv watching oppenheimer on of... your mobile phone yeah exactly yeah uh, uh, yeah the way it was intended with uh what's it called subway surfers on the bottom of it i use a program to download the audio from youtube videos and depending on the program or the site that you use you will absolutely be able to hear the difference depending on the song uh some songs just the way that they sound and the the wave formats and stuff that they use just if they're in low quality you will hear some is i don't even know call it ratchety rumbling or whatever it is so so oh, yeah, a lot of a, a lot of that, a lot of that is going to be due to the compression that YouTube puts on audio, which again is an issue for mastering engineers when they try to get something sounding as good as possible on really nice speakers, and then it gets crunched to hell and back when it gets uploaded to YouTube. There's like some a, way to get like different qualities though um, out of YouTube videos. Some sites will only. Well, do you? Uh, I use. You get you well, get better use, quality with premium right now. It, you yeah, do. I, so I use 4K, um, 4K YouTube to MP3, and they had a sale. And they had there's a company that makes a bunch of them. They make the 4K, uh, 4K video downloader, um, and I have the premium for them. And I can there is an actual difference whenever I download the audio from a YouTube video. It literally does sound better. It uses like a higher thing to get the audio from it. So it, there's yes. a difference. Yeah, there definitely is, but the cap on it is going to be whatever YouTube can handle, which is not going to be lossless. I don't know what it is, um, but like in the case of... It won't be like what you download from iTunes or something. You'll be downing, yes. you'll be downloading like uh, probably about the best you can because they're selling to you from like a premium store. Yeah, and like on 99% of speakers or headphones or Raycons or whatever, no one is going to know the difference. Like you will only really notice the difference between that kind of thing if you're on high-end equipment. Yes. And or if you have unbelievably good ears. Mm. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's important too, knowing kind of like, you got to be able to know the difference because a lot of people could know the difference, but until you actually like sit down yeah. and try Learn different difference. things. Yeah, yeah, it actually really is. Yeah, learning the difference. Um, I mean, frame rate's the same way, as I mentioned earlier. You know, years and years ago when I was just on a, you know, an Xbox 360, you know, the, I didn't even know what frame rate was. Um, you just, it's something you have well, to learn. You didn't know, but you knew when you played. Yeah. Games. Bioshock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bioshock had the 60 do? FPS mode. And I was like, what, what's happening? Cause you could turn it off and on. You're like the, you want the quality mode or the smooth mode? And I'm like, the smooth mode is so fucking amazing. I don't even know why it is. It's just like better. It's smoother. I couldn't I put think, a name um, to it, but yeah. I would say it's something that probably contributed to Call of Duty success on consoles was that it was 60, 60. FPS when a lot of other uh, first-person shooters were 30. Yep, it's Battlefield like didn't know, Company 2 they was 30. Yeah. Uh, ba Battlefield 3 was about 17, so, uh, yeah. Not bad, not bad. Um, not bad. By the way, having partially brought it up, uh, if ever you unfortunately get uh, drawn into some shorts ever or, or those kinds of formats, uh, sometimes you'll see how maybe, maybe like a manufactured like food is made or, or whatever products on a mass scale and it's like fascinating how the machines are all set to work and what it can do sometimes you'll see someone woodworking someone you know working with like locks or any particular uh field that they're in and then i just got uniquely sad that there was a podcast clip in the top left top right was one of the manufacturing things for like jelly or whatever the fuck and then bottom left was subway surfers, and bottom right was someone chopping wood. And I was like, good God. 
Like, the top left was the content, quote-unquote. The rest of the visuals were just there to keep you there. And, uh... Uh, that is uniquely okay. just like not it only is it stealing so all that other stuff, but it's like this is popular. It had like millions of views, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Are you are you that lacking in attention span that you have to have four things happening on the screen at one time? Have you seen those memes where it's like the cinema and it has Oppenheimer, and then it just, it does have like subway surface on the left and someone like playing a game on the right? It's, <laughs> Someone's chair reacting to it. Yeah, it's. It's just like, good god, I hope this is a trend that dies quickly. Like, it doesn't actually have a, a, a foothold in culture at all. Cause, oh. Again, for 15% off your Raycon purchase. Thank you so much to Raycon for sponsoring the video. Please check out Raycon. It does really help the channel. And that's it. Of course, there's a political component, right? <laughs> all art is inherently political. You know, what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> I think the the only way to make this true devalues the concept so much that it's not even worth mentioning at that point. Yeah, pretty much. That's why I'm happy to I say no. Um, I would prefer an argument, but like when we can develop into it. But just like I just hate hearing that so much. All yeah, art, he's just saying it's exactly. It, all art's just political. It's just, all art is political, just, and then you just lay there and you're like, okay, so like I don't know, you just draw a tree like on a piece of paper. The tree existing tree. and is represents freedom in a society. Uh, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, blah, okay, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. If we keep chopping right. down, chopping them down, then you wouldn't know what a tree is. Yeah, or something. Hey, just in... just a, a planet in space on its lonesome, just out there. I, I do. There. Well, like, <laughs> you know? yeah, because if someone said like a, a stroke of a, a, a literally a pencil line, and then they're like, "Yeah, where was that pencil from? Who made it?" And you're like, "I didn't. That's not. That's not my art. I'm just the pencil line." Like, oh yeah. Well, where's the where's the lead coming? Well, yeah, you know, what, lead what, was putting pencils yeah. back, and they're just like, "Yeah, I'm like, not talking okay, about that. This is yeah. a fucking line." Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I feel yeah, like that's what that, games, good games, yeah. that that's the be I, I I despise and always have done and, and is that you know it goes both ways right the the cartoon version of that on the other side is that there are oh, no what? politics. I love when games I love when games weren't political and it's Modern Warfare Two, Metal Gear Solid, Bioshock. Well, that's <laughs> the only time when Pete when when this started rising to prominence. This whole I mean, it always existed, but it really started to pick up uh, steam and you know these online political spaces was because there was a lot of games that came out with very very uh in you know down your throat overt shitty political messages and a lot of people were yeah, like that's the Can truth keep the politics out of my games well, yeah what, and what that's, people they, meant what they, was they didn't yeah. like shitty shittily conveyed like over like heavy-handed um preaching like they, versus presentation yeah Exactly. So, like, it's yeah. not that they don't like politics, it's just that... And, and at that point, it's like, how, how good faith do we want to be? Are we even interested in understanding what the other person is saying? Well, and by the way, just, just to... We, we can be the even more progressive people here. If someone plays Bioshock and adores it and talks about everything they learned about whatever particular thing, and then you say, what well, you know, what do you think it has to say about objectivism? And then they go, huh? I didn't notice what anything is that? about I've that. I've never heard of that. Yeah, and I, I didn't. Ever. And you're like, okay, what do you think it has to say? And you're just like, nope, didn't notice any of that. I was just thinking about how yep. what it has to say about, um, you know, society and how it can crumble, just in general, any society. Mm -hmm. And and, and does that like, make them well, wrong? That's inherently political. Yeah, they're 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 watching. They're playing games wrong. You fuck. <laughs> I'm not saying that you're playing games wrong, but you're playing games wrong. And that's the thing. Uh, th this, Why this... did you say that? Because he thought yeah, he was right. Ah, uh, yes, of course. I feel like there's a, an extremist bad take in all directions for this topic, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but the uh, the one that gets misrepresented all the time is the one that says, like, good God, I hate having the moment where the character grabs the camera and explains to me their thoughts and feelings from, direct, from the writer as to what the problems with the world are and how to correct them. And then someone else goes, like, yeah, all art is that. Like, no, it's not. Yeah, it's like... I mean, can we appreciate that it's obviously not all that? Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. is the politics? Yeah. Uh, wait, I was about to say, what's the it. politics of Mario? And then Don't I do realized, it. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. The Mushroom Kingdom is a monarchy. Yeah, the yeah, that's right. no. yeah, yeah. And then the gender dynamics between Mario and Peach. And yeah, all right. What's and the I mean, politics yeah. of the banana? Mmm. Represents the mm. industries the of fruit trade. Yeah, that's right. It's yeah, exactly. In the yeah, the banana republics. The, that's right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, see, Soul yeah, in isn't this great conversation? Yeah. Isn't well, yeah, because wonderful way to talk about art. That well, okay, because everything that you just said is about bananas, not that banana. Yeah. So it's like you're not drawing. You're not drawing any kind of political 
messaging out of the piece of art itself. Well, You're drawing uh, it out of what you think it is. You wonder if they think all art is political is valid. Is all art is sociological valid? Is all art technological valid? Is, is all art um, phys philosophical? Is that valid? And if so, then um, it, it really does dampen everything, doesn't it? It's just like, everything is everything. Why are we doing this? Stop. Uh, mm. Categorize it with meaning instead of just throwing everything on there and, and feeling... Because there's always a sense of superiority that tends to be delivered with that line. It's all political, you silly idiot. Yeah, exactly. You Philistine, you <laughs> plebeian, you simpleton. I'm really curious what direction he's going to take this in, because I, I can't... So many directions. Guess. Either in its influences, messages, or implications. 101, guys. E either in its messages, influences, or implications, it's going to be political. So... Awesome. Cool. What are okay, the implications so what, of the banana? What, what, I don't know. What about just like I don't know. What what about what about a like an elephant making a painting or something? You know, it's political. Who ha who owns the elephant? Who allowed him the tools? Uh, yeah, who kept him yeah, where he is? This is what yeah, I mean. Yeah, if yeah. you're gonna expand it that far, like if he actually legitimately argued, like the the child who made the finger painting does belong to a capitalist society, you'd be like, so what? It, it, you know, like you take that context, then yeah, just everything is everything. Like, what's the point? Yeah stuff. Art critique is really just opinion, but a lot of people let right-wing propaganda cloud their judgment of modern art. <laughs> what the um, fuck? <laughs> gonna need a reference on that. Well, whenever this comes up, immediately switch out the keyword and see if the sentence still lines up. And it's like, right-wing propaganda makes people think particular things about art. It's like, yeah, but it couldn't possibly happen with left-wing propaganda, could it? Like, that's that wouldn't happen. Nope. So. Why? Well, unless... This is why I don't know where he's going with it, because if he were to just be, I guess, apolitical and say everything is, all art is inherently political to some degree and it's influenced by the right and the left or whatever, then that's an argument that I could potentially be convinced on. Like, I, I don't think I agree, but just straight up saying the right, right are trying to trick it's you. It's just anything. Anyone can it, yeah. sort of convince you that an artwork means a particular thing with their own sort of rhetoric. That's more than possible, yeah. Like, but, you know, that, that's the thing about videos. What they say, like, this person, uh, you know, a good example would be Kag in Quantum Media when he said that uh, don't trust Janet because she changes her mind. It's like everybody <laughs> does. What do you mean? <laughs> it's yeah. influences, messages, or implications. 101, guys, this is baby stuff. Art critique is really just opinion, but a lot of people let right wing propaganda cloud their judgment of modern uh -huh. art, whether they realize it or not. All because it helps them feel better in not wanting to engage with it. In an ideal they allow right-wing propaganda to essentially cloud their judgment on a thing because it makes them feel better about having not to engage with it. That's a theory. I've, I've got nothing, sorry. I mean, I just disagree, yeah. so I <laughs> have to go further. In the conservative world, art is interpreted for people through a YouTube video full of lying, misinformation, emotional manipulation. So this is one of the most <laughs> fascinating fucking statements he could have made, considering if you were to summarize what he's done so far, it is to say, People interpret art in a particular way. They are wrong. I used to do it too. I do it right now. And the right way yeah. that I do it is to be told what the message behind the piece is. And he just... Listen, know all of that, and then listen to how he summarizes the bad videos. In not wanting to engage with it. In an ideal conservative world, art is interpreted for people through a YouTube video full of lying, misinformation, emotional manipulation, false... Do you get it? Like, that's fascinating, isn't it? That's is exactly it's, what he's done in the first two and a half yeah. minutes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say he's lying, but he's definitely told us how to interpret art, and uh, he said that's mm -hmm. the conservative. Well, I like, mean, he told world. you that the it told you that the original the the way that he thought about it right before that like mm -hmm. that his perspective being on it based on oh you know it's simple it didn't take much hard work it's like that's somebody's perspective that is I, like um, an approach that they're taking to it that you've said is now completely and utterly. That's why I brought up the whole open mind thing, because I don't know that he has increased his worldview in a beneficial way by going from, yeah, I take I the art that. piece and I think, I take the art piece and I think, all the way over to, I take the art piece, I go find out how it was made, and then I absorb that as the truth and move on. Like, hmm. And that's, that's the correct way to do it, and now yeah. I know. Well, and, what then, if and then he, he decries that process when it's right wing. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say, what if he listens to, I don't know, like if he's watched, I don't know, Jurassic Park or something, and then he listens to, uh, I guess, a filthy right winger talk <laughs> about the film, um, and he actually listens to what they have to say, despite thinking that 
uh, it's all misinformation because they're a right winger or whatever. And then he comes away being like, actually, those are some good points. But wait a minute, they're a right winger, so they can't be? Like, is that what he's doing? I guess it would be, I assume he's not saying all right wingers. <laughs> I don't know, though. You never I, know. I think videos. he said that. I oh, think dear. he actually said that. Not wanting to engage with it. In an ideal conservative world, art is interpreted for people through a YouTube video full of... It's so untrue. Yeah, because you're right. An ideal conservative world. So, like, this would be the conservative perspective, uh, the world perfected. Um, the amount of conservatives that fight each other over what a piece of art means, the idea that they're all hoping to be, like, the Borg when it comes to understanding art, I don't think so. And by the way, I'll give this benefit of the doubt to all, like, political persuasions. Everybody has their thoughts and feelings on art. I don't think anyone is like, I gotta go to my political party to understand what I'm supposed to think about the art. <laughs> what I will say <laughs> yeah. is that there are plenty of uh, pieces of art that get used as a calling, uh, what should I say, like a, like a beacon uh, in one direction or the other. So for example, like, um, so, you know, so something that is a heavily political film in some way, shape or form, uh, one side might claim it as sort of like, we should support this because it's blah, blah, blah. And then the other side might be like, we should fucking hate that because it represents blah, blah, blah. Like that happens. But then you get films like fucking Dead Reckoning, for example. It's just like, who likes and who doesn't like Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1? It's like, who knows? It might be it might be anybody, it might be not anybody. People disagree in all over the place and agree in all over the place. It could be anything. The idea that the right wing put out a fucking thing about like how you should feel about... It, I, just, I just don't buy it. I, think I don't silly. even understand yeah. what that means, though. Like, what is it like the, the right wing art like channel or something? That for every new thing that comes out is like here is the correct opinion on like what is that I don't I don't understand what that dynamic looks like. But something of a meme I've like... noticed is that with political pundits especially, and this could include people like Ben Shapiro, Destiny, whoever else, a lot of their biggest fans will be like, please don't talk about media. <laughs> like uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it like hurts me when you talk about media. Yeah. about media. People get mad. It's not like they go, ah, oh, yes, my political thought leader, tell me how to feel about the media. No, it's the opposite. They're like, shut the fuck up. Stop talking about it. It's horrible. Oh, God, uh, yeah. I really don't yeah, like the yeah. idea that like a film uh, can be used as a political litmus test where like the hive mind of, of whatever persuasion you think you are or whatever has decided that you're going to like it or not. Because what that then does is it also means that if someone who is of that political persuasion or someone who just doesn't care, if they then say, I liked this film or I don't like this film, in the back of your mind, if you think the way this guy potentially seems to, he's going to be like, oh, well, you're one of them. Like he's justifying why you think this way without actually listening to what you're saying. Yeah, and you know what's sad as well is if, if this section was uh, applied broadly, like all political sects do this, they would be like, eh, you know, I can, I, I can guess, like, I, I don't agree with the point, but I can at least see it. But it's like, no, the right wing do it. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how to put your cards on the table. That's what I mean, it's just like, that's, mm-hmm, yeah, okay. Uh-huh, all right. Yeah, it's they sure do. Is, You're smart. Information, emotional manipulation, false comparisons, but this happens every day. PragerU has made at least a dozen videos fooling your old oh, grandpa. Yeah, okay, about sorry, They're fooling it's... people. Fooling people. Uh, I don't I, actually I, I, have arguments. Don't really have any opinions on PragerU. Don't watch them at all. But hey, we'll yeah, uh, we'll yeah, see. Likewise. We'll treat what they say in the clips that he gives in the same way we treat what he says. Are they is PragerU who we've been getting our orders from? Because I haven't <laughs> got. The... I don't. I, mean, I don't know if we're right wing, are we? Who knows? Well, I do, I, do, well, I don't. I, we probably are. I don't know. I don't know who PragerU is. Uh, they exactly meet yet. I got you. Me too. I don't know who they are. I have never heard of them before. Who are they? I don't know. They They're don't. Quite pay me. We like, don't have. Uh... We don't have. We don't have secret moon bases that NASA runs where we go to all of our meetings. No, no. Do, so do I actually a, a think tank? Right. Yeah, uh... it's like a conservative think tank channel kind of thing organization. It's like yeah, they make wiry okay. kind of thing. They make shit tons of videos about all kinds of topics that uh, have a uh, right. right. It's safe to call them right wing, right? Oh yes, they're right yeah, wing. They're go. conservative right wing, yeah. Modern well, art. All of them are yeah. completely nonsense and wrong. Completely nonsense all and wrong. Of okay. them? All of them. All of them. Everyone. That's probably not true. Why is it that I hear the same boring, shallow, fragile talking points from people? Fragile? From you or what? <laughs> from other people? People who should you, be though? way more in touch with culture. Listen, yeah, I know his face is in the yeah. thumbnail, and yeah, this video is kind of about Charlie. But listen, <gasps> it's not personal. I'm trying Why'd to compare content that... Wait, so are we actually watching anything? So, so he is... 
he is scatterbrained, and this this is a badly fucking structured video, but what he just said to us was, I'm gonna cover Prague U's perspective on art, because it's backward and crap, and I shouldn't be hearing what they have to say, repeated also by someone like uh, Moist Critical. Oh, okay, so he's attaching... Why... okay, why do that, though? Well, and, and he described the points as fragile as well, which is... Or is the implication that, like, Moist Critical has fallen victim to the propaganda? <laughs> yeah, 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 because like... he, he brought up earlier okay. this right-wing propaganda that'll cloud ah, your judgement okay. on art. You can't let that happen. He's being uh, brainwashed. Okay. Yeah, it okay. can't be at all that everyone has opinions and they all share them and that other people are convinced uh, by them right, or not. Okay. Can't be that. But, but can't be that that's exactly the, what this video is trying to do. That. Yeah. All right, let's... Wow, so this is going to be a fun video, isn't it? All right, let's... let's you can, you just can, quickly... If there was a lack of self-awareness competition for EFAP-covered videos, I mean, <laughs> I was about to say this one would win. It's like, well... Hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to make any claims. We should have nothing in common. Fascist propaganda and gamer streamer should not be saying the same things. Why? Why not? What if, what if, what if they're a, right? Yeah, what, what if, if, I mean, what if it's an know, innocuous right? statement that's just true? But what if a gamer streamer is just a, a fascist? That's his political opinion. <laughs> yeah, you could be a gamer fascist. That's true, you could be yeah. a streamer. You could stream and be like, yeah, it's a, I, like, yeah I'm a fascist. Here's what I think. I just, uh, you know, Priggy, you were like, you should have a healthy diet. Like, well, can't be yeah, saying that Hitler anymore. Hitler thought the same thing. <laughs> wow. So do the we... difference is Prager used content Sorry. is... Yep, go ahead. Do we need to know what uh, Moist Critical said, or is the video going to tell you'll us? Because I have no idea. He's okay. going to give us uh, Prager U first, and then you'll go for Critical. Okay. Realistically should have nothing in common. Fascist propaganda and gamer streamer should not be saying the same things. <laughs> the difference is Prager U's content is motivated and has an agenda. Charlie is just being a useful idiot for that agenda. With So uh, I don't think that's applicable because Charlie's just expressing how he feels about art. He's not yeah, like- Yeah, he probably doesn't not, have he, to know anything he, about he, Prager U. He develop on his own though. That's what? probably what he's gonna say. He well, couldn't I feel have, like, like this correct me if I'm wrong, but useful idiot requires at least somewhat of like, I'm like, you so will love our better. team because it's going to help you do blah, blah, blah. And the person's like, it will? And you're like, yes, yes, it will, 100%, when it won't. But they're like, okay, cool, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I'll um, spread your ideology because I think it's true because it helps me in this way. And then someone else is like, you fool, you useful idiot. It doesn't help you at all. You oh, think it does. Okay. Wow. Meanwhile, someone advocating for a position they hold for unique reasons that benefits someone else's position, I don't think that should be considered the, them as a useful idiot for that other, you know, group. That's just, it, it, there's a crossover at that point. And the thing is, it, it almost implies, like, well, I say implies, it says that uh, Charlie does not understand the, you know, he doesn't even believe in his own position, it doesn't benefit him at all, and that he's just a useful idiot for Prager U. I think he would laugh his ass off if he heard that. Um, yeah. You know, spoiler alert, Charlie's perspective is basically just that he doesn't, he doesn't, he's not impressed by a lot of shitty modern art. That's it. Which is the correct opinion. It's a normal person's well, opinion. Uh, is that a political opinion? Uh, that's the effectiveness of the propaganda. I would argue Ooh. it's one of the more common opinions ever. Like, just that you see yeah, I mean, a splat on the wall and you go, well, that's shit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is actually literal shit, because that's the artist's intent. They wanted to throw their shit at the wall to make yeah, a point. Yeah, and like, when, someone, when you hear that, you're just like, ah, oh, come on. Like, <laughs> you're, of... you're fucking with me now. Someone else is going to tape a banana to the wall, and then it's like, oh, there they go. And you're like, oh, for fuck's sake, there it is. I'm glad you said that, Mola, because um, earlier on, someone sent me an image, which I put in the uh, chat. Um, and he says that this is an artist called Piero Man Manzoni, who took a shit in a can, sealed it, Spray painted it gold and sold it at auction for three hundred thousand dollars plus. <laughs> yeah, and see, so you just hear that and you're yeah, like, art okay. scams. <laughs> okay. I bought my three hundred thousand dollar can of shit today. <laughs> How much is your yeah. shit? I bet you just flush that away. Not me. Yeah, That's this gold. goes on the mantle. Yeah. He's in gold. I know it's not on purpose. Charlie doesn't watch Prager U for his art analysis content. He probably didn't even get the talking points from them. But I guarantee you, Charlie see, doesn't watch yeah, Prager U. There you go. Well, yeah, that's not, yeah. no, but you see, that's the point. He doesn't watch him, and he didn't get him from there. But that's, that's not the propaganda seeping through. How does so? So it's not from them, but it is their so right wing propaganda. I imagine, I imagine what his argument would be is that basically, like the think tank puts the thought out there, the thought then seeps through other channels and arrives. So even if you haven't seen Prager, you 
whatever it was that they put out has found its way like to seep through to like the consciousness of the public i was about to I ask does he argument. not think a left winger could come up with the position that modern art can suck and uh, then he, he would probably be like the second you have that position you're no longer right wing <laughs> it's like i mean oh, he oh, might left wing, sorry. That, that, that would be really stupid uh if he thought that but he yep. might but they're still saying the same thing charlie's just an average guy with an average brain in his head florida average but that an average up. brain in his head, oh, cool. He's so, like, put okay. out the notion already just, that he's not very intelligent. Yeah, yeah it's just it's like, all right, not like me. Fucking I'm intellectual really over yeah, exactly. here. Tell us what you exactly. think. Yeah, like, I'm sure. I mean, holy shit. This guy's Still big out. brain, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. How similar normal average guy language can be to. Ah, that's right. See, no, yeah, this is what <laughs> normal I mean, average, normal guy, average language. guy language. Not like me, the sophisticated art analysis yeah. man. Which all he's I'll told us so it. far is that he's been told what to think about art and that changed his life. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, so far he's communicating in regular everyday, you know, words. But do you, do you get what I mean, though? The, the, the whole well, criticism he has of PragerU is exactly what he said changed his life about art, being well, told what to think. Just, there's so much subtext here. The subtext is I'm much smarter than the <laughs> yeah. average for beard. What I would <laughs> need to know is what exactly did criti most critical say that this guy thinks was taken from PragerU? I guess we're gonna get. Which we're, I guess yeah, we'll, we'll get there. I'll say we'll get there. It's gonna be a while before we but get to the, see the actual quotes. The funny part is, my guess is it's gonna be that the quotes are vaguely similar, but that we will rule out any possibility that he could have arrived at a similar conclusion independently. <laughs> Not I'm, possible, that's not yeah. as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's the it's a normal perspective to say that that pile of shit is shit. It's just there's not like why are we treating this like it's a political thing is insane. Evaded propaganda content that we all then again everything is political. So no, is dishonest. Listen, it's nothing personal. It's nothing against Charlie. I've met him before. He's very nice. I just don't know just why he's stupid. like this. He's not smart, right? <laughs> don't know why he's like this. Why do people look at a pile of cheese just... and just not go like this is incredible art? Once I read the plaque, he just gave your normal, a, a pretty normal and probably pretty accurate perspective uh, on art that most people would hold. Yeah, but it's right wing. Oh, okay. Well, well I think I think that's they something that he probably needs to understand first and foremost is the average person isn't sitting down having these massive philosophical no. conversations about what it yeah. is and art. The average They're living lives and going to their jobs, art, having a conversation like, "So, is a mountain art?" Like, I think if you if you just have that conversation with like somebody who's just leading their life and you know consumes art in between like general like family activities and work and things like that, they'd just be like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Yeah, like, they wouldn't why even ask that. They w they just wouldn't be that interested in the conversation. It's like because it's just like you know, like I understand what art is, right? I go watch a movie. I you know, I I go I see a painting. I play a video game or whatever. Like the average person isn't having these sorts of conversations to figure out what is and isn't art, like definitionally, and whether or not that applies consistently to the guy eating the banana off the wall. Exactly. Um, and then the idea that that average person, you know, sees uh, the banana on the wall and says, "How is that art?" And then this guy is like, oh, are you right wing? Have you fallen for the propaganda? Yeah, like, uh, just... What do you mean you don't know? Is it Prager you get to you? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, what do you mean? <laughs> what? Okay, first things first. Bad. Why is modern art so bad by Prager you from eight years ago? You know, like a painting. Oh, look, the We're Mona Lisa down, next but... to a bunch of splotches on the wall. I mean, you yeah, know, it's a fair question too. I like how that's basically what people think of instantly with modern art is like just... Random splotches? random splotches or like a toilet in the middle of a room mm. yep i wonder why they think that. <laughs> the foundation of what i'm going to be talking about and right. since this video is made to target fatherless teenagers fatherless teenage okay but i'm sure that okay okay what can you say so about that? Oh, you're saying that so fatherlessness is a problem then right what do, I, I'm, I'm, what do I do I don't, with that? If all those teenagers are uh, gonna really find this video about years, how shit the banana tape is gonna be, like what? Yeah. It's just Robert Flork. Fuck you for not having a dad. To, yeah. To help us all think. From Leonardo to Rembrandt to Bierstadt, produced works that inspired, Ooh, uplifted, and deepened us. Ah, uh, they're putting the text they on did the this screen. By demanding of themselves yeah. the highest standards of excellence, improving upon the work of each previous generation of masters and continuing to aspire to the highest quality attainable. Conservatives are so- All right, now, if you went to an art school or you took these guidelines as what you should do for your craft and you took them to heart, you would probably make some insanely good art.
So this is the thing. I mean, um, if we were told to tear into this as best we can, of... I believe we could. We talk about definitions. We talk about where he's drawing a lot of this from. But this is some standard like advice that is you know yeah. improve upon the work. It's like yeah, sure. Basically, have a high standard That's and cool. work hard. Which previous generation. I guess of if you master. wanted to do like the big old stretch, it would be that maybe it's narrowing in too much on one way, which would be iteration rather than like massive sweeping. You know what I mean? Like, if you wanted to read that into it, but the problem is, I feel like we're not going to get the full context of the video, so I don't actually know what this guy's broad point is. Yeah, nor are we going to be able to ask him, for example, like, you know, you seem to have, uh, as you just mentioned, like, working from previous uh, generations and eras, but what about, like, experimentation combinations and uh, exactly. outright just crazy yeah. shit that you just want to see if you can create a new new standard, new uh, format sort of thing. Yeah, like, would you... Yeah, exactly. Like, how does he feel about, you know, I guess, deviations from the... How does he feel about impression to start, for instance, or, like, abstract art and whatnot? Continuing to aspire to the highest quality attainable. Because aspiring to the highest quality attainable is all well and good, but, of course, we'd need One to know... One and basically the same thing. <laughs> demanding the highest standards of excellence and aspiring to the highest quality attainable. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, I feel like they're basically yeah, the of. same thing. Um... Which, it, which kind of, well, the in, interesting in way, difference to me, of, like, includes the second. I wonder if uh, aspiring to it is the, so, like, the painter themselves, and then demanding the highest standards of excellence is that, like, in review? And so if it's uh, not, then you get... Maybe, yeah. Like, like the it... process that you essentially go through to become better is that you have an expectation of yourself. Of... But then again, the, the problem is, what do we mean by quality? What do we well, actually what I was mean gonna say by is, that, you know? The reason why I was going to pause it they're the same is because I kind of, I, I'm, I'm okay with number three. I'm not as much okay with number one. Because, like, a, aspire to greatness, sure. Demand the highest standard. It's like... Uh, um, I, I, well, I, it's, is that the their way of is saying, the, like, be very, like, intense on yourself, I guess? Well, I guess or, the thing is, when you start, you're probably not going to be very good, and you need to be yeah, comfortable and that's not okay. being very good for a long time. Until he, well, hence, good. aspire yeah. is the word I like. Aspire is better, yeah, I yeah. think aspire is well, better, because it's more of the long game. Also, if you're uh, relatively new at whatever the art form is, you may not even understand what the highest quality attainable is. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, when you draw the shitty horse and then you draw the fire horse, uh, you know, ten years later, you get to look back on your shitty well, horse just, and be like, there you go. Yeah. Dunning-Kruger, right? It takes some time to actually, like, even understand. Like, what you, you don't start understand, out really yeah. confident. Yeah, and then eventually it's like, you don't know what you don't know, and then you know what you don't know. <laughs> like, the, the longer that you go, it's like the more of an understanding. And then, of course, it depends on, like, the process, right? You could get locked into a particularly rigid way of thinking about your craft, or you could be uh, put into, like, a more open-ended... Uh, also, the heading of, uh, here is Methods craft. of the Masters, so that does seem to make a little bit more sense in terms of this is under the context oh, sure, of previous, sure. you know, very good in their fields people. Like, these three um, match I mean, that yeah. more than they do art in general, necessarily. Sure. Is... Conservatives are so artistically and creatively bankrupt that their understanding Jeez. of art... And, and you've got these, these images down. in the background that are like... <laughs> Look at this bag yeah, of creativity. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a beautiful painting. It is. Uh... These are gorgeous. Wait, hold on. So what happens, what happens if I write a really cool song and then I, I guess, transition and become a conservative? Is the song no longer good? Yes. <laughs> You you know Tess like that would be so much fun when well you because uh, well, that yeah. happens all the time. My, my, my impression would be that this guy probably rarely, if ever, can divorce the art from like some broader societal context. I need to know the, the politics of the person. Progression. Exactly. Mm. I I get the impression that he probably is beyond the point of being able to look at something oh, yeah. in his vacuum as best as possible. The yes. first thing he would ask is, well, what, what are their politics? Who is this person? Before well, I yeah, have so any for opinions on anything they I do, could I gotta look imagine, up their YouTube, look up their Twitter. I could imagine that with this painting, it would be like, well, you know, the painting may look nice and all, but you need to understand that in the context in which it was painted, like 19th century trends on, you know, like the, the <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it would be, I feel like I imagine that he would struggle to just talk about it for what it is. I'm also slightly confused as to why he would have this perspective, because if he believes that all art is inherently political, but then he's going to say that all conservative art is... What exactly did he say? It was bad or something like is that? It, it was uh, there. I think he said, like, bankrupt. conservative... Right. Did so he that... say that about the art or about the interpretation of the art? Let's have a look. 
each previous generation of masters and continuing to aspire to the highest quality attainable. Conservatives are so artistically and creatively bankrupt. Bank Jeez. Oh, okay. Artistically just, and just, creatively. Okay. I say, like broadly. Because that's done so. I just can't. You can't create. I that, mean, to me, why, suggests... why, why think like that? Why be like that? I would actually say, yeah, that doesn't make sense. He can't uh, claim, like, you might be able to creatively bankrupt, well, meaning what? They can't create, they won't create, or but, that they... But, 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 I mean, how does, does this mean that, like, any art that was made before the 20th century, considering that the vast majority of the artists of those times would be considered pretty conservative compared to, like, the average person of today, would that be applied retroactively? Like, that all of those people, by comparison, are, like, creatively... Do you, do you know what I mean? Like that, yeah, that anybody like, who created something in the past would be creatively bankrupt because their perspectives are probably more conservative than the average person of today. Yeah, I mean, you think Leonardo da Vinci, all... like, what do you think his opinions <laughs> were, like, politically well, and socially? It's, it's... Like, probably like a lot of other people, which was probably by our standards not that great. Dude, when fucking, like... you know, Og was painting on the cave, it's like, yeah, but what's your opinions that's on right. immigration, Og? He's <laughs> like, why? Oh, that, is, that is really funny. What is the politics of Og's painting on the wall? <laughs> what is Og's <laughs> position on dragging women into the cave by their hair? <laughs> <laughs> Me for it. Um, like, would it be fair to maybe assume of this guy that he potentially wants to know the politics of the artist so that he is not then caught out thinking that conservative art is good based on the fact I, that he thinks well, all art is political? I don't want to be that cynical. Um, I, I, but... I get the... I, uh, it's just that I wouldn't rule that out. Because <laughs> like, that's that, all I'd say. That, yeah, that explanation fits. It's just, it doesn't necessarily catch all. I, I just get the impression that, like, I, I'm super getting the impression now that it is, like, this is a, a way that he can separate himself from the crowd. Look at my wonderful, like, enlightened perspectives Boy. on art and how developed they are compared to the pleb. We're not far in, but it feels like the cartoon he's describing, he is just the other side of it. I mean, pretty much. I it know, seems that yeah. way. But uh, maybe, maybe it'll become more developed and less of a caricature as, uh, as we progress. Yeah. That their understanding of art hits a hard limit at, if it's not pretty, I don't want to see it. This old stuff, it, it's pretty, and it took a long time, so... Generally, though, why'd that's... You, why'd, you, yeah. why'd you say it like that? I was, I was it's gonna say, pretty, like, and it took a long time. I would time. prefer like, to see pretty things. So, like, do you really why think you all, say... the, all the right-wing perspective on these paintings would be is that it's pretty, and it took a while to make? That's all they've got? Really? I mean, can we can we be a little bit more like good faith? Slightly you know? more generous, yeah. <laughs> I find it amusing that he keeps leaning on the idea that it's hard to make being a conservative uh, <laughs> perspective, because that is kind of suggesting that trying your best is a conservative value. Yeah, no, you're completely right. They they accidentally sort of backfire with this. It's, he's he's sequestering hard work to the conservatives. It's like why why are you doing like, that? Why would you why would you surrender that ground? So strange. Sometimes, we'll, so. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to see. It depends on where he goes. Let's say, yeah. That means it's better. They pretend like they don't think exactly like that, but they do. But something. Oh, okay. Oh. Well. All right. Well. <laughs> okay. Cool. This, well, this guy. Me. I don't know, man. I don't feel like you can say stuff like that after making fun of Charlie. You know, so I might consider it to be a bit ironic. But, I was actually yeah. going to say this video can't have done that great for Charlie fans so far, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> I mean, Charlie's an idiot, yeah. but I'm smart. I'm big smart. Happened. I went to a gallery once. Right. I went to the gallery and it blew open yeah. my butt. The implication of that statement, by the way, if you if we were to roll back, we don't need to, was that uh, nobody else who has the perspective has done that. He was like, and then I went to a gallery and looked at the art, you know? Like, the implication is, mm -hmm. if you have the perspective that modern art is shit, you haven't been to a gallery. When... Hence why Which, I believe course, that both me and Fringy... And I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> immediately, like... What made us I didn't know what modern art Why was until it, uh, I went to a gallery, you know? I could be wrong here, but hey chat, let me know. Um, has everyone been to at least one like art museum slash gallery in their life? A lot of them are free. Uh, you figure, right? A lot uh, of them are free because a lot of, you're, you already fucking paid for it. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. The thing is, for me, it was uh, like school trips was uh, the initial exposure. It's just like, yep. yeah, for a school trip you go. Yeah, and, yeah and school will do a lot, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, Everybody's saying yes, except for a couple of people. Yeah, you should. <laughs> a couple you know, of just, people. Uh, most... Go see you, you know, Go with a friend, right and, and you'll find something. Definitely. Yeah. In um, every one of it's them. It's just, you'll find a lot of stuff. And, and of course, it's cool to see, uh, you know, from differing sort of uh, genres and differing techniques and everything. Mediums, Like, there's cultures. a good amount of variety. 
Yeah, exactly. I would have loved to have seen that robot that. in person uh, mopping up I would have loved oil. to see that robot too. I'm so glad that you introduced me to that because that's like a really fascinating one for me. I find that one super interesting. It's um, it's particularly cool the uh, because this is an aspect of art we didn't even necessarily talk about, but the video I remember seeing of it originally was there's so many people just surrounding the piece Wait. and staring at it and thinking, and it's like that alone is super interesting. Just looking at everyone's reactions to it, you know. What do, they, what do you think they're thinking about, that sort of stuff? Mm. And on the way to the 20th century, the profound, the inspiring, and the beautiful were replaced by the new, the different, and the ugly. Well, Man, replaced? You aren't <laughs> replaced? Replaced? Or, no, I, I wouldn't say I, I replaced. I mean, yeah, like there's existence for all of it. Attitude, I mean, it's, it's, added, it's more prevalent, sure, but I, I, don't, I don't know if I like the use of the word replaced. Yeah, or necessarily ugly. Things change over time. Uh, yeah, ugly uh, attitudes ugly change. Could, yeah, do we, do we <laughs> yeah, want to unravel the fucking concept of ugly art? It's like, exactly. Oof. Yeah. He's like, Beauty yeah, there's an ugliness. Yeah, I wouldn't call an impressionist painting. I mean, like ugly compared to the Pieta or something. But they're just like, yeah, that, they're different. It's a bit reductive. They're just different. Yeah. Uh, at f first and foremost, is they're different. If you want to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it feels like there's almost. Yeah at least two stages of ugly like ugly in terms of good god that was a pathetic attempt to make this like you, that i can see how you made it and it looks crap versus you painted something incredibly well that is ugly do you know what i mean sure. <laughs> but yeah. that, that's just two like there's way more than that beautifully, yeah. styles ugly i mean that's mad not only is that completely subjective but the other two are synonyms in this context robert what are we doing but all new and different New and different aren't synonyms. New and different are not synonyms at no, all. No, they describe no. this. No, I was no different because why would he, you can it have could two be new things and that are old that are different from each other and new and you can have a new thing that's similar. You can have two well, things that are new that, that aren't different. Exactly. That's true. You can yeah. No, it's just wrong. <laughs> Um, like, he, he might be right in the there may be context in which you can use the, the you could switch one out for the other and it doesn't change oh, the sure, meaning too much but, but yeah he's wrong to say that they are just strictly synonyms yes that is that is wrong yeah and he said it so smugly too <laughs> like, well he's really smart he's not like that idiot charlie with his florida brain this guy's a really smart dude so charlie. maybe you should shut your fucking mouth and listen to him talk about art because he's He's a really smart guy, as you know, as you can tell, this is a this is a really smart guy. He really mm -hmm. knows what he's talking about. Also, yeah. he's talking about impressionism. Ugly? Yeah? Uh, ugly? There's wait, a reason. Wait, whoa, wait, whoa, whoa. Is he talking about impressionism? Wait, wait, hold on. Not only that, but he just said that? ugly? Yeah. There's like, wait. Wait, what? so you like, wait, you like, <laughs> no, right? I, I think I think he's uh, he's memeing, right? He's saying like you're actually saying that impressionism but if he's already... is ugly, really? Okay, I'm super lost, because didn't he just say, the opening fucking point he made can was we, that it's subjective. Can we, uh, yes, but, you know, <laughs> let's rewind here, Please rewind time. But the other two people were replaced by the new, the different, and the ugly. Nah, new art style's ugly, I mean, that's mad. Not only is that completely subjective, but He's the other two are synonyms I in think. this context. Robert. Sorry? He's, he's saying ugly. But he's saying that he was is subjective about him saying it was ugly, right? Yeah, that's what he said. Something at the beginning. Of, yeah. Okay. So why why would you even? Oh, oh, right, right. If you I, if I your point it, is like, it's subjective, is, ugly is subjective, but also are you saying this is ugly, really? It's like wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah, because it would just be like if you've already <laughs> blown open the doors that anyone can find anything ugly or beautiful, then what's the point in saying like yeah, but this isn't ugly though? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like, then what? Because then you would have to accept that he could look at that and say it is absolutely. Ugly, yeah, you have no argument. You would have no means of of fighting him on that. That's the direction I would take it. Is that he clearly finds a lot of this ugly, and that's whatever. Yeah, fine. I mean, he, 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 did he even say this about Impressionist art? He I said don't the 20th know. century, 19th century was like when Impressionism started to become more prevalent. Because yeah, we haven't even gotten to whether or not what he just said is representative of what the other guy said is even true. <laughs> like it's, this is a video with layers. What are we doing? But also, he's talking about Impressionism. Ugly? Oh, yeah, okay. I, I, okay. Is he? I don't know. You didn't show me. Ugly? There's a reason they aren't using any actual examples. Today, the silly, the pointless, and the purely offensive are held up as the best of modern art. I guess this last one is supposed to be Warhol, I guess. People- I, I imagine they, you're not supposed to look I, that deeply into it. Yeah, I don't know about that. But that's, you know, that's the joy of art. You could, if that's how you deep you want to look into it. Though I think we should be a bit charitable. Um, I <laughs> the mean, thing is- 
Warhol's fun memes and all, but you know, it, it, it's fine. Yeah. Mm. It's well, he's awesome. also saying purely mm. offensive, as if that's the that's the that's all it is. Like something art can be offensive as well as being something else. If it is just offensive, my you know, he, he's loading the state today. The uh, so if you look at this. I think I think that the art direction of this video isn't necessarily 100% connected with the person who wrote it. And what I mean by that is that when they say three aspects or three dominant aspects of art creation these days is to be silly, to be pointless, and to be purely offensive, the representation of those three things it was up to the uh, the person who you know does the artwork for this video. I don't think okay. that, I they didn't talk to each other. Yeah, I don't think the writer was trying to say that Andy Warhol does it purely offensive works. I don't think we're supposed to interpret it that way. Though I will say it is the, the video raises an interesting point, which is: does this video have any examples specifically? Because that would be good if it did. Like, I think it an does. Example of what it's talking about. Okay. And, uh, I mean, and and what I will say, by the way, is that matching your visual in that way is still a plus to the video, especially for like understanding your point better. So if they had chosen a well-known style for purely offensive from an artist they believe to be purely offensive, that would be, you know, good. I, I'm kind of trying to think, like, from the perspective of what <clears throat> you guys have told me about PragerU, what would they deem to be a work of art that is silly, pointless, and purely offensive? Because I'm kind of thinking... I have no idea. Family sure. Guy, but then, like, I don't, I don't think that that is true of Family Guy. I just think that maybe that's a perspective that people like that might have, maybe? I, I could no I could idea. see them no, saying no. that about like if they saw a scene you know the one where they all throw up from the Epicat. <laughs> yeah, so. Like I could see the I could see the <laughs> yes. conservative guy being like, This is silly, pointless, and offensive purely. It's shock. Shock yeah. comedy, basically. Purely offensive are held up as the best of modern art. I guess this last one is supposed to be Warhol. I guess people typically like those. Maybe. They can't use real examples yeah, because right, people yeah. relate Fine. and connect to modern art. But in order to manipulate the viewer more, but it's this point that people typically like it. So I don't think what I don't think it would surprise conservative man to be told that there are people who like modern art and connect with it. You'd be like, okay, yeah, especially Warhol's a famous pop artist, so like, yeah. that won't. I'm gonna yeah, surprise that, him. That won't surprise him. Yeah. And I mean, we're all on board with the idea that people can connect with anything, nothing, even. We can connect True. with the yeah, okay. absence of things. Proficiently, they have to use blank straw men to apply all their talking points. Okay, so. but what? Not you, though. We've we've heard the guy talk for like 10 seconds. It's like, you know, could you at least let him play a little longer to see what the context of everything is? You're telling me you can't think of one example. The only examples that they do use in this video are of like extremely graphic modern art. Like I thought you said there were no examples, and then you say that there are these examples. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. What yeah. is that in the bottom right? Is that a guy doing? That's a dude taking a. He, oh, that's a Slav squatting. That's a Slav media squatting. colon something and metal. I I don't know if. Oh, I guess like it's uh, uh, how it was made. Yeah, because the top left one, he said it's made with cow dung. Oh, I assume that that's part cool. of what they think is uh, offensive, possibly. I don't know. This is the thing. This this obviously the video he's responding to has now been butchered. Um, I'm a particularly annoyed that he said there were no examples, and then he shows this screenshot. It's like, yeah, that's mm. that's not a very that's not a very Florida brain take right there. Bad example. That's a bad example. You're talking about like Warhol, and then you're talking about like the pissing woman statue. Well, to you, I, I thought you were saying like example. someone could find these equally offensive or artistically meritable because it's all subjective anyway in terms of how ugly or beautiful you find them. Because it seems like he's drawing the distinction now, doesn't it? You can't you can't be um, saying that these two are of equal standing in terms of how beautiful they are. It depends on the political meaning behind them, I guess. <laughs> Do you I have a those Dr. Exact... Robotnik like little sticker on his uh, microphone there? Yeah, he does. Mm -hmm. I didn't mention it earlier, but I could have. I, I I just noticed. Exactly comparable. Michelangelo carved his David out of a rock. Okay. The Los Angeles County Museum of Art just offers us a rock. A rock, all 340 tons of it. That's how far standards have fallen. Again, more deceptive language, more lying by omission. So everything you just said, I assume, is true. I assume it's. It's going to be pretty hard I... to, because from what he just said, unless the rock, no matter, it doesn't matter what con. The fact that he said there is a rock, is that wrong? I mean, well, uh, I, I mean, Michelangelo did carve 
like, and, and if this one is just a rock, a rock yeah. if it is just a rock, sitting no, on yeah, it's not, like a thing. It's like, titanically less impressive. Yeah. And, and if it's, it's like, I mean, it is. you don't know, though, that the guy who put the rock there went through, you know, a civil war in his original country, and he's just like, blah, 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 blah. Is it a rock? Yeah, but the rock was taken from his original. He's like, I, 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 just is. Was it a rock? Why are you? Saying? It's like the. He's immediately talking about how the guy is like lying, deceptive language. Look what he's done. The propagandist. Which is a weird to almost like hype up how incredible Michelangelo's accomplishment was. Was to say he carved it from a rock. It was just a rock before, but now look at what he's made out of it. That's a credit to the artist, if anything else. I guess it can be used. In a dismissive way, but I imagine okay. that for the most part, but I guess I imagine like, that that's no. his point, right? Is like, oh, Michelangelo, yeah, you know, carving it out oh, of a rock, hyping rock. that up, hyping that one up, while just saying that the other one, I, like, I just—is it a rock? Is it a rock that's just sitting there? That's what I want to know. If it's <laughs> a rock it a that's rock? just sitting there, it's gonna be—it's—it's it's gonna be a little bit further down from the fucking David. <laughs> well, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the comparison, clearly. So if you're gonna say like he's being deceptive because he hasn't explained. What, I'm guessing, by the way, because or, the I, you remember the intro to this video is that he went to galleries to understand the histories behind the thing, and so he's going to explain the history behind the the rock, and then it's going to be like, you mm. see, there was a lot more to this than you might think, and unless he's going to be talking I, about I, the construction or that it was chiseled in that particular way through a lot of time and effort, I don't think my opinion is going to change that much. But let's see, and again, going from the additional contest he's going to give us, listening to the PragerU guy again, do you feel that he was deceptive? All right, so listen to him and then listen to the, the additional context. Oh, carved his David out of a rock. The Los Angeles County Museum of Art just offers us a rock. A rock. All 340 tons of it. Like you walk. That's how far standards have fallen. Like again, more deceptive language, more rock. lying by omission. We all know Michelangelo and his classic rock. But weird that he left the artist out of the second one, right? That's just the LA County Museum of Arts's rock. It's actually called Levitated Mass, if you even care. It's by Michael Heiser. Not I've seen really it in person, and it's really cool. What Robert well, Forksack leaves out of this video is the actual experience of oh, you just the walk sculpture. Under it. It's not just a rock that you look at, I like mean, other sculptures. I mean, it's a sculpture that okay, you walk okay. under. All right. Standing directly okay. beneath tens of thousands of okay. pounds of rock, you older could, than okay. anything around it, suspended just enough by these small yep, brackets. Yep, 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 yep. So th th this is the thing. Do you feel the Prague U Man was deceptive? He was... It is just a rock. You, I guess you could walk under it, and that's not typically how you engage with boulders. Normally right. you don't see them from below, so... I would say you have to be pretty fucking harsh to say that, uh, that, that Prague U Man <clears throat> left out incredibly important context. I would argue instead that he's clearly not phased at all by the you can walk underneath it and read about what it means part of the art. He's more phased oh, by yeah, I, the construction. I think the, the, the clearer read of it is that it's not that he's trying to mislead you, it's that his true perceived... Yeah, like his true perception of it is, it's just a rock like sitting there. <clears throat> Not that he's lying to you. Yeah, his uh, phrasing of it as it's just a rock, like that makes that's not deceptive. That's him structuring a sentence to make clear that his opinion is that it is just a rock, which is a you know in contrast to the well, to the statue. Yeah, to help illustrate, after this whole explanation, Prague Man's response would be, "So it's just a rock." Probably, yeah. Yes. And then this guy would be like, "Wow, you're still deceiving people." It's like, well, I, mm. do, I think we can probably assume that PragerU guy knew that you could walk under it, right? Like, I don't know if this is some famous oh, wait, rock. I guess that. it must be. Well, yeah, and and I think it's more interesting to us. He's like, he left the artist's name out of it. It's like, why do you think he did that? He, he doesn't see this as like a thing that was created oh, by an artist necessarily. It's, it's just a rock yeah. that was moved from one place to another. Which, yeah, we, uh, we were talking about artistic expression, what it means to qualify as art. We would probably say this absolutely does qualify, but man, you know. This is art. Yeah, it's, 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 we're now like into... The way that it's even arranged and, like, all of the structures surrounding it that are supporting it, yeah, sure, I'd say that. Yeah, art. no, I, I do think it qualifies, yeah, but art, you can yeah. understand why someone would say, this versus David. That's a rock. I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? You think about, like, David and the fact that it was carved from stone and how long it would have taken. Yeah. And how and and the process behind it versus putting a rock on a like a thing above you suspending it, it's just it's, like intuitively it's just it just seems like it's lesser. It kind of to me seems like the difference between let's say watching the Lord of the Rings and watching twelve hours of footage from your ring doorbell. 
<laughs> like maybe maybe some pretty interesting stuff happens in front of your house, but um, it's not structured. It's not intentional. And I would completely understand someone saying that it isn't art. But then I, I could also understand someone saying that it is. So like the difference is that the the PragerU guy is saying, or it, it, he hasn't said, but he's implying that the rock is not a piece of art, or at least it's, if it is a piece of art, it's not on the same level as the statue. Um, what this guy seems to be saying is that Prager you guy is lying or is being deceitful or or manipulative or whatever. Uh, he doesn't think that his opinion is genuine, <clears throat> seemingly. Yeah, because people are mentioning the, the the guy who made it is prominent, and it's like, yeah, the, the point isn't uh, the... I think you should credit the artist no matter what. I'm saying that um, yeah, the fact that he's yeah. not, the implication of his statement is that it's um, Michelangelo's David is like a expert amazing thing that he crafted from rock versus a rock like you, you get it's it's for the effect of, of trying to illustrate what's gone wrong but of course i would even this is not the defense i would give of it i would probably argue that these are completely different mediums with yeah, completely different are intentions totally different. i feel We're like, not meant to, like compete with each other yeah. Yeah. yeah would it be you want to take the greatest like you want to take the greatest of each probably would be a better comparison you know would our it, michael would it be angelo fair? Sorry, Regs. Um, would it be fair to say that, like, the comparison that he's making between the rock and the statue would be like if, for example, he didn't like Prager, you guy didn't like Jackson Pollock because it's just like random spatterings of paint, or like that's what he, per he perceives it as. And he would have compared, like, say, the Mona Lisa was, you know, painted and he gives a bunch of information about it. And these days we just get it's just random spatterings of paint. And it's like, come on, that was Jackson Pollock, or it, it is Jackson Pollock, right? That's yeah, his yeah, name. yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that, that and it's fair. like he's he's famous, but okay. By omitting the name, you're kind of making the point that I I don't care who did it. It's just a spattering of paint, or in this case, it's just a rock, which is his perspective. Yeah, he, uh, the we way you, you might phrase that is that we had like incredibly perfectly crafted painting versus just paint. Yes. Yeah, because that, that is the point that the uh, Prague man's trying to make. This is why I don't see it as deceptive. Uh, he's more trying to insult this work. Yeah, I don't think I agree with him, but it, what he's saying it makes sense. Well, because he said something about um, we've we've uh, our standards have have like declined, and I guess what he's trying to imply with that is that people will see this and be like, "Woohoo, this is amazing, great!" In the same way that they may have with uh, Michelangelo's David, and he's like, "How how is it that we've how are these getting the same reaction?" That's insane. That is obviously his perspective. Yeah. Which is a whole conversation on its own, but my response wouldn't be, uh, bro, you left out that it, you can walk underneath it, and that you uh, you didn't mention who made it, and that it's supposed to represent blah blah blah. It's just like, yeah, but that's really not hitting the substance that's of what almost, he thinks. It's almost like it would have the opposite effect by saying you didn't even mention you could walk under it. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like okay. Yeah, it's like all right. I, is that is that a key oh, part of it, the experience? That that's it, I, isn't I it? Like, that's the thing. I suppose so. Like the better argument would have been to like explain what's around it or the way that it's arranged, like to just describe that it isn't just a rock, like it's part of a bigger thing, a bigger structure. That might have. Yeah, been. maybe it's part of like a a big like landscape well, it, garden. Well, I mean, in the imagery, he involved the fact that there was a pathway. You could see it. Rags even said. Uh, oh, sure, sure. That uh, I I guess when I saw that, I had no idea what that meant. Like I That's didn't fair. find the now the image makes sense to me, having seen it. But at the time, I was like, why is there like a a concrete pathway like leading to the rock? Is like, is it like a concrete path that narrows to the rock sitting there? It wasn't super clear to me because I've never heard of this before. Yeah, neither have mm -hmm. I. That is art. It's easy to dismiss sure. the yep. sculpture. Well, to be fair, Prigg, you man didn't say it wasn't art, right? He said it was shit. Well, he's saying it's modern he, art. He implies so. that it's bad. Yeah, yeah, which, I mean, you know, <laughs> I feel like that's much more defensible than it's not art. Sure, when yeah. you've never seen it in person, most physical art, especially sculpture, was never meant to be looked at on a fucking screen. <laughs> it's like watching the theater. Well, sure, like, like, but you would have to agree that if I saw like a picture of David that I would get more from that, even if I can't see it in person, than a picture of this rock. It was nuts as well. Like in terms of the experience of perceiving it. We had like a hyper 8K, uh, you know, 4D scan or whatever of, of, of David from every last inch, and then you could uh, go into VR mm -hmm. and move around it fully, zoom into any part you want, and even go from like top down, right? Places that you likely wouldn't be able to in the original um, presentation of it. Is that then mean that the experience in that VR is like, because the implication here was that it's superior to see it 
as it's intended. I, th I think you just have to be careful with the language there, right? As intended versus uh, better or worse. Because you don't want to say... Yeah, that's like, right. Because uh, I think we're all happy to concede seeing a pyramid in person versus on Google Images, right? It's like... Sure. Well, it's be different, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, seeing it on VR instead of Google Images, like, well, that's probably, you know, a significant upgrade. Probably and then, um, but, but, you know, what, uh, like that example with David, it's like, if you got that experience where you could look at anything and into a fine detail that you probably can't even do in real life, like how close you can get to it, maybe you can zoom into the fucking molecules. Like, that's the thing that offers in the VR experience. It's like, does that mean it's a better experience now? Does it mean it's a different experience? Does the artistic quality go to someone else? I don't know. It's just that. The implication, of course, is that we recognize what this is until we go and walk underneath it ourselves. We shouldn't be allowed to comment on the quality of the experience, I suppose. And it's like, okay, fine, but we can still talk about the fact that it's a rock, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I was going to say, does do you, because I don't quite know where I stand on this, do you think that the effort that you have to go through in order to experience a piece of art, like going to the cinema for example rather than streaming it on netflix or climbing everest versus viewing a picture of the top or something um that i don't i don't want to say that that makes it more art because of what i said earlier and i'm trying to get it straight in my head but uh i feel like that would definitely have the potential to make it more meaningful um well i mean you could change it to a more common one playing a video game on a different difficulty is going to ultimately create a different experience in your mind. And if you play it on, I don't know, easy mode versus you accomplish it on very, very hard mode, that that will create like a different sort of feeling about the, the yeah. art that you've consumed. The experience That's true, yeah. like affects the potency for sure of, of how you value it. And it can change your opinion on it in a way that's more, I guess, quantifiable, like that you can point to more uh, rigid metrics for it. You know, how does a game play on easy versus very hard difficulty? So... I mean, the way that you experience it is a part of it, for sure. Like, the Record. medium, especially if we're talking about, like, a picture of this rock compared to seeing the rock. Or a video of the rock compared to a picture of the rock, you know? Yeah, like, being, you know, as this video just showed, being underneath that rock and being like, holy shit, this thing's big, it's uh, heavy, and maybe, you know, thinking about... I mean, I probably wouldn't think this because I'd find it fucking boring, but there's a whole bunch of stuff you could be thinking about while standing underneath this gigantic 300-ton yeah. rock or whatever oh. it is. Um, yeah that you don't get from just looking at the video, but that isn't yeah, sure. a comparable experience to looking at Michelangelo's David. At least I wouldn't say so. They're complete. It's like, you know, listening to a song versus looking at a painting, you know, they're completely different essentially. And things get complicated with like, if you just finalize your divorce and then you go and see this thing versus you just had the birth of your child and you go and see this thing, like it, that's well, going to factor in as, enormously. You know, age. Yeah, you know how old were you when you saw something? What life experiences did you have when you saw it the first time versus the second time versus the third time? Recording of half of a movie, <laughs> you didn't really see it, did you? Is Levitating Mass everyone's favorite sculpture? No, it's not even mine. But if someone told me their favorite even statue his. was Michelangelo's Whoa. David, then it probably means that they don't really know about any other ones. <laughs> Levitating what? Mass. Um, David's I really mean, fucking good, my dude. Well, it's also very it's, famous. Like, hyper very famous. famous. Yeah. I guess that's his point, Mark but I would make that point in reverse. I'd be like, well, the reason it gets mentioned is because it's famous. Like, a lot of... Yeah, fame often <laughs> feeds into itself. Well, yeah. He, he could have said Mona Lisa, same. Well, it's just... It, the reason why it's a lot of people's favorite is because more people get exposed to it than other, you know, uh, sculptures. Well, I mean, that was just pretentious. We can move on. Yeah, yeah well, is built to stand. Uh, exactly. Your favorite thing is this? Wow, you're lame. Wow, uh, I bet you've never even told seen me another statue. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, favorite statue like was Michelangelo's thing. David, then it probably means that they don't really know about any other ones. <laughs> Levitating Mass is built to stand exactly like that for thousands of years. That's longer than David's statue is going to be around. So if that's not that's cool... That's not true. Okay, sure. That's, that's also a stupid argument. Happened? What's this have to do with anything? Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, I guess I was just focused on the accuracy of the statement, but like also, yeah, what the fuck does this have to do with and anything? Also, it's going to last longer? Would, there's no way that he's going to apply the same argument to some piece of modern art that's designed to deteriorate rapidly. Well, the He'd fucking robot that, yeah, that, that is designed play, to run out of yeah. uh, energy, it did, and it's, it's been packed away now. Done. Yeah, exactly. So I don't even know why you brought this up. What a... 
What a dumb thing to say. And I like imagine this... that somebody would, uh, yeah, I imagine the easy retort someone would make is, yeah, so do the pyramids, but I can see how the pyramids took a lot more work than the, the rock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To you, uh, let's see who has more statues in 3,000 years. Whatever their intentions. What does that okay, have to do with like, What does that have to do with anything? The well, amount of statues you have. He could just be memeing. I, I, I don't know if he actually thinks guess, that the integrity yeah. of the right. art itself oh, has any yeah. relevance to how. Sure, but like, why would. I, I, well, that's yeah, the problem I mean, with these true, videos that are terrible. You can't up. tell oftentimes. Yeah, the, the structure of this is shit. But all right, let's keep going. Modernists sowed the seeds of aesthetic relativism. The beauty is in oh, the right. eye of the beholder mentality. Ah, oh, yes, the art expert here. Oh, right, so is he that... saying that the beginning of the end was impressionism? Probably. Okay, all right. Well, but th that's yeah. an interesting <laughs> thought if he considers it the beginning of the end, not the end, you know, as I in like there's merit. would imply that impressionism is still chill, but it sowed the yeah. seeds of the destruction. But I don't know because <laughs> I haven't seen the video. The new modernists sowed the seeds of aesthetic relativism. The beauty is in the eye of the beholder mentality. I ah, yes, the art expert here to tell us that art can be well, I mean, scientifically he is an measured. Art guy, and right? Is Wasn't he? Yeah. He, um, he's, he doesn't seem to be any more any less of a he certainly seems to be more of an art i don't know you're shit well, I, I don't know so. but i remember that when he popped up on screen it said that he was an artist so yeah i'm not sure what his credentials are yeah i don't know um who he is exactly but uh i feel like what he just said isn't something you can disagree with like just hear me out it, it, what it is in this clip can you disagree with what he says are their intentions the new modernists sowed the seeds of aesthetic relativism the beauty is in the eye of the beholder mentality. I well, yeah, like, is he saying something that's wrong, or do you not like the implication? Which yeah, I is think where he's, he's going with it. He's like, he's like responding to the idea that the guy just said, this is bad. But, like, you gotta wait for him to say that. Because mm. for now, he just said that they introduced this idea, which... The interest to me is that I want to know if he thinks that it's okay to introduce the idea, but that it's uh, run amok, you know? And it, it, uh, is that maybe. his perspective? Uh, maybe. maybe. Yeah, yeah, there's something to think about, but like, he's, instead he's uh, bitten his head off straight away. Yes, the art expert here to tell us that art can be scientifically measured and is objective. It just needs to look like real life, and the more... You could do that. That is, is that a scale you can use. Is that that's, what he said? That's not what he said, damn it. That isn't what also, he said, but that is also said. a scale you, you can use, though. That, yeah. You can use that. It is a standard uh, if, that if you, you can check yeah, objectively. If you make it clear that your scale is essentially true to life, then you can well, create some kind of grading system for how true to life something is, I suppose. Yeah, but he's he's just conflated um, being able to objectively qual qualify art um, with how realistic it is. Right? Yeah, he's. I guess he's done that because he's ran away with, again, because Impressionism is like, deviating oh from an attempt to create something what uh, okay um Fring you what do you think about the mona lisa what, what, what do you think what do you think about i think it? i think it's cool i it's not like my favorite painting but i think it's cool and yeah, I, I think it's pretty it. cool well i want you yeah. to think about how you feel about the mona lisa what it makes you think about how skillful you consider it maybe it's legacy and art history it's value to civilization and i want you to I compare mean, it with yeah. this that zigzor just made Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to over exaggerate, I but I feel like this is a strict improvement. <laughs> Friggy, I, I mean, think you I need think, to update you. I, I, think, I think this is pretty cool. I think this might be the profile picture for the stream. Hold on. I'll sort that out in a second. <laughs> that actually... is really cool. Did they work I on like this that. since the beginning of this stream? Um, like they, yeah. He said, what, "Listening to the stream now, art is fun. Here's some art for you, Rags." <laughs> oh, I call it the Fringy Lisa. <laughs> you, made, you made this in a few hours. That's really cool, man. I don't See, know. I, yeah, I. I mean, regardless of how long it took you to make it, this is very cool, and I like it a lot, and it's making me smile, especially Perfection. the goofy grin. It doesn't oh, have teeth. Great. Doesn't need yeah, teeth. that's why I like it. So behind much. the lips, I <laughs> yeah, like it. behind the lips there. I uh, I like it. I like the addition of the little Shrek ears as well. Uh, that's a fun it says touch. it took a took a bit more than an hour to do, which is insane. I, I mean, of course, that aside you could from do. the memeing as well, like the the actual painting is is really like cool, like it's really impressive. The shading on the breasts the is just the wonderful. Shading's nice. Yes. Yeah, the shading Fresh on the, the boobies is yeah. real nice, and on the. The helmet, uh, the, the helmet. I guess, the head. <laughs> well, the helmet is moved into the. I mean, the so mask oh, okay. and helmet, mask right. and helmet and head. 
because it's like uh, it's okay. a new creature it's a new being all right let's uh, uh let's make that the profile pitch uh, that's that's <laughs> really good that's Yoda. Really cool. I think that's, yeah that's, that's really cool that's incredible the friggy lisa <laughs> <laughs> you are uh, bald <laughs> You are yeah, bald. You are that's, balding. That's bald. Like right, real life, uh... it looks the better it is. This guy has the brain of a fish. Today, everybody loves the. Didn't even hey, let him make a point. He just declared fish. like a, a what I see as a, as a relatively undeniable statement, and then you just went and fucking mad at him. Let it. Let him make bad points. Let him. Let it play let the him, clips. Yes. Allow him to make those bad points. Yeah. And the more like real life it looks, the better it is. This guy has the brain of a fish. Today, everybody loves the Impressionists. And as with most revolutions, the first generation or so produced oh, work okay. of genuine... Ah, yeah, there you go. Right, so he does like Impressionism and think it's cool, and he thinks it's run amok afterward. So... Okay. Because I was about to get really mad if he was going to say that Impressionism sucks. That, was, that, was, that would have been super lame. But it sounds like that's not even his point. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, if I can... I just want to hear him again. I has the brain of a fish. Today, everybody loves the Impressionists. And as with most revolutions, the first generation or so produced work of genuine merit. So, I feel like that's not so what, what he told problem? us he said. Yeah. Well, yeah, because, I mean, why would you make the argument that he's saying that there's, like, some objective metric for judging beauty based on realism when he admits that Impressionism, which is not realistic, has a lot of value, and that there's a lot of great pieces of impressionist art. Yeah, genuine merit. That's, that's a yeah. compliment. I, I mean, I, I would be... <laughs> yeah, like, I, I don't even know what to do with that. It's like, if it was like you totally misinterpreted it, like, wow. Monet, Renoir, and Degas... He's even given examples! What? He's even given you examples, yeah. Uh, oh, no main I like that one, uh, the Water Lily Pond. That one's... I like impressionist paintings of water. They always look really, really cool. Very Pained lovely. elements of disciplined design and execution. So much ah, like a sorry, disappointed right, father, sorry. Robert Florczak says that Impressionism is... It's, it's alright, I guess. I, I, that, that's a really... Like that. You a showed lot. us the clip, and that was your summary. Yeah. He was like, it's it started out real strong, right. and then, you know, iteration, is, it's, it's uh, broken apart. And then you say, he says that it's alright, I guess. If you're going well, to lie about him, you could at least cut out the bit where he says, <laughs> "Don't show." Yeah, yeah. Ma don't make it don't hard on yourself by playing the thing right stuff. before you lie. <laughs> Jeez. Holy shit, that's bad. I'll give it a pass because it still looks like the boring paintings I like. What the? the boring what are you talking boring about? Boring paintings you like? Oh, because yeah, a banana taped to the wall is so fucking exciting. Why? <laughs> why? Why do this? Why make like? Why would you say that? Boring. Why what go so fuck? antagonistic? Like, why, do we, why do we even want to begin with trying to unpack that? Ah, yes, the boring paintings. Yeah. Oof. But with each new generation, standards declined until there were I no standards. I don't know this graph is particularly accurate. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck his data is, but of course. They measured, it's standards. We, standards. But this follows but his uh, his point that, that, that's been made in the video that just art standards have fallen over time. That's the big oh, point he's trying to make. Uh, oh, like the the standard. I mean, I I mean, you can. Well, say I'm saying that, that we don't necessarily like, agree with him, but like, we, yeah, you know what this guy gonna, is responding to seems to always be like tangential points he's not even making. Mm -hmm. I I guess uh, because the reason why I find this awkward is it's like the implication. When there's like still so much, I, I guess what you would call more conventional, traditional art being made today. You know what I mean? Like it, it almost seems like people can get too fixed. It's like, ah, oh, modern art, the prevailing form of art that is being made right now. And it's like, um, I mean, there's a lot of just like regular, normal, conventional. Incredible you know, art, art, yeah. Still being um, made. Um, by the way, I don't know what happened in the 1940s, but it all went wrong. <laughs> it all went wrong in the 19... The 19 this was Hitler's well, doing. By the 1960s, it was over. Is that when the... Yeah, it's the 40s to the 60s there. was the, the, the absolute rock. destruction of the And then again... Yeah, yeah that's, that's when they, they put the rock there, and then it... Yeah. Now, now we're going to find out. What, is, what, is, what does Wikipedia say modern art is? Because I'm pretty sure that modern art at this point isn't even modern anymore, like, as a category. Yeah. It's been replaced by new I stuff. Feel like, well, people are talking about postmodern is a lot of... Takes up a lot of like, discussion uh, as well, yeah. Good old Wikipedia says it's stuff that was made from the 1860s to the 1970s. So at this point, modern art drawn to its latest date isn't even that modern anymore. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't feel like that's what people think of when they think of modern art. They think of the toilet in the middle of the 
in the middle of the <laughs> Yeah, which I think a lot more people would describe as postmodern instead of modern. All that was left right. was personal expression. I don't really have anything to say other than this is just a fake. So that's graphic. kind of an interesting, well, I mean, of course it's a fake yeah. graph, but the interesting thing is I think that that's kind of like a big part of the discussion is how, how much in terms of determining whether art is art is based on creative expression versus like how good you are at realizing something. Uh, talent, essentially. Is art expression plus talent or is art just expression? Which I guess his point would be. I wasn't be getting the sense got... that he was talking about whether or not it is art is whether or not it's, it's good. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, that like, the, 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 in terms of determining metrics for good or bad anymore, that doesn't exist. The only thing that, that exists and matters is the fact that it is creative expression. Yeah. Which is kind of like an interesting conversation to have because I really, 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 really don't want to devalue the importance of like actually craft. being really talented. Yeah, the craft, I mean, the craft seems like it's got to be hyper important because the craft is ultimately determining the experience that you, like, what does it mean? What is a film without the craft of filmmaking, right? Like, what does it mean for a... Uh, yeah, well, no, I mean, it does have, like, you know, it's got people standing in the camera that are framed oh, decently, I see what you mean. occasionally. What I, what I mean is that um, it's like the, the, the craft, it's like the expression, it's... There has to be some amount of craft, like, invariably, otherwise it doesn't exist. You know what I mean? Like, what does it mean to express without some amount of craft? Craft is, like, the thing that makes it, like, tangible. It makes it the thing that exists rather than just an idea in your head. And it feels like if that's the case, then there always has to be a conversation about the way that it's realized, like that that can't be removed completely from the conversation. So uh, it's saying that craft is always present, um, but the degree to I which don't it... Know what it... I don't know what it means for there to be a piece of art that doesn't have any craft at all, even if it is like the most basic, most, even, you know, the guy dropping the camera, right? The craft of even holding it in the first place and then dropping it and then it Well, the example, I guess, is the mountain, which is nature did it. Well, yeah, like what is the craft other than, I guess, you looking at it, but even then you looking at it is not like something that you can translate to other people. Like it feels like the art has to exist in some way, shape or form, independent of your, independent of you as the creators, like, you know, subjective experience of reality, I suppose. Do you get what I mean? Like, it has to exist in some way that's legible to somebody else, and that, like, that is the craft. It has to be. And then, at that point, you can start talking about, like, the quality of the craft in terms of, you know, if your objective is to create a very realistic painting, then you can measure how well you succeeded or failed based on, you know... Well, the easiest the one to just go with for helping people understand it would be life drawing. It's just, like... The... Yeah, life drawing is an easy one. The, the objective of life drawing is to create something that is true to life. If you yeah. don't do that, you have failed. Yeah, and if someone said, how accurate to life doesn't determine how good it is, it's like, well, it does in the context um, of creating a life in drawing. In the context of life drawing, yeah. And in the, exactly, in the context of uh, whatever it is that you're going for. Well, and even still, someone could be like, nope, not even then, because humans don't have full perception of the universe or whatever. And it's like, well, it's from um, a human's I mean, perception yeah, with a yeah, human yeah, standard. Yeah, we can, we can get past that, yeah. Well, and that's the thing. It, it, it almost comes back to the subjective yeah. objective stuff. It's just like, why why blow it up to borders that we have no uh, ability to actually breach yet? Well, it's just not very helpful, is it? No. I, I want to have a conversation about it. And like, I'm a human. I can't divorce myself. I'm from a human, human. You're a human. We have reality. human tools and we're analyzing a human yeah. perception. So it's all human. And then, of course, you know, how much stock we want to put in the fact that there are sort of generalities in terms of the things that people consider to be beautiful and the things that people consider to be ugly, you know? I mean, that exists. That definitely exists in terms of broad trends of what people like and dislike. Um, yeah. Means nothing. Oh, God forbid art be reflective of an artist's personality and life experience. Yeah, well, that's well, not, that, that's not at all what he said. He, he's yeah. saying the sole how, focus I, I is on even, expression. How could how could he even say that this guy believes that? I mean, landscape painting in some way, even if you're trying to make it realistic, would have to reflect the artist's, like, interest and passion for, like, nature itself. It was, it was very like, easy how, to understand. He basically said, believe? like, there was a high standard for craft while expressing yourself, and it's moved into simply expressing yourself. And then this guy is like, oh, God forbid an artist expresses themselves. And it's like, that's just, you're just not addressing him. Like at all. Yeah, you're really not engaging with his video that you chose we to really engage with. I believe that he doesn't, like, I, it feels like we're taking the piss, right? You have to accept that the guy who made this video believes that, like, the purpose of art 
to some extent is personal creative expression. No, he's an evil what does conservative it even mean who just wants to. What does it even mean to have the think. passion or the idea to create something if you don't remember? Have, you know, so they're creatively bankrupt. Ah, yes, of course. Yep. It's creatively emotion, and I would else. hate that. This sort of gives the game away for Robert. What he's telling us is that you've given the game away multiple times. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Was it but 30 yourself, seconds in? Yeah, he, he gave it all away after like a minute. Is basically oh another way to look at pretty pictures of people in mountains, which is great. Look at that, what a way to summarize that shit, oh, man. Dang yeah. it. Fuck That's... off. People in mountains, like, oh yeah, cool. <laughs> What a productive oh, perspective on like landscape painting. Oh yeah, people in the Oh yeah, so this is what I mean. The, he called the boulder a rock. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. He called the boulder a rock, but you called them these beautiful landscapes. It's like, oh yeah, just you know, people in mountain. What the fuck, man? Yeah, I'm and, and still you know, waiting for him to take this. Why do why I don't understand why you can't defend modern art without like fucking tearing down, you know, the Well and, and attacking points the guy didn't even make. Like come on, yeah, yeah, exactly. do better. Yeah. Get all the Dude, pretty Madison people and mountains you want. But to imply that modern art is inferior because it doesn't meet the extremely restrictive guidelines that Robert specifically and arbitrarily has? Um, he, he didn't necessarily give us what the standards were exactly. Um, well, he, he was, least to be dead, I haven't seen them. Yeah, we haven't been shown yeah, that yet. Uh, he I was think appealing, I'm missing that part of the video. He was appealing to, like, the... We, we've moved from having... For aspiring to any standard at all, and just we just go nuts. Yeah. That seems to be his it point seems of view. Like his argument, his argument is that we, yeah, we have devalued the craft to the point that it's it's like irrelevant to the conversation about art. I mean, Which, that's... I mean that's not like a crazy perspective. To no, have. it's normal. I think a very normal thing. Pretentious. So because this PragerU video Wait, is sorry, formatted sorry, pretentious? Like, Can we rewind? What did he say there? The extremely restrictive guidelines that Robert specifically and arbitrarily has? I mean, that's pretentious. It so was, because, you just said that, oh yeah, p p look at p the pretty paintings of the pretty people in the mountains. Like, come on. Yeah, if, come on, man. You, you, this video is hyper pretentious. You said, like, people who like Michelangelo's David, they haven't even seen statues. I, I, I really, I, I kind of dislike that there's almost this implication that you couldn't earnestly enjoy landscape paintings. You know what I mean? It's almost like the implication as well, it, you know, you're pretty boring, you don't have very interesting tastes in art, or like, yeah, you fell victim to the propaganda. It couldn't be that you just genuinely like landscape paintings. Well, again, is he not becoming the caricature he wrote for the other side? Um, you're standing there <laughs> looking bit. at this thing, this banana, and you're like, eh. And then he's like, you've been tricked. You've been tricked. I'm telling you that you need to I'm understand you you've been tricked. tricked. It's like, feels like you're trying to trick me, man. Like, is this what I actually <laughs> believe? Yeah. I, uh, I also find it quite funny. I don't know if you guys know the South Park episode where Stan is uh, being pretentious for some reason. I can't remember exactly. Oh, and he keeps doing this little laugh after he says he's explaining something, and he just kind of goes, oh. every time he says something and he's talking down to Kyle. This guy just did that after he said the word pretentious. Uh, he gave a little sarcastic laugh. Mm. I can't remember that one, but I remember that it was when uh when it was with the hybrid cars where it was that, you know, uh they were becoming so smug they were always <laughs> talking with their eyes closed. It's like, well, you know, I just care so much about the earth, you know? <laughs> Good for <laughs> you. Thanks. This Prager U video is formatted like a middle school persuasive essay. This I wouldn't know because you chopped I, it to I hell mean, and back. Uh, I mean so like, You're not doing much better now. Oh, sorry, really fair. Your, your structure is is really bad. <laughs> I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but like the structure of this video is really fucking jarring. This is the counter argument paragraph. Uh, in this segment, Robert says that art can be objectively measured uh, by looking at it. The great art historian Jacob Rosenberg okay. wrote that Wait, quality anyway. in art is not merely a matter of personal opinion, but to a high degree objectively traceable. Well, what, what was he referring to when he said that? Yeah, also, I mean, it, I, that quote on its own. I mean, maybe he's saying outright the quote cannot be true. But the problem is, like, again, li life drawing is the easy one to go to. You you draw the arm of a person, and then your fucking teacher is like, you you haven't got the shading right. The anatomy is just off, but there, like, it, there's a dip there. You haven't done stuff like that. And it's like you can call that objectively traceable. I guess the interesting thing is the fact that the quote even says to a high degree concedes that it's not totality. It's yeah. not to a total degree. It isn't absolutely everything. It isn't the be-all and end-all. A Draxon. 
Yes, you could have objectively traced how accurate that Draxom is to Drax. Okay. That's true. You could have. <laughs> Uh, oh god, that Draxom. My god. Beautiful. I mean, that's an interesting one, right? When it comes to like a lot of the time, the objective of visual effects is to achieve photorealism. Oh, the by the way, to make uh, yeah. someone has highlighted this, and it is worth pointing out. There's uh, the dot dot dot. Anything could be between that and objectively anything. Uh, Who knows? But and, that's, yes. But uh, you well, you could argue it's on the behalf of the video right? from yeah. Preggy You, but uh, surely, surely it's on the responsibility of the response video to find out what the actual quote is about. Yeah, because now I'm curious what the what the uh, the quote is in full. But the idea of a universal standard of quality in art is now usually met with strong resistance, if not open ridicule. How can art be objectively measured, I'm challenged. In responding, I simply point to the artistic results produced by universal standards compared to what is produced by relativism. His universal first example- standards. Yeah, that's universal still pretty vague. Versus... I'm not yeah. sure I like that argument. And I, well, to be I, fair, uh, if you create uh, something, uh, two things exist and the whole world loves one while half the world loves the other, which one's better? It's like clearly the first one. It's like, I don't know about that. Just yeah. we use that metric because by that metric, Transformers is better than Shawshank. Yeah, which I don't. Yeah, uh, I think I think it's a shitty standard. Um, but yeah. So, yeah, um, I would disagree with this. Apple is Birth of Venus. What? what? Okay, what right, just sorry, happened? Right, We're going right. back. Hang on. What? I simply point What's to the artistic results produced by universal yeah, standards that. compared to what is produced by relativism. His first example is. Birth of Venus? Which, Why'd you sound like One of the most famous know. paintings of all time? Um, also, Which why... I thought you didn't give examples, sir. You... <laughs> <laughs> he only gives silly examples. <laughs> God, it's so annoying. Also, uh, I guess if we let it play, yeah, he's about to give his reasoning for why the Birth of Venus is uh, not good, apparently. Oh, right, so... Is... Jeez. When the, when, the, uh, when the guy in the Prague U video says universal standards, because it sounds like the... Is the, the argument he's making is what are the results that you get from universal standards for like art versus relativism? Does he mean by universal standards basically you get better results when I don't know, we form some kind of consensus on what we consider to be good or bad? But those are but those just happen like naturally. Those are just sort of like emergent things that occur. I imagine in that's civilization. what he would appeal to, right? He would appeal to those emergent <laughs> Uh, no, okay, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm unclear <laughs> on exactly what Prague Man thinks, but yeah. I want to know what he thinks about Birth of Venus. The Venus? Which, I don't, I don't sure. know about that one. I don't get it. Waves don't even look like that. What is this supposed well, sure, but to like, be? The Birth I of mean, Venus is a master. But who are you don't arguing with? And it is a huge painting. But it is not the piece that Robert wants to bring out when we're talking about artistic objectivity. Compositionally, uh, a little crowded. Very flat. Again, the anatomy is stiff. Wait, wait. <laughs> Compositionally, <laughs> oh my goodness. There's four I mean, people. I guess I can respect the confidence with which to do this, but like, yeah, okay. it's, it's, uh, it, takes, this is, it takes it takes a certain amount of a confidence bravery, to just flippantly yeah. crowded <laughs> and flat. Venus, that's not how waves work. It's crowded and flat. <laughs> it's like, okay, my dude. Um, all right, if you say I so. Free. I respect the confidence. Yeah. It's ball, it takes some balls. We'll have to again see where he goes with it. But again, he's equating. Um, objective quality with realism yeah this well, is the problem i, I don't know what greg you man thinks exactly uh so it's well, hard to parody fact, him when i don't know what he thinks that's the problem though the fact that prague you man likes um likes impressionism to some extent means that it, his metric can't just be realism it can't just be that yeah like, it, like impressionism isn't realistic it isn't realistic so like it has to be something different yeah Get me wrong, and it is a huge painting, but it is not the piece that Robert wants to bring out when we're talking about artistic objectivity. Compositionally, a little crowded, very first, flat. First, I mean, that's kind of interesting that he would even say, like, what do you mean, what is it, are you saying that it is, like, objectively, what does that mean? What if it's supposed to be crowded? Is bad. You know I'm very, what I, mean? like, I, I don't know what it's, yeah. Like, a big mistake? Like, why would you say that? And dull, just like the colors, which is a product of its time, but dull, it just like the colors. Damn, dude. All what right. do, What does it mean for the colors to be objectively dull? What does that mean, my man? <laughs> like, what does that mean? That uh, that's that's kind of like saying, like, I'm not a fan of the Beatles, really. I just don't 
none of their music does anything for me but that's kind of like saying that x beatles song is bad because the audio quality because of the the gear that they had to work with back then is not and up that, to today's standards that therefore that raise an interesting question though already about like how how do you how do how do we value it based on the tools that people had at the time? And also, a lot of that stuff just has aged since then. Things I mean, typically has, will not get right. brighter yeah. since then. But yeah, if right. you if you look at uh, channels that do like recreation or re sorry recreations or um, restorations of art, they're they're actually very vibrant and bright. Oftentimes, uh, oh, we well, just see them um, after many hundreds of years, so they seem that way. That's the meme with uh, old, you know, Greek and Roman uh, uh, statues is often perceiving them as, you know, that they were always made white when it's like a lot of them were, were had color. It's just that the color is worn away. And yeah. then it, like I changes mean, the ancient Egypt and yeah. Yeah. Well, Rome was col colorful, you know. Like, Absolutely. People Greek liked color. color. Yeah. Medieval they peasants, all, they wore they like colors. But isn't that an interesting thing in terms of like art evolution, right? Because like obviously there's a lot of Greek influence in like American, you know, like national architecture, right? Like the, you know, the White House, the Capitol building and all those things. And that like a lot of it is derived from sort of like what it was perceived as being uh, when it wasn't quite that way in terms of, you know, color or lack thereof. That's kind of interesting to me. It color seems was... kind of... Uh, color... Sorry, go on, Molly. Color was invented after World War One, right? Uh, that's, yeah, that's true, actually. I, yeah, yeah. That's, Just with, yeah. With, with a bit of history there, yeah. Um, this seems mean... to me kind of like oh, he's, it, it seems kind of like if you were to criticize the Statue of Liberty for being too green. Because it, it's, it's it wasn't really green. Because, um, I just saw someone in chat say, is he saying it's, like, dull because it's not as vivid? Uh, the problem is that, again, are we saying that vivid is better? Like, what is the implication? Is the implication that it's worse, but, like, dull? That's a that's a very uh, loose word, you know. It's uh and and like the idea that you can attach quality to whether it is like you know more vivid, more saturated versus more washed out or more dull. It's like all right, let's uh let's let's pump the brakes here, you know. To say that the painting is dull and that that would be like a bad example to bring up because that's not very objectively good is is like bizarre. That's a fucking weird thing to say the way it is but i unlike robert can find value and appreciate art that i think is really boring <laughs> I, 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 okay you can find value in fucking anything that doesn't like yeah. that doesn't change anything necessarily that doesn't it's it's like he's saying um if robert looked at you know that painting and then came away being like wow the craft that went into that and then looked at someone else like his kids painting that he just splattered something like his hand when he was six months old onto a page and and he's like wow robert you must think that that's worthless because it it took so little and I, I this is what i mean it's like you need to treat these people well, as human beings you can't just look at them as cartoons yeah. do you really think robert I mean, would never say that there could be value to a piece of artwork beyond its craft the easy meme is oh look uh, hey dad i you know i drew i drew this picture and then you know the, the parent like looks and it's like oh well i love this right because of the sentimental value because it was their child that made it that's my you whole know, point with like the paint hand yeah. on a piece of paper especially a six-month-year-old oh, who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing yeah, you're like yeah. look they've been a handprint someone would be like i can make a handprint why the fuck do you care it's like oh, my fucking baby exactly <laughs> yeah like obvious and the idea that this guy would be like Whatever, the composition, look at this, it's awful. <laughs> Objectively it's speaking, crowded. the hand print is too crowded and dull. <laughs> Try again. He yeah. colored outside the lines. What the finger-to-space ratio is just out of whack. Mm -hmm. Unacceptable. <laughs> it sucks. Odilon Redon painted his own version of The Birth of Venus in 1912. And while it's hard to compare because they're two completely different works, I mean, okay. this is so much better. It's got... What? That sucks, mate. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I... I'm gonna say I it, sucks. it sucks. I just don't like I it as much. I don't think it's as good as the other one. No, <laughs> it's 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 uh, um. You know what? Good job. <laughs> good on you, man. Let me lovely. guess. The reason why this is better is because of the paragraph that came with it. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> because he taped it to a wall, so it's better. Yeah. Better. It's got style and flavor. And oh, shut up! As if the other one doesn't have like style or flavor. No, dude, what is I, flavor? Dude, I hate these cut. Yeah, exactly. Style and flavor. What does any of what do any of those words mean? What do they really mean? So, like uh, the the idea that this is good art discussion pisses me off. <laughs> this is like, oh yeah, no, it's got more style and flavor. That uh, my job is done.
You know, my work is done it's here. This is art and flavor. Yeah. So earlier no, when he was just, criticizing, it's also, it sucks. That's all it is. When he was um, criticizing the, uh, the the previous version, he was saying that it was too dull. Um, you can measure how dull something is. Like that's an objective standard. Whether it's good or bad is a different question, but you can measure it. You can't measure. What did he say just now? Style and what was the other word? Uh, flavor. St yeah. So those are not objectively quantifiable. Well, yeah, I don't so know. What the fuck. This is why I need to know what he means because flavor on its own is like. I'm assuming you're not tasting the painting. So do you want to tell me <laughs> what you mean by flavor? It's savory. Which, totally, I'm fine, by the way, with describing that something has a unique flavor when talking about something you're not eating. I just need, like, that's on its own is so vague. I, I don't know what you mean. An emotion. It's a great piece. Oh, an emotion, by the way. There's more Ooh, emotion, kind of emotion, flavor, and style. Jeez. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the original is, didn't. The original like, shot. Yeah. Really good art discussion is super lame. And yeah, by the way, not, not claiming that we are revolutionary, rusha fying art discussion either, but like, come on. You could try a little harder. Yeah. But unfortunately, like Robert says, without aesthetic standards, we have no way to determine quality or inferiority. Which is the same as saying, I'm a little baby, and I need people to tell me if art is good or not. <laughs> um, um, okay. Robert says, says quote again. without aesthetic Without aesthetic standards, we have no way to determine quality or inferiority. Uh, in regards to something that is strictly aesthetic, if you have no way to uh, analyze well, it, then no yeah, I guess you have no way to determine a quality. That that just follows. That's like a robotic statement almost. Yeah, it would be entirely would be subjective. Not, not even that. Um, you, to have the standards yeah, if without... if it's a painting and I have no aesthetic standard, not even the standard of does how does it make me feel? If if I've got no quality? standard of, of aesthetic for a painting, then I've got nothing. Okay. How can there be quality without a standard? Essentially. Yeah, because so, if someone so said like I don't have standards, it's just how I feel. It's like well, that is a standard. That is a standard. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, uh, once again, I feel like if we were responding to the PragerU video, we would be like. Without extending standards, we have no way to determine which, which is like, I, I guess so. Until you add more to that, I don't have, this isn't, this is almost like self-fulfilling. Without a standard, we have no standard. Like, sure, I guess. Um, do you want to go further than that? But his response to it is... Standards, we have no way to determine quality or inferiority. Which is the same as saying, I'm a little baby, and I need people to tell me if art is but good or not. you're just making shit up at that point. If you don't have any standards, you're literally just, like, you're just making it up on the spot based off of how it makes I, you feel in I think he's just moment. wrong. I think he just misinterpreted what the guy was saying. Like, I think so. Um, also, it sounds like he's saying that, you know, the guy's saying, I need the standards to determine what's good or bad. When the guy's like, actually saying, if we have no way of determining what's good and bad, then we can't determine what's good and bad. Which is just, I mean, it's... It's self-fulfilling. It's a boring statement, if anything. <laughs> yeah. Inferiority is an interesting choice of words as well, because that implies that the only purpose of aesthetic standards would be to gatekeep art. I mean, technically, um, yes. What, yeah, what, what sense, is the point yeah, of a standard want... if not to gatekeep uh, quality levels? Yeah, I don't want every that. fucking piece of shit art in galleries. Like, I want to celebrate things that are, you know, considered good and have a lot of you know, meaning and effort and work and have a certain quality level to them. I just, I don't want, like, your fucking asshole kid's finger painting. I just, no, that doesn't belong in a gallery. No. Yeah, he's using he's loaded language again. Uh, so well, he... I, I think he's picking on him for saying inferiority as if um, his goal is to try and, like, point out, like, you suck and you suck. But the thing is, he said determine quality or inferiority. The point being... You can't have one without the other. That's how it works. The standard, right. you need bads to have goods and vice versa. I meant his his uh, use of the word gatekeep because it seems like that word is, I mean, it's a loaded word. It's like everyone knows that gatekeeping is bad, but okay, is it well, in this context? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm pretty pro gatekeeping. I'm for a lot of neutral stuff. on gatekeeping. Uh -oh. It depends on the context. Uh, depends on the thing. I mean, a lot of I stuff, yeah, gatekeep, gatekeep the hell out of it. Or some things, like, yeah. you know, building airplanes. Yeah, no, I definitely want to yeah. gatekeep to people who perform brain surgery. <laughs> it's like, yes, yeah. I do. And it, and it speaks to something that you said, Rags. Like, at, at the end of the day, there is, like, a finite amount of space in an art gallery. There are choices that need to be made about what's going to be displayed and what isn't. And, like, what standard sure, yeah. are you going to use to decide that? Yeah, what, if what anything is, makes it into a gallery, no one's going to go. People are going to stop going to galleries if it's just random shit in there. Um... I mean, part of the cynical perspective is that that's not true, is that people don't even know what the difference between no, good and bad people, is anymore. 
Well, yeah, that's the meme, right? Of of like somebody just makes some bullshit, and then the guys are like, ah, man. I mean, it was like the fire extinguisher. That, that wasn't a piece, oh, but people thought it was because it was the uh the, the the South Park episode, the tale of Scrody McBooger Balls, where it was just like riding the most. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the 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 point Stan, Kyle, Carmen, and Kenny, they just wanted to write the most offensive book possible, and then everybody was reading in a bunch of stuff that wasn't there, and then Butters wrote a book that was called The Poop That Took a Pee, and they did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it was just like, just a bunch of nonsense. That's crazy. I want to buy that book. Just well, the poop that took a pee. Yeah, wouldn't you? I mean, an original I mean, butter's I mean, work. I mean, that's that's the thing is that I mean they all thought it was profound, and I mean of course oh, it was oh, the theme so. with the tale of Scrooge McBooger Balls was that nobody could read it without vomiting profusely. <laughs> <laughs> like, they just couldn't get through it. <laughs> Like you just have Randy Riddick. He's like, oh man, oh that. <laughs> As well, because that implies that the only purpose of aesthetic standards would be to gatekeep art. If it's not good enough for Robert, it's not good enough for the galleries. Here's a test I give my graduate students, all talented and well educated. Oh my God! So he's actually he's like he's an educator. <laughs> yeah, but this random is gonna fucking. <sighs> Dress him down no. hardcore. I mean, oh, I feel like if I had to day, choose oh, between yeah. which one of these two I want teaching people about art, it, it's the it's the old guy. I mean, well, the thing he, is, he's got some things of value. Before, didn't the guy say before, like that he didn't he like downplay substantially like his credentials? Yeah, like who's this guy? This art guy? Teach your thing. Good enough for Robert. It's not good enough for the galleries. Here's a test I give my graduate students, all talented and well educated. Please analyze this Jackson Pollock painting and explain why it is good. Explain why this Pollock painting is good? If I was an art student in grad school and Robert Florksack brought out this fucking shit stained toilet paper or whatever this is and told me to tell him why it's good, dude, just ask for a college refund at that point. No, a like college? engage it's a with thought a question, experiment, actually. you fuck. Yeah. How about you do yeah. like a thing Wait. that you do in YouTube videos and engage with content and actually offer some sort of insightful perspective that isn't the point bullshit. is obviously to make you think about like what what exactly are we appealing to when we say good? What is what even is good? That's obviously the point of this. Yeah, like I thought we learned from Wisecrack that uh, hypothetical thought experiments. Oh, are good. <laughs> oh <laughs> that's no. true. Yeah. Uh, Why yeah, even bother? Yeah, What's yeah. the point? I'll be right they back. It is only after they give very eloquent answers that I inform them that the painting is actually a close-up. Oh, that's the thing that he says apron. without substantiating. I, there is oh, totally yeah, value to this. To what get a people. That is. <laughs> this is the thing. If you'd gone to those people in that gallery that I was talking about and said that's just a fire extinguisher, I'd love to know what they have to say once they know that. Oh, that's a great meme. I like that. <laughs> Yeah, well, and by the way, he that that's why this guy already knew that this wasn't a Jackson Pollock painting, because that's why he called it a shit stain or whatever. But it's just like, you understand yeah. a lot of people look at Pollock's work and think that it looks like a shit stain, that's right? <laughs> when, when he said that, I was like, wait, why is he saying it's a shit stain? He can't shit on Jackson Pollock, right? Like, he's, he's not allowed to, to make this argument. <laughs> I don't blame them. I would probably have done the same, since it's nearly impossible to differentiate between the two. No, yeah, it, it is possible to differentiate between the two. You just have to... I'd say I disagree with him. Like, I think when you know Pollock's work, that you can tell that that wasn't Pollock's work. But I get Boy. the point he's making. Use, it's still use a good name. Robert Florczak wants to flatter himself in saying that he accidentally creates Pollock pieces all the time. Oh no, just a little Pollock on my apron. But if if you know even a... That's kind of funny. Right. <laughs> if his, didn't he say that he was doing this to his students? Yes. It's, right. It's a which, test. It's a meme. Right, yeah, which means that the fact that his students aren't aware that it's not a Pollock painting means that it th this guy's wrong. That is interesting, actually, to point out, yeah, that, that there is, if there is a style to Jackson Pollock in a way that he does it, it is interesting that if the students don't ascertain that, that they just sort of buy into, I'm pretty sure Gordon Ramsay's done stuff like this before as well in terms of, like, food to test people. It oh, makes sense. yeah, I remember. It was, on, it was on Hell's Kitchen. I think he, um, he prepared, uh, he prepared something that looked really elegant, but all of the items were, like, bought from a grocery store. They were, like, really cheap uh, basic, um, things, and he just sort of watched them as they talked it up, 
And then he's just like, yeah, that's just like cheese out of a, like a can. <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just to see if they're like even taking him seriously or if they're just bullshitting him, which is a really good test. Yeah. Um... Remember... By the way, the, yeah. this whole thing, he needs to, like, completely reset and tear up, like, all the thinking. It's its super interesting to not only draw a lot out of a Pollock painting, but to also draw a lot out of a fucking splat of paint on an apron. Exactly. It's super interesting that you could present... Because that's an interesting one, because doesn't that speak to the nature of art, right? That the way that you framed it, the fact that you have framed it in this way and presented it in this way changed the sort of attitude and the mindset yeah. that the students were bringing into that analysis. That's fucking fascinating. Also, like, you know. this guy will have been told at some point that, like, I don't know Pollock at all, but, like, I'm going to assume yeah, that that painting that's behind him is Pollock. So this guy will have been told at some point that that painting is Pollock and that, therefore, it's good. Yeah, you, ha like, he called the shit stain, like, he hates it because there's no intention or context that makes it meaningful to him. Yeah, when otherwise he may not actually know. So if it turned out that that was not actually Pollock and that that was just... It, it was someone else's, so, like, the painting um, apron or whatever. If anyone's seen Better Call Saul, there's a particular... I think the episode's called Chicanery. Um, but that would be the ultimate double-double twist of... You show them that it's the apron. This guy is in the room, and he says, I fucking knew it. I knew it. I knew it wasn't Pollock. It's such a shit stain. And then the teacher's like, it is Pollock. And he's like, what? And like, it actually is. It's one of his. Just to see how he deals with that, because it really is so dependent at that point on what you know about it surrounding it, and it really has nothing to do with the actual thing itself. And that's yeah, got to make you think. It, it, it's interesting because it has to make you wonder how sincere you're being in terms of your observations. How much of it is you feel compelled to say certain things because you know who it is and they have like some amount of pedigree or renown that you can't just be honest and be like, yeah, I actually didn't like it. Like the Gordon Ramsay one, right? It's like, oh yeah, like three Michelin star chef. I think he had more at the time. And he's made this food. I mean, it's got to be good. I should keep the thoughts to myself that it isn't so good. You know? A little bit about Pollock, then you would know that this looks nothing like it. I'll talk By the way, you're, you're allowed to not know about Pollock, be told this is Pollock, and then ask your thoughts and feelings on why you believe it's a good painting. Exactly. By That's the way, okay. that this guy, if we made, if we did the whole movie Bobber Hitler quote version of this, where it's Jackson Pollock and just other stuff, and we lined up a whole bunch and said, all right, which ones are Pollocks and which ones are the imposters? You wouldn't be able to. Nobody would. Right. I don't, I'm sorry. No nobody would. would. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you say you can, unless your name is, I don't think Jackson Pollock, if we got him, would be like, <laughs> oh, I've done so many. I just can't remember. I'd be willing to guess that. I, honestly, I'll be like super charitable and I'll guess that maybe this guy who's making this video, I'll assume that maybe he would be able to tell the difference. Um, no way. There's no fucking way. I don't buy it, especially if we like no way. Um, took. You know what? You know what we, I, I'd be curious to try and gaslight him. So the ones that he says are his and are his, we say that's not one of his. And then just to see him look at him and be like, <laughs> fuck, really? Okay, so I'll argue it. it. And then you're like, no, it was. And he's like, fuck, is it? <laughs> just to, yeah. <laughs> talk more about Pollock later, though. And who will determine you quality is another challenge I'm given. If we Ooh. are to be intellectually mm. honest, we all know of situations where professional expertise is acknowledged and depended upon. I just want to point out, this man has interesting hair. Is it that know. interesting? It seems like it kind of is. Like, no, like how like, it's, it's like fluffy and curly, sort of, right? And it, it is voluminous, but only in a very, like, the back half. He has, he has Damn, the hair in the I back wish half had, of his head. I wish he hadn't because before I wasn't noticing, but now that you've drawn attention to his hair, yeah, now I've noticed that his hairline's pretty far back on his head. Yeah, it's Let's it's like that, someone, right? it's like sort of like normalish kind of hair, but you've just like rotated it about 90 degrees back, and now that's where it is. Like it slipped and it's fallen behind him, and he needs to pull it back up to the top, you know? I know exactly I what you mean. I wasn't paying attention yeah. before, but now that you pointed so it out, I can't. He has, a, he has a full head of hair, but it's on the back of his head. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he does have a full head of hair, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, he is molding because he's molding. angry that he's wrong about art. <laughs> he's angry about the impressionists or something. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm dude, pretty the, sure. Mid Canyon's XQC. That was really funny. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, if anyone doesn't know, um, XQC's got his own Meat Canyon video now, and it's amazing, and you should yeah, see it. I did, it me, XQC is like a goblin man sitting in his <laughs> chair, rolling around and sucking people's eyes out of their sockets and putting them in a little vase.
it uh, it is the viewers. Not like you really need them chat, but you know. I watched uh, another thing that's worth saying is meet uh, Papa Meat watching XQC watch yeah. that animation. And, and you know what? He just I find to say. I love how wholesome um, uh, Papa Meat is. He 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 seems to have the most fun when XQC is laughing. Mm -hmm. Like he's the happiest and, uh, at that point. Did you mention that XQC's reaction to that video was only like, what was it, ten seconds longer than the Why actual even video? Say yeah, that? He, what, he didn't you have know. anything to say about it. Like, what the the fact that he could have paused on the first frame and just talked about how yep. he was drawn, you know, as like this disheveled, you know, skinny, lanky. The fact that he like crawls Spider around and. He crawls around in his, attached chamber to his chair, like, yeah. Yeah, his chair attached. And just the fact that he keeps saying chat over and over. Mm -hmm. There's no yeah. way to run chat. There's no <laughs> way to run. So don't even bother chat. <laughs> I would say, no, I would take your eyes. I would take your eyes. I would take them away. Chat. <laughs> it's so good. ...where professional expertise is acknowledged and depended upon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Robert Florczak wants to to be the guy who determines quality. I think, uh, t this is the thing. Uh, the, the question he was trying to answer is really fucking difficult. Where does quality come from? It's like, um, the best we've got is that people create disciplines and then become, like, create standards and then achieve highly in those standards and then they become relied upon for, uh, what the quality is and isn't. Ramsey would probably be just the cooking version of that, right? It's all kinds. Uh, well... I, the, the, yeah, there would, and and it, and even even in those disciplines, like Gordon Ramsay or Marco Pierre White or any of those guys would still say, like, you have a palate and you can trust your palate and lean into that palate. Like, I don't know that you would ever find a place where there would be like an absolutely ironclad, completely and utterly rigid like quality system, even in, you know, e even in disciplines where there would be accepted, you know, experts and generally accepted ways of doing things yeah that's the so knowledge you will find stuff like if the food is rotten you've lost that's it there's no oh yeah sure sure like if it's undercooked yeah. it's undercooked right if you can't eat it then you know like if you, how if you made it? a delicious dish that was like it tasted phenomenal and it was unique and just inspired but it was totally like exotic in terms of its presentation and its um ingredients i don't know how much like pushback you're really going to get if the ultimately is it is delicious yeah, exactly. Because it, it's, I mean, cooking is art, obviously. Espe you know, especially if we're talking about like, uh, yeah. Do, do people disagree with that one too? Cooking is know, art. Prob probably. There'll be someone in chat who says you're wrong. Yeah. yeah someone, someone in chat will, will cooking be the brave is one to say art. that you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, if you're feeling particularly cooking brave is absolutely and bold, art, yeah. But the, the point would be that even like, I don't know that you would find many people in like in in these sorts of disciplines who would say that there is like an ironclad sort of rule for like good or bad that there is no amount of deviation or or whatever from those systems. But it almost seems like the video guys like ran off with a kind of crazy conclusion of like, oh Again? yeah, this guy wants to be the sole determiner. Yeah, I know, right? It's crazy. This time, the sole determiner of art. I imagine that this guy would absolutely not say it. The fact that he even conceded, well, not even conceded, that's a bad way of framing it. The fact that he would say that impressionists who deviated from the traditional, um, like, sort of artistic disciplines of the time created something of value obviously speaks to a flexibility in his mindset on quality. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like, how, how uncharitable do we need to be? Depended upon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Robert Florczak wants to to be the guy who determines quality. <laughs> or maybe his son, Philly Florczak. But I mean, you Take determined the quality, the... You, you know, you said that you thought that the repainting was better than the original. Yep. But uh, yeah. what, what, So, thank you, hopefully it isn't you. There was more flavor, more style, and emotion. Flavor. Yeah, that's right. Would, would he say that that's his opinion, though? Or I'm was... sure, I mean, probably, but, but I mean, what... Like, I, I guess I find it interesting, the, the brazenness with which he said it was better. Because it, it almost implies that it's beyond that. Like, what does it mean to say it is more, it has more emotion and flavor that is, like, not quantifiable in any way, shape, or form? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, like, when you say these words, subjective. I need you to link that to something that we can share. When you say it's got more flavor, you're gonna have to tell me what you mean. Like, point to a... Point to a part of the image and say, like, this part is more flavorful more than flavor. others. Exactly. Yeah. What does it mean to say that it has more flavor if it can't be derived from the work and properties which are just present, you know, that, that well, are and I would also uh, posit that if he's going to argue it has more flavor, more style, more emotion, how does he not conclude that it is just better? 
Exactly. I mean, whatever the standard is. Even if, even if it was this, a standard that was only held by him, he would have to say that it is better within his own framework. Yeah, it sounds like there standards. are things he can point to that prove what he said is true. And then at that point, you know, there's all these steps yeah. that just not getting addressed at all. The Olympics, where artistic excellence is judged by experts in the field. Surely we would flinch at the contestant who indiscriminately threw himself across the ice and demanded that his routine be accepted as being as worthy of value <laughs> as that of the most disciplined skater. Figure skating is a complete non sequitur. And no, no, it isn't. It's what? No, it is it's not. not. An, we're talking about standards so, and again, quality. Figure skating is art, by the way, just in case. Absolutely. You didn't know that. It is. And it's objectively measurable. Yeah, because there's standards that were created a long time ago that we've now adhered yep. to and become masters of, and the standards are very clear. Much like um, well, the things they do in the, what's it called when diving, like from the swim pools and stuff? They're like, whoa. Uh, I mean, oh, yeah. Well, I guess that brings up the interesting one in terms of, you know, you would point to sports within their framework have rules for, like, and conditions for winning and losing. Mm -hmm. Like in chess, if you get checkmate, you can't say, well, no, I mean, I disagree with the chess yeah, standards. I, I, yeah, I that's just, just Exactly. Yeah, it's just your opinion. Yeah, if you, if you come second, on check, right? yeah, th if you that's actually perfect. The race. Um, yeah. Just to be real quick with the chess one, if someone said like uh, they lose ten times in a row, and you go, "Man, you are objectively a shittier player than that player," and he'd be like, "No, I'm not. That's your opinion. You you have no way to say those standards are objective." It's like with the standard of chess. That's then not the framework of chess. You have lost more than you have won. You are worse than him. You yeah, are, it's all worse. it's it's ironclad. You can't get out of it. <laughs> it's done. And so at that point, if we if there are some gen if there's some agreed upon rules for figure skating, then of course you can measure it in some way that is approaching, you know, impartial or if you want to use the scary word. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't, I'll be honest, I don't really know anything about figure skating, but like, I, I do know that they, the, when they hold up those numbers, it's not, oh, I felt like this was a nine out of 10. It's no, did they, what moves did they do? How well did yeah. they do them? And all of that is going to be falling on objective standards. They can't look at a technical error and go, well, I thought that was pretty amusing. So you get more points. Like if you fall yeah, over. But I like yeah. the, I like their guts. So, you know, we're going <laughs> to, they got gumption. Pretty gut. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty gutsy move. So. To get up and go. I mean, a, a lot star. of this just, a lot of this relates to just sheer utility in order to have these competitions generally in order to have the Olympics in order yeah, to have I mean, a lot of this stuff. There has to be some kind of standard that we're shooting for. And it's kind of the, the thing with like art competitions, I mean, right? Where all competition, there are games. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You gotta well, have rules, and, you know, which are standards. What, what does it mean to say that a game is game of the year or that a film is best picture? What exactly are we appealing to? Because there's got to be something. All different contexts there. and standards, all with different levels of respectability and uh, consistency as well. There's, there's yeah, all things to be exactly. Yeah, like there are standards for what is best picture. The question that I would ask is, Should are they those standards those? bullshit? Yeah. And do they Should follow, they, yeah, do they yeah, adhere to the standards that they set out? Because like if, what, if half of, sorry, I think it, I think it was in the case of 12, not 12, 12 Angry Men, 12 Years a Slave, um, more than half of the Academy voters didn't watch the film. Nah, yeah, they don't have to watch all the films to vote. Which I don't. Which is insane. bizarre. Yeah. Absolutely insane. Yeah, that, that is. is a... You have one job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, if that is your standard, then okay. But it's a shit standard. I didn't yeah. know that. That's horseshit. I would have assumed that. Of course, you had to watch the contestants no, you're no. voting on. No, no. You sorry, sorry to inform you. No, you that is wild to me. But, but also, it is worth note, as Boom pointed out in chat. People who are in the academy, they have jobs. Not all of them just do the academy. Like, that's the only thing that they have. They're I like feel people like in the still. Uh, no, I agree. Still, I feel like you have, like, an obligation to make sure that you watch every single you thing. You find time. Well, and you, then it sort of realizes that they, they, they don't necessarily vote on the film's quality. They vote sometimes on its cultural relevance or what people say about it or society's sure. opinion at the time, which sucks. Or yeah. how much money was put into... Um, campaigning by whatever studio yeah. which is mm -hmm. largely why uh shakespeare in love beat he out saving, uh, saving private, private ryan, ryan. um <laughs> <'cause> I, <laughs> yeah yeah like oh. i mean i i don't i don't have enough information in front of me to fully back also, up that statement but i mean come on titanic is not as good as la confidential sorry <laughs> LA i really like titanic better. but you are not wrong la confidential yeah. is a better movie and also the hurt locker is not better than inglorious bastards or uh <laughs> 
And I think I think that was the same year. Oh, was that the same year as what else came out in two thousand and Avatar? But I mean, nah, nah. nah. <laughs> well, it was it was in the running, is what I'm saying. Oh, was, I think District Nine film. came out that year, and I, I think District Nine is better than uh than the. Home oh Walker. yeah, District Nine's good shit. The thing is, yeah. like the, this discussion about like what what did win, what should win. I think that is quite an interesting discussion. But imagine now that if three of us hadn't seen the film. <laughs> Like yeah. that's yeah, essentially well, how they yeah. do it. And then the idea that you could even like feel <clears> confident <throat> voting when you haven't seen, especially when you know for best picture, it's like you got to see ten films. You can yeah. see ten films in a year. In a year. Wait, what else? Can... Yeah. Oh. Uh... Yeah. No. That, that, those are the main ones. Um, and funny that he yeah. even tried. If we have to use examples that aren't real to prove points about real what? stuff, maybe we. What? Because skating's not what? real. I guess getting is real. Well, um, okay. It's, I'm it's trying to. Real. I need to give him benefit of the <laughs> yeah, doubt. Like, let's let's listen to that again. Something's wrong here. I, discipline I think it's figure sorry. skating is a complete non sequitur. And funny that he even tried. If we have to use examples that aren't what? real to prove points about real stuff, what's with the dog? I am lost. I think uh, it's I because know. he thinks that they're just holding up numbers because they oh, like get he's saying... or don't. He's saying no one ever fell over in figure skating and said I deserve uh, to be respected or something. Yeah, oh, so, so that's what's called uh, a hypothetical. If, yeah, yeah how would you feel if you had any point. breakfast yesterday? Yeah, <laughs> okay, his, here we go. His whole, point. his whole point is that would be absurd. Why but, do we not have the same standard for... I just can't like, believe we just uh, got told uh, something that hasn't happened shouldn't be used as evidence for why something would happen. <laughs> also, like, as you just said, the whole uh, fucking point is that it's absurd. That's the point. Yep, yeah, that's the point he's making. Maybe we should reevaluate a little. If you're wondering, uh, Robert Florczak does not bring up a single actual example of modern art. I don't trust you. <laughs> I don't trust you either. <laughs> you point. are proven to be a liar and a charlatan. <laughs> this is unconstitutional. How do we feel about this dog being uh, made to do this? Looks like um, he's having fun. He's out there on the ice. Is he having around. fun? I hope he's having fun. It just looks like it might be really uncomfortable. Yeah, I like hope the he's pop pads fun. on the ice. Surely they would check. Yeah. Like, if he got hurt, they'd actually, they wouldn't allow it if he actually got hurt, I assume. I, I would hope not, yeah. Yeah, there were two, yeah, he mainly stays about stuff like that, which is good. The poop related stuff that he made up. Robert does have a solution for you, though, if you're really frustrated about the modern art problem. Okay. His call to action paragraph at the end tells you to patronize the right kind of art galleries and buy the right kind of I agree, of art. patronize so, the right kind of art galleries. I was about to say, doesn't everyone agree with this? Uh, my internet what? cut out for a second. What did he say? The, he said that Robert's point is you need to start supporting the correct kind of art. And then I said, isn't that basically what everyone thinks? Like, the, obviously their vision of what art should be supported is different for everybody. Yeah, of course. And I mean, if you want to see more of the art that you like, then you have to support like, it. I hate to say it, but when, I, when we're like, hey guys, go and watch Arcane Season 2 when it comes out, but don't go watch the Ray movie for Star Wars when it comes out. What do you think that's based on? It's like, well... The, the assumption of quality based on previous works from the artists that are currently creating those things, and that the the support to that work being lessened or increased will in, lessen or increase the, the likelihood of future works being exactly, created. Exactly, because artists gotta eat, you know? <laughs> so, I, I don't, gotta, this is what I mean, like, everyone like does this. I don't know why you're treating this like it's well, some I mean, huge shock. Has, I mean, he, he did it right. He's saying that that impressionist painting was better. Like, what what is the objective of that if not to get more eyes and attention on mm. that kind of art? Hmm, yeah, I know, right? Hmm, yeah. Work <laughs> at the galleries. By the art we patronize at museums or purchase at galleries, we can make our opinions not only known, but felt. I'm not sure who art he's gallery. speaking to. How many people are buying, buying art, art or patronizing galleries? artists? You know, or yeah, galleries? like, it was like I you're guess. talking to well, a but lot The crazy thing is that, kind of thing to, how do you disagree with anything fun. he's saying, though? Like, this yeah, is what no, everyone I mean, thinks. We all agree. Exactly. This is like I mean, someone it, saying, "Do the right thing." Like everyone. If, yeah. This, this is what. If yeah. anything, these are mundane statements that it's difficult to disagree with because you're just like, "Well, yeah, sure, support what you think is good art, sure." Exactly. Of course. Of I course. Think an explanation might be that the guy that's made this video, as he said at the beginning, believes that Prager you guy is being dishonest and manipulative. So therefore, he has some kind of ulterior motive for rewarding certain types of art because all art is political. Would that does that make sense? Yeah, but he he's got to show that, right? He keeps showing us clips oh. where the guy is very chill. <laughs> sure, I'm, I'm suggesting that maybe the video guy who made the video is working on that presumption, and he's maybe, maybe. assuming that his audience are on board with him from the get go. He doesn't means... have to convince anyone. Oh, but 
what the fuck is the point if you don't like just trust me bro when he's like yeah showed himself to be uh, a little inaccurate several times already or after all mm. is a business like any other what won't sell won't get made wait 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 let's roll it back it tells you to patronize the right kind of art galleries and buy the right kind of artwork <laughs> at the galleries by the art we patronize at museums or purchase at galleries we can make our opinions not only known but felt an art oh, gallery beer. after all true is yeah. a business like any other what won't sell okay. won't get made that is like not even how the world works Rob it's it's a pressure on the world that exerts influence. It, it's not like he, he, this is what I mean. It's so unfair. It's not like the guy said money is the only thing that determines what art will be made. He he's he said support the art you like and it will be felt. That's what he said, which is true. Yeah, which is true. Like it's not it's not like it's gonna track absolutely right that somebody that there won't be people who even if they don't get paid much money will like stop making the art that they want to make. But I mean, he's not wrong. Like yeah. in terms of the like, if there's like I love that he says you know behind it then that's you know. that's not how that works it's like it also is how it works a lot of the time yeah. also, popularity yeah. and yeah, monetary exactly. advances for any kind of media means that more get made yeah that's a thing crazy why do you think there's four John Wicks <laughs> Robert ends the video with the story with a quick jab at Robert Rauschenberg's three panel white painting let's celebrate what we know is good and ignore what we know is not. By the way, the white background you see behind me is not simply a white graphic backdrop. It is a pure white painting by noted artist Robert Rauschenberg. Uh, he doesn't really say- Wait, sorry, what were those edits? What were the texts? See behind yeah. me is not simply a white graphic backdrop. Yeah, no yeah, shit, cue ball. Oh, I'm sorry, to a normal person that does look like a backdrop that's yeah, just that's blank. Just a backdrop. Yeah, that's just a- that looks like a blank backdrop, or, yeah. I love- I love that he says no oh, shit. What? <laughs> Why would you assume anything else? He's like, yeah, but what, what, you're not familiar this, with this, this artist's art. work? It's like, no, I am not familiar well, said, with- <laughs> If someone told me this- this backdrop wasn't actually a backdrop, it's actually a famous painting, I'd be like, no, we're looking at- no, we need to sync up watch together. We're- we're looking at different <laughs> frames right now. You're like, mine's this blank, is... and I'm like, yeah, 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 and you're like, no, 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 like, it's actually blank, and I'm like, yeah, 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 and you're like, what? Like, <laughs> what's- what's happening? Are the is lines part of the painting? No, it's three I, like canvases. It's a, like three, it's a... three canvases. Ah, uh, okay. Or something? So it's literally just three blank... They're not blank, that's the big no, twist, you'll find white. out in a sec. Yeah, not, yeah. Oh. white painting. <laughs> By noted artist Robert Rauschenberg. Yeah, it's not blank, it's white paint. This seriously is what how is the that? video what ends. That? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It kind of illustrates yeah. the whole point he's making, doesn't it? Yeah. We've gotten to the point where a blank canvas is being appreciated as much as some of the most incredible paintings of all time. That's a very intuitive thing for a person to be yes. like, what the hell happened? In fact, I'm gonna go what out and I say heard. that fucking sucks. Well, is it? This so is the complication. Is I think that it's worthy to discuss because it makes a lot of sense that people would find it intuitively retarded. Why no. try and go high and mighty and pretentious and be like, you don't understand the value of a blank canvas? It's like, of course I don't! A blank canvas is synonymous with the scratch of art, the beginning of it. Not yes, like the is end. This concept of what could be one day art, not that it currently is the art. Like, and why pretend done, go home. to be so fucking above it when this is a very normal perspective? Yeah, if you don't think it's normal, you're just gonna get more. You gotta go outside. No reality. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe right go there. to less galleries and start talking to more human beings. I don't know, man. <laughs> All these galleries of robots and aliens. <laughs> He's like, these guys get me. This is art. Uh, he doesn't really say anything about it other than paint. He, he obviously wouldn't feel he needs to. It's blank. Yes, <laughs> the point is being made by him Believe pointing it out. It's white. Yeah, no, no, I see it, Robert. This isn't a blank canvas, as many conservatives will so lead painted, you to believe. Right? Good it's fucking no, god. Conservatives. Why Left wingers conservatives? are allowed to say it's blank, <laughs> too. <laughs> no, it's, it's worse than that. that. It's worse than that. If you're a left winger, then you have this magical ability to know that it isn't blank. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're left wing and you say that's blank, you automatically lose all of your political positions. They turn right wing. Yeah. Oh, well, dear. If you're left wing, you know that this canvas is, uh, well, it's because it's very white. It insists so upon itself. White, right? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it absolutely insists upon itself. I mean, look at it. <laughs>
This was the, but, if so, we were if we were all in the same school, we would took here and like the 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 teacher presents this and says everyone enjoy. I would just be laughing. I'd be like, this is funny. Like, uh, what's the meme though? And be yeah. like, no, it's not. <laughs> what's what's what the what? No, stop. This is to me less artistic than if someone took the fire extinguisher from the earlier example, framed it, and put it on the wall. This is worse than the boulder. Oh yeah, the boulder's yeah, way better yeah, than this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is definitely this isn't even close to boulder tier. You've, this, this is, is this is like banana tier. Let him explain to you. Remember at the beginning of the video? The conservatives have to baby you into understanding why to appreciate art. You have to follow their measurements, their standards. Yeah, he's about to tell us why we have to appreciate this. Painted perfectly white. Three of them. Painted so many perfectly white. Meticulously that you can't even see the brush. Perfect white, first of all. You can't see the brush strokes. But like depending on how it's photographed, it would also benefit the painting in terms of a lack of seeing the brush strokes as well. Who knows? What the if they're spray painted? White. It's like there are a lot of different shades of white. What is perfect white? First of all, I'm what not sure. I'd have to find out who's. Uh... And also, like you yeah, can't you even see brush strokes. Like that's how most. That's that's most things that are painted are not going to show the brush strokes. They um, use roll. I mean, they use it... rollers or spray paint or some sort of a mechanical oh, I mean, application or. Part of the problem is like I I haven't seen it in person, but I, well, I wonder it, if like if I got real 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 being... real close to it. It being like it's really if smooth. perfect white relates to a particular shade, that wouldn't make it better or worse than any other shade, right? Well, yeah, why? Yeah, why would just... it be so awesome that it's a perfect white compared to like red or blue? Is or, is he appealing yeah. to the fact? Because like I, I don't, I mean, I do like Warhammer painting because I'm a nerd, but a nerd, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't really know a huge amount about like painting in this style. And I, as far as I'm aware, white is a pretty hard color to work with. So is this guy appealing to the fact that maybe this hadn't been done before? That's all I can think, maybe. Okay. Like it's more impressive than if it was green is inherently because white is a harder yeah, color right. to paint with. Well, and it's also more impressive can... than nothing. Um, sure. But it looks yeah, like nothing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but that's, yeah, that's because you're a plebeian that's fool. Yeah, exactly. Oh. What kind of makes me think you're, about... That's because um, you, you're a conservative. I'm if, sorry. If, if there was a stack of a thousand A4 pieces of paper and someone's like, I did all that by hand. It's like, okay. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that would have taken a while, yeah. These pieces of paper were black, and then I painted them white. But why? But why? <laughs> <laughs> Which, on its own, is impressive. There are multiple versions of the Rauschenberg white paintings, but the three-panel one is definitely my favorite. Why? <laughs> why? Why? Let's First see. off, why? you don't have a favorite. You're lying. But let's, let's go ahead. Why? Why? I want to know tell why. why. I don't think you're lying. I'm just so curious. Why? What possible and reason? Exactly my favorite. It's like okay. It's so cringy. <laughs> All right. Really big too. Much bigger than what Robert suggests in his video. I feel like any he artist who's ever painted. Oh, no, go back. Go back. Can we go back 15 seconds? Actually, a canvas painted perfectly white. Three of them painted so meticulously that you can't even see the brush strokes, which on its own is impressive. There are multiple versions of the Rauschenberg white paintings, but the three panel one is definitely my favorite. And they're all really big too, much bigger oh, than damn. Robert so no, suggests no, in his okay. video. Okay, wow. So, That's so his he favorite. didn't suggest they were, <laughs> it's just his favorite. But like, why? Like seriously, why, why would you prefer I, any of why? these over the other? We wouldn't want to baby you into thinking about it just as, as whatever his perspective is, right? That'll be a conservative. You've got to... Like when you're like, isn't part of being a YouTuber like the joy of that is that I have the ability and the influence and the audience to share my perspective, and people just don't do that. They're like, yeah, this was my favorite, and they stop there. This is my favorite. It's like what? Why? They're why like do all you the like same. Three panel one more than any other one. Why? Why? It, like could, why? I like truly. the four square ones because of the angles that creates a little bit of a. A star in the middle. There you go. I did it. That's more than what he just I did. Won I know you're art. memeing, but it it reminds me when he was praising the one. Um, what was it? Birth Birth of Venus was it? Was the one? Yeah, another big big one. Yeah. So he when he didn't really explain why he liked the other one, he said it had buzzword and buzzword. But it's almost like it's the start of a thought, but he's not actually exploring it. Well, so I'm starting to get an impression he's a little bit of a phony. He's like, yeah, oh. I, li I like this. And then you're like, why? And it's like, I have no clue. Well, but I don't why is like... the most important part? Well, but I was it, told it, to. Yeah, like, like he, he says, like, it's a, it's a right wing sort of think, like, machine that you just have to go this direction. But one could easily argue that he's on the opposite end, which is that you have to find all of this shit meaningful. 
And right, just like that Blade Runner longer. example, he could be like, I love the white canvases. Why? They're beautiful. Why? They're so... I just... I Flavorful. think the... Well, the style, of course, and the emotion of it. And it's like, what emotion? Well, emotion. obviously, Purity? when you consider how it was uh, made, you get a really big sense of, like, how how much would have gone into it, you know? And the funny thing is, like, I feel like I could make up a bullshit answer for it. I could say, oh, it's easy is, it fascinating, it, yeah. is it fascinating to think about, the, you know, all of the effort, all of the toil that I put into making this perfect, you know, perfect white, you can't tell the strokes, all of this effort, and it just manifests in nothing. Everybody looks at it and they think it's a blank canvas, as though I haven't been here. I think that speaks to the toil of existence, you know, that we can put as much of an impact on the world as we... You know, we'll try our best to leave our mark on the world, leave our paint strokes, our, our brush strokes on the world. Oh, yeah, that's um, true. And, you know, the little ripples that are our lives. At the end of the day, the of the day from the life. outside, exactly. It's nothing. It's nothing. No impression, no impact. It's just devoid. Of, we, we are nothing in this eternal, you know, this sea of, of, of stars and this cosmos. There you go. There's a, yeah. there's a interpretation. Yeah. Nice and I don't even, and I don't like yeah. painting, by the way. I, I think this is lame. <laughs> That's the way to put just it, yeah. So we're, just so we're clear. I just like the idea that the artist is here right now. And you go, I think your work is coming lame. Coming out as a like, conservative. Wow. Okay. It's like, it is art. He paint like it is, but yeah, I don't like it. What I find quite interesting about this is that, Fringy, you could have said everything you just said about a truly blank canvas or like a, a sheet of paper. I could have. Yeah. Yeah. Which um, kind of feeds back into what I think we were talking about earlier in that to some degree, the art is in the eye of the beholder. Um, the value that people extract from it is absolutely uh, like I, I like if somebody if somebody actually you know if someone said that to me and then the wizard said yeah he's telling the truth it'd be like okay that's that's really cool then that you were able to pull something out of it like yeah. that's that's great that's cool that's swell and I mean I would say that this is art like of course I would in this case <laughs> like the fact the fact that it's even been painted. Uh, would have to give it that but like as for me I just I don't like I don't know man I, I don't want to pretend like I could look at this and value this as much as like some incredibly elaborate and detailed um painting that you know like this incredible photorealistic like landscape right like the, yeah I'd look at this and be like oh, okay. the, you know the, the Arcadia the what's it what's that one called uh that Thomas I think it's yeah, yeah. The the Arcadian or pastoral state. You guys know that painting? Well, it's good, but it's no Fringy Lisa. Uh, can you show me a picture? I, I might know uh, yeah. of it, but uh, it's uh, it's a, it's a, it's 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 really like I'm I'm always gonna have more respect for something like this. <laughs> like I'm sorry. Oh, Oh, one hundred fucking percent. Look at you that. Just, like, look at this. And, wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like really I, I really love it, and I'm always gonna like I'm always yeah, I, but I, could... I'm not even gonna. I'm not going to pretend that I don't, you know, like, although I yeah, consider this. I, uh, I don't know, Fringy. I think over there on the on the right hand side by the tree, I think I see a brush stroke. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I was going to say, I like, I appreciate it, but it does lack flavor. Um, it does lack style. Well, it's, 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 it's too crowded. It's just too crowded. There's so many people <laughs> here. Can you just yeah, let nature dull. be nature? Green's a bit yeah. dull. I guess. Y yeah. There's the, too the many greens. It does dullify it. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> and that's not what waves look like. I, I don't know. I think I think I got really like when he was saying, "Oh yeah, just mountains and stuff." Like, I'm sorry, man. I really like these landscapes. <laughs> like, I really oh, like yes. these paintings. Um, I'm not. I didn't fall for like conservative propaganda because I liked them, my dude. Yeah, you're just I, useful. Or that you idiot. didn't like the white yeah. paintings that makes you conservative. It's like it's retarded. What I what I feel like yeah. this video meant to be was about a minute long, and he says. There's more to a painting than simply looking at it and being done with it. Like, there can be more in terms of how it was made or why it was made, and that can really change Absolutely. your mind on the piece of artwork. Yep. If you put it all that way, that's fine. It's totally fine. Yeah, but if he you did that, he yeah, if he was like, that. technical impressiveness is not the be-all, end-all of what makes, yeah. you know, art good or bad or that's whatever totally you want to call fine. it. Totally. I still just mentioned he and hasn't even say, gotten sure. to Charlie yet. That's true. I still oh, don't yeah, understand. Right. I don't understand the political spin that he's put on the video because it seems that's what that's a left that so, it, that's what people on both sides do. Lefties do it in uh, yeah, all sorry. the time. Everything is a conservative <laughs> this or a fascist that. Well, the sorry. only thing that seems to be conservative about this video is the fact that it was uploaded to the PragerU YouTube channel. <laughs> Basically, so, but that's enough. If I were to if I were to figure out what I think the argument would be, my uh, my guess would be that these sort of standards are rigid and conservative by their very nature because they limit the 
like the breadth of artistic expression that people can feel comfortable with. That would be my guess. That's probably as, his like, position, but I don't think. like it. Like yeah. the we sequester uh, I, 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 like older yeah, like and, I, and more formatted standards to conservatives. It's like I mean, there's plenty yeah, of lefties like that. that love I these really standards. Like so, that. well, the the idea that you can't take like a more yeah, I, yeah, I just <laughs> but my guess is that that's what he's saying is that like these standards are inherently conservative, which like is weird. But, you know. I feel like any artist who has ever painted before should be impressed by these. If you've ever seen, I, uh, I mean, kind of, I, it's, it's, I, once you know the, the, can he at least concede seeing these without context is like it almost evokes embarrassment. Yeah, it, it being really <laughs> difficult to do, but not looking like it was really difficult to do, you you're not going to know how hard it was when you when you look at it, right? Like I said, the most striking thing about this one is the image that's created with the four of them being put the, together the way they are. You know what I mean? I'm like Yeah, I'm like why are they why are they off like center, you know? Why are they turned yeah, a little yeah. bit? That's clearly intentional. Why? What is that supposed to mean? And then and oh, already already we've gone further. If I stopped there it would be more interesting. It blows open the whole concept of like you can't experience a piece of art correctly unless you know about how it was created. It's like I don't know that that's true. I don't think we can do that standard because then it means, you know, somebody's like I made this painting heart attack and then they die and they never wrote down what they meant, <laughs> and they never told anybody what they intended. That like that. And they never told anybody what they went through to make it. Yeah, and it's not evident from the piece complete, itself. Even though it is complete, it is a complete work. You know, the wizard even says, "Yeah, he said it was complete, and then he died right there." The idea that that artwork would be incomplete well, Og's, forever because you can never ask him what. Og's he wonderful painting I mean, on the wall. We don't know what he did to make it. Yeah, exactly. Isn't a well, lot of what's meaningful that you can kind of like infer and read into and think about what they may have intended, even if you don't necessarily know. And like I said, it goes both ways. What if you see something like this four set, and then you go, ooh, what was the context? And you go, there isn't any. These haven't been painted yet. Yeah. Like, someone put them on the wall because it was a mistake. They, they put up ones that haven't been done yet. And he's like, oh. But I drew a oh, bunch of meaning out of it. And it's like, you can keep that meaning. It's all yours. You do that. It's okay. You can draw meaning out of things that are random or, like, don't really have, like, some elaborate or fascinating, compelling, like, sort of explanation for being the way that they are. So what if the guy who painted these only had like only had one arm, didn't have any arms, and he painted them with his toes, like he held the brush with his toes? That would make it harder to do, and therefore more impressive. But again, you're not going to know that unless you have been told that, right? Unless you've been told. Yeah, yeah. And which, by the it's way, I don't want to consider that irrelevant or anything. I just, nope. I just don't think it should be considered exclusively relevant. Like it has to be a part of the artwork's consumption. Yeah, and it definitely strange. makes it more impressive, but. How impressive it is, I think, is a separate question. There's a there's a lot of factors that come into the appreciation of an artwork. It can be the amount of time it took to make it, even on an incredibly low skill. Like I said about stacking the A4 pieces of paper. Anyone can do that. But if you did it for like a million pieces, like, holy shit, that is kind of impressive. Then there's like the talent aspect. That someone is just incredibly fucking good at a thing. You don't even they're not even hundred percent sure how they they were they were always good. They always remember being good. And then there's effort, uh like as a variable that could apply like a lot at a small amount of time or a huge amount over a large amount of time and you create something incredible as a result like there's all these factors um someone lacking particular limbs or um senses yeah those two and all that stuff but then you know at some point we're gonna have to talk about what the thing is like an example that i would give i, I don't really listen to them but def leopard their drummer only has one arm which makes playing conventional drum patterns pretty difficult mm -hmm. for him um, you don't, uh, I mean, again, I don't listen to them, but I, I would assume that a Def Leppard fan doesn't listen to them and just kind of give a proverbial pat on the head and go, oh, it's good that he's trying, like he's, it's really hard for him to do this. It's like, no, you listen to the drumming. Does the drumming sound good? You don't add the caveat that, oh, okay, it was done with a, a guy who only had one arm in order to get past the fact that it doesn't sound very good. The reason why it's so impressive though, partly is because he only has one arm and he's still mm -hmm. able to sound like a drummer. That's the thing, it applies to all of those. You could spend a million years on something and it could be crap. You could have the best talent in the world and still make something crap because you didn't give a shit. And you can uh, put in the most effort ever and it can still be crap. Well, because... yeah, and then conversely, you can see like Da Vinci's just, you know, his little illustrations in his notebook that are like incredible when they were never meant to be complete works. They were just ideas, you know, experimentation. Yeah, it could have taken him no time, no effort, no talent necessarily. And it could still be considered some of the greatest artwork of all oh, time. That's just how it works. Wasn't that the... Uh... 
I remember, the, uh, I know it's not quite the same. Wasn't it a meme with, like, Picasso that he, like, drew something on a napkin and then said that would be, like, $10,000 or something when, like, some woman asked him to draw something? Possibly, I don't remember. I'm sure that's happened many times, to be honest with you. Yeah. Maybe. He seems cheeky. It's a funny meme just about, like, that. it's like, oh, that took you, like, a minute. And he says, you know, no, that took me, like, 30 years. Like, 30 years to the culmination oh, yeah, the... of, uh, you know. Boyhood memes. It took 12 years to make. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing them in person, they're pristine. And that's not even talking about like any like meaning or symbolism. That's just technically impressive. Not liking art like this is a choice. And it's a no. no. Jesus Christ. No. So, okay, so what you like and what you don't like, that you, sorry, they're not choices. You don't get to determine the things you like and don't like. It's like dexastic involuntarism. You can you just can't. It's, make it's... claims publicly, but you're probably going to be lying if yep. you, you know, it's, <laughs> uh, I hate that so That's much. That's right, and you'd only be lying to yourself, you know? Or just it's... like it. Just just do it. Just choose to like it. Just choose to enjoy watching this. Oh, damn. Why don't you just like it? Well, shit, then I would just like everything. It's it's the same as exactly. like saying fuck? that you choose what you believe. Uh, oh as in, god, like, that one's faith. even. Ugh. Yeah, that, yeah, I think it's the same thing. You don't. You're yeah. you're either convinced or you're not. Like that's it's surely that simple. And there are times in life where someone will give you every reason to feel a particular way, and you just go, "I just don't." Sorry, yeah. and vice versa. Be like, "Why would you feel yeah, that way when all of these things?" And you're like, "Sorry, I, mean, I just do." And then and then this sort of brings out this discussion. What exactly is the point of the craft of creativity if not for that craft to influence whether you like it or not? The, like, if you can just like anything, why, why, why would you go about, like, the, the methods that you use to create something if, it, if, if you can just arbitrarily choose to like anything or dislike anything? Yeah, what just make shit like, and what is tell the everyone to like What's it? the effect of the craft? What is the effect? What does it create? What does it realize in the world, like, for people, if they can just make a conscious choice just like that, about liking and disliking it, you know? I think this kind of, the fact that he's now said that he thinks that you can choose what you do and don't like, that maybe contextualizes why he's been very harsh to the PragerU guy. Because he, he thinks that you can choose what you do and don't like. He thinks that all art is political, and he thinks that the guy is pushing some kind of political agenda. Like, all of that, together, makes his video seem... He's in quite a bubble, well, you might say. A political, yeah. biased, clouded bubble. Yeah, it could be that he's approached this with a certain uh, predetermined outcome. <gasps> or symbolism, that's just technically impressive. Not liking art like this is a choice. And it's a choice that people should be able to make with all of the context available. Robert is... It's, a, it's a, not a choice you can make. It's a I mean, choice they should yeah, be able right. to make with all the context available. Okay, now I'm just lost. <laughs> is, he, right. is he saying, like, we should be able to decide whether we like something oh, we, with we context? Oh, we should decide whether or not we like something, but this guy's saying you have to like things, you know? He, you have to adhere to my standards. Is that what he's ramping up to? But they're both doing we that. we should, or else Art get... If, well, no, I think the old guy's saying you should like these things because look at this shit here. Yeah, you, but don't you, want you, any, can, you don't want more of this shit. You can broaden them both out hardcore. Uh, Prig you man is like, you should like these things because they adhere to greater standards of masterworks. This guy's saying, you should like these things because they mean more. Yeah, well, he's saying you should choose to like them because they mean more, but that, right? That does, you can't choose to like something. <laughs> no, I, I know, I know, but... That's, what, that's why I'm, I'm cutting out the middleman. It's like he's saying, no, you probably should like this more. It's, it's more style, more spice, more flavor. <laughs> yeah. The rock, you can walk under it. You can't walk under Michelangelo's David fucking useless yeah, statue. you can't. It's on the floor. I love how that's a criteria, whether or not you can walk <laughs> under the eye. You can walk under it, yeah. <laughs> is presenting these pieces and robbing the context from you while he's uh, come on i i haven't even seen the full video and i get the point he's making straight away in the decline of art and then he presents to you at the end what seems to be a blank canvas synonymous with the concept of the lack of art that's at the end of the video what point do you think he's making he's not i don't believe for a second that um what the Prague U man wants to convince people who are watching that is that there's no artist to credit and there's no intention behind the paintings at all. It's just a, a blank canvas that someone popped on the wall randomly. I don't think he's trying to say that. He's trying, he's, he, the point is only meaningful if there was someone who created it and people who value it. That's what his whole problem is. He sees it as the degradation of art.
which, you know, you can have that argument if you want. I am happy to live in a world where people are able to create artworks, quote-unquote, like that. I just don't think yeah. they're very good. I don't think they're good either, and if people want to pay a bunch of money for it and go to the, you know, make special trips to the gallery to take a look at it, then, man, more power to you. Sometimes I envy you, but not me. I just can't. I don't know. I just doesn't work for me. Doesn't doesn't do it for me. While pretending to inform. Six months ago, Prager, you posted another certified Florkzak classic. Why mm -hmm. is classical art so good? In it, he claims that art history be has been muddled by the humanities and social sciences. And that uh, social I don't significance believe anything and saying. political messaging. Yeah, just play his clips, I just can thought, you? <laughs> yeah, I'm, curi I'm curious about that video. Why is classical art so good? Like, that would be... Well, I want to hear what... Why does he think... Because remember, he talked about why these things are good. Or he said that they were very good. Right? And getting into the why they are good is a very important part of the discussion. So I'd be curious what he said regarding that. ...in art was only ever added by academics, not artists. Art is a matter of personal taste. There's no such thing as great art or bad art. Where do these assumptions come from? For the most part, they are the result of art oh, histories written there. and taught over the last century, not by artists, but by those in the humanities and social sciences. Not having an artist's point of view or experience, let alone artistic talent, these authors and teachers have therefore framed art in the only... There are plenty of artists that would have these perspectives. I don't buy the... There are, It's yeah. exclusively like a yeah, social scientist no perspective. Way. No way. It was just academics. ...only language they understand. Meaning and social significance. Artists don't... Which are important as well. Uh, to artwork. A yeah. lot of some of the yep. reasons, like, why I'll praise an artwork will be its social significance slash meaning, so... Sure. You know, yeah, we want to throw... Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, as they say. Mm. Think like that at all. They only care about making it look real. <laughs> when a visual... Wait, hang on. I think he's doing a parody. I can't I... quite catch that. Which they I, understand. I it was like a balloon Meaning there. and social significance. Artists don't think like that at all. They only care about making it look real. <laughs> Oh, no, I think that was from the, the, the video, was that uh, the modern art was the balloon animal. What's his point? I'm not sure what his point is, honestly. I was more distracted by the balloon animal. We just carry on? Because I'm not... I'm not I, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, not sure. Carry on. I listened to that twice and I, was, I didn't quite catch, so... When a visual medium becomes more about what it means, and less about its pure visual experience, it might succeed as, say, journalism or social commentary, but it has failed as art. Uh, that, that's an opinion and a standard, but I don't agree with it. Yeah. I, I don't agree with it, but that's something that we could definitely talk about, because I think that deep down, inside of that idea, there is something worth discussing. Um, when he says like, failed as art, I don't know if he means it's shitty and good art versus it is art and isn't art. Failed as art, you know? The fact that he failed says it has art. failed mean, would suggest failed to me that art. it has failed. It has failed as being a piece of art, therefore it is not yeah. art. Yeah, which that, I would disagree that would be, with. That's, yeah. yeah, especially when he says it would be like journalism, you know, instead of yeah, like he's trying about... to categorize it as something different. Which again, that's real awkward, because like journalism, when you write it down or present it on television, you know, it's like, yeah, that's yeah. art. Yeah. Ernest Hemingway was a journalist, you know, <laughs> like a lot of writers were journalists. Edgar Allan <laughs> Poe wrote uh, journalism, I believe. I had to see that Robert is still just as dumb eight years later. In a great oil painting by the 17th century Dutch master Vermeer, the quality is there in the controlled balance of its composition, the harmony of its color, the masterful hand-eye coordination of its brushwork. So many masterpieces were only ever made because they were commissioned. Like, uh, 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 that's uh, not a, why does this guy... That has nothing to what? do with what he said. <laughs> what White... thoughts was commissioned? Like, what? Like, you know, the I, Sistine I... Chapel was commissioned. Dude, when he was playing this clip, I legit was like, okay, he stopped it. What could he possibly say? And then he said that. Because uh, everything he says that? here, the composition, the... Color. This is all the very straightforward. Fruit. Like this is to you can agree with this. It won't hurt you to agree yeah. with this. And no, I coordination of its brushwork. It's no, it's lovely. You could have just agreed. I have that on my wall. Could have just said, hoping, "Yeah, that's true." And then, and then what does he say? How many masterpieces were only ever made because they were commissioned? Like that's how. What does that have to do with anything? Survived. That's how great artists oh, survived. Okay. Ah. Okay. Um, right. Sometimes. I see. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Agree, sure. Sure. yeah. yeah. All what right. does that have to do? Lady. Uh, I think. I think yeah, he's I'm lost on the point. Towards the broader political context, I imagine that was.
their thing. It's not like the Sistine Chapel happened because Michelangelo was- Ah, there after, you go, Rags. See, he got, he got you. Don't give a fuck. That doesn't change anything. No, no that's, no, that's <laughs> no, what I, know, I said. This, I said he was, was commissioned. Yeah. That's what, was like, what does this have to do with anything? Ding, Michelangelo. But regardless, the constant masterpiece comparisons never stop with fake art critiques like this. Robert, Wait, so what, what's the point of that? <laughs> Why do you bring it up? Legit, like structure of making video. You present clip. Clip says, this piece of art from an older time, better. For these reasons. Really and your good. response is, yeah. yeah, but it was likely made, or at least a lot of artworks were made for money. Anyway, moving on. It's like, what? Why Why <laughs> even bring that up? Why bring up that a lot of art was commissioned? What does that have to do with whether it's well composed or it's got good lighting and color balance? Are we actually going to get into the, the concept work? of you can be an artist and also create art for money? Are we, are we, do we need to introduce this? This is a possibility, yes. You can express yourself and do it for money. Well, also, why Prager, you, you guys up? said Prager, you guys said more about that whatever that painting was than this guy said about the three white squares yeah, or the big rock, yeah, yeah, or, the or, rock. The, or, or the other one. The oh, it's vivid and you know, wait, he didn't. I don't know why I keep saying vivid. It flavorful. was emotional and flavorful. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Teen Chapel happened because Michelangelo was bored after all the pizza he was eating. Michelangelo. Yeah, but no, I got it. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I thought it because he was Italian. Robert, did you know <laughs> that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are named after artists? Did you know wow. that? Wow. Oh my goodness That's gracious. That's incredible. That's pretty Leonardo, crazy. Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, Michelangelo. Oh my goodness. Survived. That was their thing. It's not like the Sistine Chapel happened because Michelangelo was bored after all the pizza he was eating, Michelangelo. But regardless, the constant masterpiece comparisons never stop with fake art critiques like- Yeah, yeah I, so I just what does fake art critiques that. mean? I'm, I'm kind of waiting for him to get to the end of the sentence. What Because he hasn't fake made a point. art critiques mean? Robert claims that art is a visual medium and how it looks matters more than anything else. The great artists of the past didn't care one whit about reflecting their times. They cared primarily oh, about no, creating that, that's that's not plan. true. Yeah, don't buy that's that. That's not true. Do not buy that. Looked good. There are plenty of people who may have been solely uh, motivated by making things that looked like real life, but the idea that artists back then weren't interested in reflecting their times as a as a rule, mm. uh, th I, I think I that's gotta retarded. I got to say this. this this video is more cringe than the other one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the other, this one is worse than the other one based on what little snippets we've seen. Art, by definition, is a visual medium. Nope. Um. No. By by def. Wait. So blind I, people he, just cannot expect. What about like, music? It. Well, I, hold on. I, I know. Yeah. Or is he just talking about painting art? Yeah. Well, then why did he say art? art? <laughs> I don't know why he said art. I'm sorry. Well, art has an art. I am. I think I'm that's going what he's to, talking about. I'm going to assume he misspoke or chose words poorly. I'm going to I'm, assume that he would not exclude music as art. I imagine yeah, that he is saying art that's as in thinking, artwork yeah. in a museum, and a, well, uh, not in a museum, in a gallery, paintings. Hold on, what was the name of the video that this guy's playing? Because if it specifies in that that he's talking about a particular type of art, then that would explain why he doesn't it's clarify it. It's classical art. I still think it would be still. worthwhile in this moment in the video to say that, not just art. Art, by definition, is a visual medium. Very strange thing to say, in terms yeah, of yeah, preventing misunderstandings. Therefore, I mean, me its meaning and ability to make you think are secondary to how it looks. Well, wait, hold on. So... I guess, it, I, is he saying, like, as a logistic process, you must look at it and uh, then process so it? Part of... Uh, so the thing is, is that it seems like he's working towards the idea that beauty is like paramount, but already, I mean, what about an image that's meant to scare the shit out of you? Like a painting that's haunting or terrifying or disturbing. Like, it's not necessarily, like, you know what I mean? Like, if, if we were to appeal to, like, beauty, it's like, I don't know if we'd say, like, do you get what I mean? Like, that. Well, I mean, I'm trying like, to be nice. I think, I think he's saying that you can't draw anything from it until you've got it, and to get it is to oh, look at it. Oh, until you've looked at it? Sure. I mean, is he, you, you is start he talking, looking at it, yeah. Is he saying beauty, or is he saying fidelity? I, I don't know. It seemed like he was saying beauty It could before. be as fundamental as you cannot gain meaning from it until you've experienced it, and in this case, this is a visual medium of a painting or whatever, so you must oh, see it sure, first. Oh, sure, sure. I mean, yeah, yes. You, you start with looking at it. Yeah. And I think this is supposed to be supporting the idea that that's the focus of the art, as in, like, they, they have, that supports the idea that they, they focus on the way it looks rather than what it means, sure. which is not true. 
but yeah, but the the thing is, again, when we say focus on what it what it looks like, not means... true necessarily. I mean, there are plenty of artists that will maybe focus on how it looks as opposed to what it means, but there are plenty of artists that do the other. So I, I guess what I mean to say is that when we try and make a standard based on how it looks, it's like, well, that's not like based. On, yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, maybe we'll get more context in to how means. it looks. That's really stupid. Because art is a visual medium, it can convey things that are indirect through a visual format, right? Is that? I feel like that makes more sense than whatever the fuck he just said. I don't think that necessarily contradicts what he said, though. I, I was about to say, I don't think so. Like a he visual meta that how it looks is first, and then like whatever yeah. you pull from it is derived from the way it looks. It's not a surprise. He like has barely ever responded to him accurately. It's insane. <laughs> Before almost, you know? It's like saying words can't mean other things other than just what the word says. But what? When did uh, he ever say on. that? What? Are you making this words shit up? Words have meaning. Also, words have meaning. But also, to make a broader point, art isn't a medium. Painting is, drawing is, charcoal is. Those are visual media, but art is not a medium. Art is much more broad than that. But this guy doesn't really care about True, that stuff. it is. I but mean, when did, assuming did, did, that he... I think it's I think it's when he said like art is a visual medium, right? And he's saying, well, I mean, art's I'm surprised he wouldn't have focused medium. harder on that because it's such a on its own yeah, statement being a... insane. Yeah, I uh, I still feel like I need to push back on it. It's difficult to do that because of the way that this guy's presenting the PragerU guy. But every example he's given has been that of a painting. So I feel like, given the context, when he's like, sure, he's maybe phrasing it in a suboptimal way, but given the context, of I get what you mean. Um, yeah. If we, if Pray you go here right now and we said you know music is art, right? He'd be like, I'm talking about paintings. Yeah. And he, like, I don't even think he'd see the problem. We'd be like, oh, okay. And obviously, my recommendation oh, yeah, yeah, is anyways. don't say art is a visual medium in your video. Maybe it makes more sense when you watch the video, as in like what that what preceded that sentence. Maybe who knows? Possibly, yeah. Because he's stupid. That's the summary of this video, basically. Yeah, th th that's the conclusion. Though. He's stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No benefit of the doubt. It's fine. I mean, that's the synopsis of the video. Robert doesn't know the difference between painting and art, so he keeps saying art when he means painting, and he's still wrong. Robert does clarify he's not I, talking about... I, I, whatever. <laughs> I, I think he just made a mistake there in his terminology. I think you're actually stupid, though. That's the difference. Realism? He's just saying it has to look good. Great art need not even look realistic to be great. It's no wonder that many people believe the myth just, of photography. Oh wait, I'm yeah, sorry, dude, what? He what? Said, wait, but he, he just said, said earlier. the opposite. He literally just said the opposite. This guy has been arguing throughout this whole video that the main standard has been how close to real life it looks. Like from conservative yeah, slash Robert. So He's correlated the two like at least twice, possibly three times. But now we've just found out been... Robert doesn't think that at all. <laughs> and he's still wrong. Robert does clarify he's not talking about realism. He's just saying it has to look good. Great art need not even look realistic to be great. It's no wonder that many people believe the myth that photography put an end to classical art, given that they assume that looking photographic was the purpose of a painting. But that was so, never the goal of the classical artist. Quality of execution was. Whatever that means. Robbie. I mean, what? It, you don't, you can't, you can't rub two brain cells together to come up with what you think he means by that. When you create a photorealistic image with a camera, very different than a paintbrush, which is very different than a pencil, which is very different than mm -hmm. sculpting, which is very different. And all of these things have different crafts and skill levels and requirements and things to master. Obviously what he's referring to. He has to like it. It's not about being photorealistic. It's about how you manage to achieve photorealism through the medium, at least and I earlier... assume is what he's saying. And earlier in this video, when he talked about how that's what he's been saying this whole time, well, you, you can't, because that's not what he's saying. You might be thoroughly impressed with the work of a cutting-edge artist. I remember being shown this. Uh, I think it was <laughs> how in... how do you feel about it? Uh, um, I, I, my dad's signature is like a sideways tornado. I love it. Yeah. Um, because he, like I, I, when, I remember yeah. when I was super young and I first saw him do it, I was just like, you're trolling. That's so great. Like, the, Dad, you, you can doctor? just make up your signature to the point where it's just, and I'm not exaggerating, you just did loads of circles and they got smaller and smaller as you, further along you went. Sideways Tornado. And, uh, yes, because it, it matches enough of the letters in his name, and so it was just like, whatever. Um, when I saw this, I remember thinking about that, and I was like, yeah, I guess my dad's signature is art too. <laughs> like, it's... Yep. You know? With its impressive theory, but you have no way of knowing 
if you're being taken for a sucker. You have no way of knowing you're being taken for us. Okay, so yeah, I could probably, I'd probably push back on that. If you drew meaning out of the squiggles, it's yours. I said it earlier. That's, that's totally fine. I don't. And, and if someone said like, "Haha, you fool! This wasn't even an artist that made this. It was a bunch of random bullshit." Uh, I I would implore people to not let that take yeah, the I'd meaning like, away. All right. well, yeah, just be like, sure, I, whatever. All right. Yeah. All right. In the well, same I vein. If you interpret a particular message within a story that very much is supported by the story and then the author tells you that you made that up, they didn't put that in there, shut up, you can ignore them. You don't have to believe that's what they said just because they made it. It's, uh, it's, it sounds unintuitive, but there's, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of importance there depending on what you drew out of what stories slash pieces of artwork. So, yeah, uh, uh, maybe, maybe I'd need more on what he means by sucker. Sucker? I usually don't go to museums trying to figure out if I'm about to be tricked or not. But maybe it's that's more of Robert's saying. personal insecurity. Unlike the, I assume Robert's saying that like, uh, some art can be so bad you don't know. Like, well, like, like if I actually show, shit, you don't know. Like on a piece of paper and then put it in a thing and then do what Fringy did earlier and just make up a story. I literally make it up. It has nothing to do with the actual thing. I just had to shit something out real quickly to make some money that day. I guess Robert would be saying, like, so you tricked me. You, you wanted me to think there was meaning behind this, but there isn't, uh, actually. Which is an interesting perspective on art, right? That there's only meaning truly there if the artist intended for it to be there. I don't I don't agree with that, but that seems to be Robert's perspective, maybe? Yeah, that's a standard. So, I yeah. mean, as long as he's consistent with it, which it seems like he is. Inspirational work of the past. Much of today's art exposes how coarse and vulgar I disagree on that one, Mola. I do not think you can, for example, draw gender politics out of J.R. Tolkien when he didn't put any of it in there. If I drew out of Lord of the Rings that it's more important for us to work together to overcome the biggest threats to uh, the world than it is to stay apart and try and like win on separate fronts, and Tolkien told me that wasn't the case, I would disagree with him. Uh, if I said there were gender politics, I don't even know what my references would be. Like, I, you know, obviously for the one of binding together and fighting a greater threat, I have shit tons of references. Um, and that's the important part as far as I'm concerned. Using the actual art to prove your point instead of just saying, I, I, don't, I don't believe in the whole, like, I just decided that this thing is about this thing now. Like, it, it, you know, that's just like arbitrary and nothing. There's no meaning. It's uh, Pointing to references is, as far as I'm concerned, super important. Um, and if the author disagrees with your references, and as far as it goes, it's just no. I'd be like, um, okay. <laughs> I just don't want to do that at that point. Uh, in the same vein, if the artist told me, like if Tolkien told me it was about gender politics, I'd be very confused. And I'd be like, Tolkien, you might, you might explain it to me? You might do it like a little, just point to the things? Because I, I, did, I didn't quite grasp that. Vulgar society we've become. Much unlike 1400s Europe, a very clean and civilized time. Robert That's Forks a Hieronymus I... Bosch painting, my dude. Um, it's supposed to be about... it. I don't, that one is I didn't probably catch his about point. either hell or purgatory, so it's not even supposed to, yeah. It, Hang on, I just want to see what he said. Oh, insecurity. Unlike the inspirational work of the past, much of today's art exposes how coarse and vulgar a society we've become. Much unlike 1400s Europe, a very clean and civilized time. I don't think that's, he's not, that's not the same thing. He's talking about like... Yeah. Uh, a what sort of art tacky, to inspire um, or motivate towards. Well, a, a, a tacky representation of artistic meaning versus this, a painting that's. Well, also, didn't Prager, you guys say that uh, artists of the time don't try to reflect the time? They just try to create something that looks nice, which means that the time being horrible would be irrelevant to the art being made within it. Well, the thing is, I didn't agree with that at all from. Prager oh, yeah, anyway. I, I just. I disagree as well, but I don't know why this guy has then cut in saying, oh, well, the 1400s was so nasty, if the other guy doesn't factor that into his because view of art. Because surely, surely an artistic depiction of, like, hell or something along those lines, like a biblical or mythological scene, surely that's not on the same level of someone having a dead horse on the ground with INRI on it. Exactly. It, it, I, I think the word he's looking for is tacky. tacky and lame yeah. As fuck. yeah, that one's tacky as fuck, but the other one's like a work yeah. of art and a painting. Robert Florczak is an interesting case. His ignorant takes on art are almost palpable in his own work. While technically impressive most of the time, some of them are just- Oh, is that him? This he is Robert's wick. Look at it go. Oh, wow. Wow, look at that. 
Oh, that's nice. I like that with the big moon and look at the the snow leopard there. It, this is this gives me Maxfield Parish vibes. Well, let's hear the criticisms. Just fucking insane, Robert. What's going on? Yo, that's insanely good. Look at those mountains and the water. The mountains that are is what good, water yeah. looks like. <laughs> that looks really fucking good, my dude. You attacking his art is you are. He's got to rags. Artist. He's got to. You are what, so what, fucking what, stupid. Like, what is the broader point that he's trying to make? Yeah, let's here? let's hear what he says about it. Though. An interesting case. His ignorant takes on art are almost palpable in his own work. Oh, well, technically kid, impressive most of the time. Some of them are just. Fucking insane, Robert. What's going on here? But his what? work is clearly Why? restricted. What? Wait. I'm... Oh, he's I got... it's the same snow leopard. See, he's there again. What's this guy? Who is it? Are these from like a book? <laughs> Maybe he's commissioned to do like book art or something? I'm try... I want to know what he's going to say about the artwork. What Damn it. Uh, yeah. his... Some of them are just fucking insane, Robert. What's going on here? But his work is clearly restricted, uninspired. It's the same subjects over and over again. White people clearly hanging out outside. And uninspired. Ooh, white people hanging out outside. Imagine, oh. imagine you said that about any other race. Holy wow. shit. <laughs> Holy fuck. Look at the, just the shadows on the tree. Well, no, but you see, he already is like, yeah, it's technically impressive, but he thinks it's shit. Yeah, because it's rote, basic, it's repetitive, like lame. Yeah. I guess, I guess it's just Robert white wasted white people, really. all this time learning how to like make art instead of taping berries to a wall. <laughs> I just <laughs> can't fucking believe it's like clockwork mentioning white people specifically. Yeah, because fuck bro. white people. You're white, and you're not a great representative of our people, but like, man, you do you, whatever. This is this is really good. This art is really good. Um, you should no, not. No, it's this. just technically good, but it's not oh, good in terms. Okay. Yeah. yeah, there's no I meaning behind it. There's no meaning. I, there was no yeah, there, yeah, there was no plaque. Kind of there was no law. There was no law. No law. Yeah, there was no yeah. lore, Yeah. If he had wow. said this represents the love I have for my wife, I put it into my characters, and that this tree was a tree that we planted when we met, and blah blah blah, he'd be like, oh, now it's good. Good art. There you go. He I did mean it. He's got to have some kind of inspiration. He would have. Why? Do, why is he drawing like horses in these landscapes and stuff if there wasn't I mean, like some inspiration? He's, he's white. Just, like, think, or is he saying that his, his inspiration is lame? It's it's boring. It's conventional. Which like I mean, it, so he I, told okay. us. He figured it out. I I find it really weird that he can flash these up. These things that would have taken like an insane amount of time to make and then just like dismiss them so flippantly. That's yeah. Just, it's just, uh, and by the way, he's doing the thing that he said re stupid Republican conservative evil people do at the beginning. He's like, oh, they just take the art and tell you how to feel about it. Also, yeah, like, which, yeah. I want to highlight that he's shown us multiple examples of Prager you guys art and we're all like, holy shit, this is fucking fantastic. <laughs> and and the example of his shit, art was nice. the song that he played during the <laughs> oh, yeah, like, oh, you know, sorry. Yeah, I mean, it, it is awkward. It, 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 these are good paintings. Mm. Like, it's, uh, really you would weird. have, I mean, as, of course, as he had to concede, technically, yes, you have to concede. Which, that. by the way, is, is the best kind of correct. Good? Yes. Yeah. And how yeah. can you, what do you mean technically good? So there's he technically means, bad? <laughs> I th genuinely, I think he's conceding that Robert, like, Robert is a man of his word in that, like, Robert said the most important maybe, thing yeah. is achieving in the craft, and he's conceding, yeah, you did that, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's, it is really awkward, right? Because that guy is living his values, ultimately, as, a, as an artist. He uh -oh. believes that this is the most valuable, and he's doing it like this. Surely that's a surely that's a like a good thing, right? That you can well, see that he's at least consistent in terms of his art philosophy. Well, even if you don't agree with it. Compare the two people. Robert talking about art and the art he produces. Now compare this guy and what he says about art and the art he produced. And you're like, uh, man, I don't know. If I was gonna pick which one I'd probably want society to lean towards. It's probably the evil conservative Robert man. <laughs> I don't know. You're not making a <laughs> You heard it here first, folks. Here. Rags wants to see more white people hanging around outside. That's what yes, this this is. I oh, do. Nice. I want more snow leopards and big moons and bridges. Yeah, that snow water. leopard one with the big moon was cool. I like, I like the moon. I like, was, yeah. I like the I, landscapes. I, I like it all. I, and uh, yeah, I don't need to be told good. about its fucking lore in order to like it. If anything, I, I'm curious if these two are the same people and it's like part of a journey or a book series because... The snow leopard being prominently beside them can't be like an accident. Someone said they could easily be book they're covers. they're on a journey or something. Oh, absolutely. They, they seem covers. like they yeah. possibly are. You could they... imagine a bit of Gloyd Alexander over the top or something like that. Yeah. 
All right, man. He even made the Egyptians white. Oh, that's interesting. Cool. What is your fucking focus? Okay, calm maybe, down. Maybe he what, likes. What about the other Egyptians? I need to draw a comparison here. So I don't. Have you guys seen the film Moonlight? No, but I need to. Uh, uh, I think I have. Yeah. Okay, so I haven't. But one of the things that I know about it is that the director. I saw an interview with I think the director or the cinematographer, where he was basically discussing why he likes filming black skin, as in black people because it has a particular look on film uh, if you light it in a certain way and all the rest of it. So it could yeah. it could well be that Prager Yuga, when he's painted the Egyptians as white, you know, he could just like Why, this, yeah, that I color. Think. Like, what? What is that a problem? I mean, if the, with the sun being there and it being very bright, maybe they just look lighter. I don't know. Yeah. Egyptians were a brown-skinned people. They weren't black, so. I mean, I if, his, if his goal there is for that to look like Egyptians. Also, I don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and, but like all the stuff we've said about all this artwork, what does he say in grand total? Technically good, but the race, the race. Yeah, but well, they're remember, not actually. Well, right, oh, I mean, wait, remember, I thought portraying remember, things was, realistically was bad. Remember, I thought that was wasn't the point of art. Just, um, there was one before where he said technically good, but like what's going on here with this painting? It, like he didn't even elaborate or expand on what he meant by what's going on. I thought he said the only that could go I both ways. Is, is implying that it's busy. Maybe he said, that, that in, he said it's fucking insane, I believe, was the words he used. Oh, yeah, sorry, but with no elaboration at well, all. That's the thing that it could oh, be that yeah, he's saying, yeah. like, what insane detail, good job, or what insane I, clusterfuck nah, this is. I don't get that impression. I think he's implying it's not very good. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, to be fair, the I... thing you have to remember is he can't compliment Robert. The best he can do is, technically, it is acceptable. This is yeah. the end result of what like tribalism does to someone. Oh yeah, everything that this one person from this other tribe has to be bad. Even his art is shit. But when I look at this, I'm like, dude, that's super awesome and it's cool. Like just the just look at the look look at all the characters, right? And now how they have that the light glow, you know, on the back from the sun and everything, and just the minimalism of the background, but it's Egyptian and just the color of it. It looks really good, my dude. Like, come on. Like, I, you shouldn't have, bring, say you didn't it, have to bring this up. I prefer it to the blank canvas. What? Yeah. <laughs> wow, it's just because it's just the Egyptians are white, isn't it? Well, to be fair, I haven't explored the law of either necessarily, so I could change my mind still. It's pending. Made the well, Egyptians. I could, I could probably change your mind. The blank canvas is even whiter. <gasps> yeah, you didn't talk about the race of that image. Gosh. White. Well, what okay. I'm curious about is how can you bitch about the Egyptians looking too white here? When you castigated him for this opinion of his that he supposedly had, that it should be representative of reality. But it, the Egyptians weren't actually white, so surely there's no problem with painting them as white people if art isn't about accurately depicting Oh, yeah, okay, so he's assuming the it's intention. Not a, yeah, because uh, he should be able to paint them fucking green if he wants to, right? 100%, yeah. They could all look like the Mona Fringy. And that'll be fine. Yeah, and in fact, I have a feeling that the shittier and weirder they look, the more he'll like them. Yeah, <laughs> he just like disintegrates into squiggly lies. He's like, I actually quite like this. <laughs> like, yeah, I figure. Interesting. Robert has clearly focused all of his artistic energy into making as realistic of renderings as possible, which I obviously not. I don't believe that's <laughs> what we would not? call those. We no. We must have been looking at different things. What? Remember, he's the one that's hyper media literate, while Robert is the embarrassing, ignorant fool. Uh, can be clearly. artistic. But, you don't need to be uh, painting photorealism to be an artist. And you already thought you played the clip where he said that. He didn't even say that. He yeah, he's already opposite. said it's, it's not about realism. Opposite. Come on. You do focus this guy's on a gold You should mine. probably study some other stuff too. <laughs> you should probably look at more statues. You should go to school once for a day. You Maybe guys you haven't should... covered this guy before, have no, you? No, no, this is new. This but, is a new discovery. You need to know, he's he's now in this video in total said like, people who like Michelangelo's David haven't seen many statues. People who think that, you know, art is based on the way it looks probably haven't been to galleries. You know what, people who blah 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 haven't seen blah blah blah. It's like, yes, you're better than us. I get it. Can you make some arguments, please? The conservative guy at least is making arguments that are not always even bad. Some of yeah, them no, are. No, he, he said, some he of said them are like, collecting. Some of them were shit, but some of them yeah, were... Yeah, some of them were shit, but some of them were like, <laughs> yeah, I get where you're coming from, you know? Well, I, don't, I mean, this is the Streisand effect in full effect. I want to see more of his videos. <laughs> I, I'm <laughs> curious. Nah, I don't. I'd way rather watch that guy's I'm, videos I'm than if this heard. I mean, if I was forced to watch one more of him or him, you know, I, I know which one I'm picking, all right? Like, yeah. Uh, 
Oh, by the way, weird fact about Robert, he also composed the music for Roar, the Tippy Hedron oh, shit. movie where they just oh, let a really? bunch of lions around. Cool. What? No yeah. way. Really? Wait, so is he a guy... composer then as well? Oh, then he obviously misspoke with the art thing about... Oh, definitely. Medium, yeah. I'm, I'm more than willing to completely agree on that. I, I would still yeah. caution that you shouldn't do that, <laughs> even if you think it's intuitive that he was talking about... Uh, Yes, uh, paintings, yes. I would still say don't do words. it. Yes. But yeah, that's... Uh, I don't know why he's bringing this up, because he seems to despise Robert. This just seems cool. And filmed yeah, it. That's just a great. funny fact about Robert Flork Zach. That's a Flork Zach fact for you. Okay. This guy knows art. That That's the crazy film, right? The, where it, a it's bunch the, of people got it. Yeah. Robert, yes. But, I, I mean, that's thing. not his fault. <laughs> like he, If he did the composing of the <laughs> soundtrack or whatever. Is his name I, in I, there? I, I'm looking. I want to find him. I've got him... Here and it, I, I don't see him here as being the composer. I've got him here as being a producer. That's all I can. Got Got Schalk is that, is that his name? Robert E. Got Schalk. Florksack. Florksack. Flog. Well, then Robert, his name isn't on here. Robert Flug Flugzeug. Maybe. <sighs> Maybe he's not just here on this part. I don't know. Yeah. I don't hmm. know. Raw. All right. No more Robert. Charlie time. Oh, we're done with Robert. Oh, Bye, Robert. Robert okay. was... Goodbye, Robert. For those of you who don't know who this One of is, better he is just a YouTuber. <laughs> He's like Markiplier if Markiplier played. He is just played. a YouTuber. Cool. Just a YouTuber? Okay. Just a YouTuber. What? I don't know. Just a YouTuber. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, just... go good faith, and he's just saying, by comparison to artists I've been covering, like Robert, accomplished artists who've been involved in movies and much of his own artworks. Right. Well, hold on. Most Critical was in one of the Hunger Games films. Was Wait, he? for real? Yeah, well, uh, it's kind of a meme. What are you he, he put a video. <laughs> well, uh, partly. So he put a video up where he he was an extra in one of them, and he kept sabotaging the shot by like moving into frame. Um, so I think you can see the <laughs> <laughs> you can see like the top of his head in the cut that's in the finished version of the film. So he is in the film, but I am also memeing. He's so an actor. He, technically an actor. speaking, yeah. he is an actor. Yeah, yeah. he's an and actor. Just... The mm -hmm. YouTuber. He's like Markiplier if Markiplier played Fortnite instead of Five Nights. I do want to be his chair. I don't even know what that means, but I'm going to assume it's not It's accurate. a joke. Okay. Right. Calm Calm as possible. These videos are from streams, so it's not like these are written and produced like Robert Flork's actually. Man, like was this, yours written? It's just some dude in his say, little yeah. house that he lives yeah, in. Yeah, it's it's just sorry, some I didn't dude even, in his little house that he lives in. I didn't even yeah. think about the fact that this was a scripted video. Damn. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, right. figured, I figured it was scripted, but like, god damn. Yeah. Oof. In Man, what do you video, what do you produce off the cuff? Fuck me. Yo, art makes no sense. Charlie is watching a video by Solar Sands about Thomas King Cape. Solar Sands. Are what? they conservative? Well, so if they're making fun of art, then yes. Because you don't do that if you're if no, you like wait. good art, you're conservative. If you're if you like shitty art. And you don't recognize that fucking name. He's in chat right now, Solar Sands. That's a oh, meme. Is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, hey. Hello, Solar Sands. We're about to watch your work being watched by someone being reacted to by someone else. This isn't going to be cringe. But during the entire lead up to the intro, he won't stop assuming it's either Jackson Pollock or Damien Hirsch. These paintings make my corneas hurt. I'm ashamed that this Damien artist Hirst. lived in my former hometown. <laughs> <Did> <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where do we begin with this? Like, obviously, so Critical doesn't like David Hurst or uh, Jackson Pollock, I think it was the other day, was just dropped there. That's fine. I'm it's so fine. fucking fine with that. Like, someone being like, I hate, I, I can even be fine with hatred because I assume that they hate that they're sold for like millions or whatever when they're just splatterings. I understand. But this has apparently offended the shit out of the guy who made this video, so we'll have to see what the arguments are. George this is w. Damien Hirst. Bush of art. Gee, these paintings must be pretty bad then, It's huh? Damien Hirst, isn't it? What are they, it? pictures of babies eating each other alive? Charlie's already mad about modern art, and this video isn't even about modern art. He's, he's just he's mad. Smiling. He's, he's smiling. He's, he's messing around. He's smiling. He's having a good time. Yeah. His smiling no, gave me time. He's molding. Uh, Let, he's molding. It wouldn't you, again, I want to clarify, I'm fine with people being mad over seeing what they believe to be shit <laughs> art be hyper-successful. That's fine. That's a yeah, normal it's human okay thing. It's yeah. okay to be molded. I think it's okay to see, you know, what you consider to be a movie that destroys an entire franchise making over a billion dollars and being a little bit upset about that. I think I think that's normal, right guys? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's totally normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
modern art. It's about uh, daggy wack. It's that these people, they want us to evolve instantly into stoicists whenever it suits them. But otherwise, they have to. you have to really be in tune with your emotions. And your emotions are just as valid as blah, 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 blah. So that's kind of interesting, but whatever. Daggy jigsaw puzzle art made by an evangelical alcoholic con man. The what does that have to do with... What? So this is what we call poisoning the well. Yeah. Also, those paintings are <laughs> fucking amazing. Well, I was about to... Sorry. I'm rolling him back. <laughs> like, what just yeah. happened? This Damien Hurst. lived in my former hometown, the George. Oh, uh, tacky, wacky, jig yeah. modern art, and this video isn't even about modern art. It's about uh, tacky, wacky, jigsaw puzzle art made by an evangelical alcoholic con man. The okay, so he's, he's saying the video itself isn't even about the shitty art, it's about this art, as he's showing us right now, which, by the way, looks pretty damn cool. It I kind really of understand good. what he means. That this could be jigsaw art, but what's wrong with jigsaw art? Jigsaw puzzle art is often really good. There's a lot yeah. of great jigsaw puzzle art. Wait, you think they you think they just make jigsaw puzzles of shitty art? I don't understand. Like he's degrading the art by being like this would end up on a jigsaw. You're like, okay. Did I mishear him or did, is he saying that those four paintings or drawings were done by an alcoholic con, con man? Yeah. An evangelical alcoholic con man. Yeah, what the drag said, he's trying to make the trying to poison the well. <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> like, but what does that have to do? Yeah, this this video is clearly comparing artworks. Why would you be like, yeah, Nothing but this guy made it as an alcoholic con man? You're like, okay, well, see, tribalism. That's, that's the received wisdom. That's the extra information that you need in order to properly understand the artwork. I see. I, I guess the law. you really need it to understand <laughs> the, to complete this jigsaw puzzle. You need to understand. <laughs> That this guy drinks a lot. That's what I just said. Is he guy? He seems like he's trying to tell us how to think about the art. Hmm. Interesting. These are the kinds of paintings what? those quotes are referring to. Artists By suck. the late artist <laughs> Thomas Kincaid. God damn it. He's so mad about paintings that aren't even in the video, he's getting distracted. I hate- That's fine. So, it's his Moist Critical is what we call a human being, and when they yeah. react to videos, by the way, Thumbs up for reacting to the video. Yeah, good <laughs> job. You're doing the bare minimum thing. Um, Hooray. I, like, I just love the idea he's like, he's distracted with his frustration that's been brought on by the subject of the video that's not necessarily a what's on screen right now. It's like, yeah, that's okay. He can think about things that aren't necessarily 100% what's on screen at the moment. That's all right. I hate Thomas Kincaid with every fiber of my being. Our long Channel that energy to someone that over. deserves it, There's like Damien Hurst. <laughs> <laughs> see? See? I mean, I, this video has already brought me more joy than yours, and he's been on the screen for 15 seconds. If those images we saw, the four, the jigsaw puzzle ones, uh, someone said I hate them because, and then gives reasons like they look, you know, generic, or whatever reasons, um, that's fine as well. It's, uh, but Moist Critical, I guess, is trying to say, like, yeah, but they're a hell of a lot better than a Damien Hirst image, I suppose. Which, by the way, I don't understand why... I haven't seen anything objectionable yet. I don't know why more people don't hate people like Damien Hirst than Jackson Pollock. Their work is <laughs> the most... This is kind of funny. He really doesn't like this, this Damien guy. <laughs> Very much doesn't. I don't, see why, I don't see why more people don't hate them. That's just a funny... That's a funny sentence. Awful dog shit shit ever. And when someone points out in the chat that all <laughs> art is subjective... Dog shit shit. <laughs> He says this. It is estimated his business brought in a hundred million dollars in revenue annually. Art Thomas is always McCain subjective. Was yeah, wildly until successful. it comes to Damien Hirst and Jackson Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, that is everyone's opinion. It is subjective. Uh, other than this, though. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Always what happens. It is objectively dog shit. Which, I'm not the biggest Hirsch head in the world, but Pollock? Really? The three artists that were back I understand Pollock well, more than Hurst in terms yeah, of people hating the work. Yeah, I understand Pollock more, yeah. Bouncing around Pollock, I'd be and... like, I could put that on my wall and walk by it occasionally. Sure. Sure. The beginning of this video could not have less in common. Charlie says that most modern artists can't paint, like, a face or anything like that. I guarantee you, Damien Hurst, Jackson Pollock, all of, like, your most famous <laughs> artists, like, more modern artists, I guess Jackson Pollock doesn't fit into that. I guarantee they couldn't draw a single person's face. They couldn't paint a single thing that looks like anything. This is... <laughs> wow. <laughs> a single thing that looks like anything. <laughs> Charlie, go brutal. A challenging critique. He then immediately... Oh, shut up. Like, you've done sorry, that throughout this sorry, video. Sorry. 
does he have nothing for that then? Because that's because kind of, it'd be interesting if you pointed out. No, they're actually like hyper competent in that field, but they choose to do this. I think it is absolute cringe that you've taken a stream where he's looking at a video about art, comparing it and stuff, and then he just says about and some of the artists he doesn't like. About, yeah, Jackson Pollock like, and everything. They couldn't it. draw anything that looks like anything. Like it's it's such a casual comment, and then he's like. Well, that's not very constructive criticism. And the, product of, the product of conservative propaganda, remember? Yes, yeah, this is reason. Prager used propaganda bleeding into Charlie's head, unfortunately. He's been infected. Gotta save him. Defends Bob Ross, who rarely ever painted faces because those are hard to paint. Yeah, I remember Bob. Hang on. What? But, yeah, oh, but wait, Bob sorry. Ross paints yeah, I... things that look like things, though. I uh, is he actually? Uh, wait, what? Wait, sorry. Where, where is he going with this? Hold, can we rewind a little bit? He's well, not gonna. He's not gonna like shit on Bob Ross, right? <laughs> he well, no. You have to, so what, what we have to remember out, about him is uh, Charlie's hypocrisy. Or yeah, Char something Charlie like will this. like yeah. Bob Ross, and he's saying, yeah, Bob oh, Ross can't like, paint faces. But to be fair to Charlie, his broad point was that they couldn't draw anything that looks like anything. What do you think the implication of that is? Well, yeah, that hence why I was looking this up. That's a random result for Bob Ross. It's like, that looks yeah, like something. Exactly. That, I don't know, like, it looks Bob a bit Ross crowded. <laughs> it looks a bit uh, yeah, dull. True. Where's the flavor? A bit dull. Exactly. It's, it's, you know, it's just so uninspired. Yeah, the... Like, this is what I mean about the disingenuous shit. Like, we know, I'm not going to say intuitively, we just know that when he says Pollock can't draw something like this, or paint something like this, we know exactly what he means. It's like, you can't splatter your way to this. <laughs> like, you actually yeah, have like, to- this, this takes, this, you can't, you can't stumble upon something like this. You can't accident this. This is something that you have to make. It's something you have to do with a deliberateness. However, like if, if you do make a happy little accident, don't you worry about it. That's right. Because he had a great attitude on on uh on art. I like happy accident. That's such a that's such a fun sort of way of framing it, isn't it? Yeah. Bob Ross some people in the chat. Him. Some people in the chat right now are happy little accidents. Oh. Oh my God. Really ever <laughs> painted faces because those are hard to paint. Yeah, I remember Bob Ross was shit upon by most like fart sniffing artists back in the day. <laughs> 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 <I don't know. laughs> <laughs> this is pretty fun. It has any form or shape to it or anything that looks like it took time and effort. Is... <laughs> anything that looks like it took time and effort. Face Charlie? Yeah, I know, I mean, right? I know, Very frowned upon in the community. I don't think the level of realistic face you can paint determines your value as an artist. Rob, is, it, is that the extent so of what he was think, saying? He's he's the time and effort. Do you think that's the point that he's making? He's yeah, making an observation, which is, isn't it interesting that some of these guys can't do that? So they do like something, and they do something else instead. It's such a desperation to deconstruct every last thing being said and everything that's done by every artist when it's super simple. And you can even say wrong, I don't blame you for that, to say, Pollock is splattering, Bob Ross is constructing like an image based on real life, and it approximates it pretty damn close, and you can tell how much effort and talent and time went into it. That's the point. He doesn't like artists who splatter getting all of like recognition and selling their works for millions of dollars. It's a super straightforward and super normal perspective. Robert Florczak paints faces all the time. They suck. That doesn't make his work any less bland. Also, why are you gunning for Charlie? Bland. <laughs> like, what's the fucking point of this? Like, yeah, gotta luck. get that moist critical, gotta respond to his stream where he casually checked out a video quickly about like, why? Why wouldn't you want to yeah. go for, like, the most prominent art reviewers if they had the, these sort of perspectives? Yeah, because he's not an expert in this at all. Most critical, he's not an expert no. in this at all. He's just, he's just, he's a guy that's been shown a thing. So it, the, I mean, he's already, this guy's already, I think, made clear his motivation in going for him. But Well, we'll the, he wants to make a grander point about, like, propaganda seeping into the minds of yeah. the innocent or something, which is insane value as an artist. Robert Florczak paints faces all the time. They suck. That doesn't make his work any less bland. Wait, did they you say they suck. suck? They suck? I thought we saw several of his faces. They did not suck. So here's the problem. Uh, you made the critical error of showing us the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, do your lies a bit better, dude. There are better ways to lie, like not showing us the truth. Uh, Charlie gets really frustrated at the definition of the word kitsch because he thinks it's pretentious. Kitsch is, unlike art, a utilitarian object lacking all critical distance between object and observer. God, these people are so fucking pretentious, it hurts. He doesn't really elaborate, but I'm going to assume that he's saying that it's pretentious to seek meaning in art that looks passable enough. Man. No, 
I think he's no. saying that it's pretentious to give a word to the concept of not adhering to like uh, real life or whatever. I think he would he would respect the concept that you could have something that's abstract, but he sees I'm guessing kitsch as like an excuse, like a way to categorize it that escapes uh, criticism. Like if someone said Pollock is kitsch and you don't understand it, he'd be like, yeah, fuck off. I I understand it well enough. That sort of attitude. But I don't know, because this is all said very quickly in a stream, seemingly almost at random. He's looking for a fucking intricate view of the world that challenges thought process with a fucking jigsaw puzzle. Because they are more Like it doesn't need to mean anything, so why are you mad that it doesn't? Especially when modern art is just baby doo doo doodles and crayon. Thomas Kincaid, Robert Florczak, it doesn't matter. Uninspired art is uninspired art. What? That's crazy if you're Robert and you're doing all that stuff. How do we what find is, out if something is uninspired, is uninspired or not yeah. definitively? You have to know. Exactly yeah. Mean? What does it mean for something to be uninspired art, you know? Like, really and truly, if we want to delve into it. It would require that you have background knowledge about the artist. Yeah, you need... Yeah, you need it. You need knowledge you, you probably wouldn't have. have. Whether or not... Yeah. Like, in most cases, you're not going to have the knowledge. And then if he was like, you can tell something inspired or not just by looking at it, I'd be like, okay. You, oh well, yeah. No, we already know that you can't because of the um, the the w white pieces of paper one that he showed. Like, in order to even know that that is a piece of art, you have to know that someone painted it. Um, some people said that it, kitsch is uh the reverse, as in like kitsch was what remained good while everything else was f not non kitsch. I don't have uh, I, I, it's not a word I'm that familiar with. I was just going for what I saw on screen. What does Thomas Kincaid paint? Cottages? God? In the form of, like, light behind a cottage? Just like with Robert's little apron trick earlier, Pollock's work is often extremely misrepresented. He painted what hell looks like. This is, like, the real hell. Can you show us? It's just abstract well, dog me. shit that even a child oh, can don't... make. And yeah, if... Okay, Why did on. you not show me that I, thing? I, I... What am I to do with this if I can't see it? Well, Google's your friend on this one. Pollock, hell. What? It's... Jackson Pollock, hell. <laughs> like, okay, so he okay. painted hell, and apparently Charlie's reaction to this image was that it looks like shit that a child could do. Now, what do you guys think? Yeah, I, um, I'm, I think I'm with Charlie on this one. I think a child could do this, yeah. I think a child could act absolute. Yeah, hell is the fact that this is uh, probably an ex <laughs> insanely valuable... <laughs> Uh, uh, I would love to I, know what would happen if you showed that photo to someone, uh, photo painting to someone. What is this a painting of? None of them are going to say no, hell. I would say hell. Yeah, and he just, matter of factly, says he painted hell. They're like, yeah, like you it's... fucker, you lying <laughs> fuck. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. If you told me that this is hell, I'd just be like, oh. Well, so let's let's be real. <laughs> what are you gonna say after a while of trying to construct meaning for it? And you're like, well, the chaos. The um the, the, the contrast of the black and the white clashing. And you're just like, yeah, what else are you gonna fucking say? <laughs> There's nothing else to say. <laughs> the way that we the colors are different from just, one another know, is basically what about, you can say. We talked about arcane for like twenty five hours. We're, like, we're not gonna be able to talk about this for that long, okay? Or well, we I'm could, sorry. but most of it would start to be so disconnected <laughs> from this painting. <laughs> Yeah, so season six of EFAP is where things really started going <laughs> shit. I, and this is the thing, if you just hyper zoom into it, take like a piece out, recreate it, or like I get a child to try and recreate it on an apron, and then show him it, and he's like, that's a shit stain. I'd just be like, yeah, okay. You can just always tell the difference. This is a shit stain. There's a shit stain on our civilization. If you did oh genuinely God. try to talk about that painting for 25 hours or whatever it was, um, you would end up spending most of the time talking about the concept of hell. But if you don't know that that's what it is, then you're at a dead end. A whole bunch of what we would be talking about would be derived from other creative works as well. Well, I kind of, you know, yeah, like I regret now. Divine comedy. What I should have done ahead of time is to show you guys that image and then give you each five guesses. Awesome. Yeah. Like, as to Ooh, what yeah. it's called. That would have been great. Because revealing that it's called hell after a while would be so funny. <laughs> Especially if one of you had guessed hell as a joke. <laughs> a child had the I gotta same say, Zigzor is way better than Jackson Pollock. Um, I don't, I, I don't have much, um, how do I put this in a nice way? 
Jackson Pollock doesn't impress me. I, I kind of enjoy some of the imagery, I guess, in some way, shape, or form, but, like, if someone said, what do you think of him as an artist, I'd be like, I mean, you know. I don't know about <laughs> Jackson Pollock, to be honest. Uh, he, I've, I've known about him since, like, high school. He was one of the people that would keep getting oh, I know, shown. He's and... the one that gets pointed to as, like, the guy who does this, right? Kind of like the quintessential example of throwing paint at stuff and... And then people arguing yeah. about whether or not that's art. But I, I don't know much about him. Uh, yeah, I just... To me, he always seemed like a hypothetical come to life. <laughs> Which is fine. I, I, by the way, in terms of, like, there's plenty I don't know about him. I'm sure he's great. Abstract dog shit that even a child could make. And yeah, if a child had the same mental illness and chronic addiction and somehow got a hold of one of the giant canvases he would nail on the ground, spent hours upon that hours splattering difficult. paint to cover the entire... Okay, you can do as much of a delayed delivery of hours and hours of, but as soon as it ends with splattering paint, doesn't quite maintain that yeah. impressive nature, does it? Yeah. Like all of that, all of that preamble to the to the payoff of splattering paint. You like? Yep. It yeah. all leads to it all leads to the sequel trilogy. Kind of yeah. yeah. Stuff, you know? <laughs> but you don't understand. It, it took mental illness. It took injury. It took I uh, agree. life experience. It did, it did take mental illness. <laughs> I can stand on that. We agree. Again, how difficult it was for him to create and how long it took. That doesn't have any bearing on how good it is. That. Not necessarily. Well, it, it, would, it, it does to him, like his standard. Which again, that's okay if that's something you include. It's not something I include necessarily. Higher thing. Maybe Charlie's point about kids being able to do the same thing as Pollock would make a little more sense. Love him or hate him, he was really painting on the floor. You don't have to like Pollock I, I, like a child. Well, yeah, I don't understand what what Pollock's work. You can hate Lucifer, my favorite one. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> why? Why is it your favorite? Why That's is one it of my your least favorite? favorite? Exactly. I, why I is it think favorite? That I think that one's shit by Jackson Pollock standards. I uh, I like the other one that we saw more than that one. I don't know that green but images I don't, I don't, like this. The, the the thoughts I, I end up having, right? I'll have them and partially enjoy them, maybe, and then I'll start to question whether or not it's the painting or if it's me. As if, so, How first of all, one of the first things I went to in yeah. seeing this behind him was like cancer in the brain or something. And then yeah. it would be like, it'd be like, oh, is that the painting? Because like, and then you find out, of course, that it's it's called Lucifer. <laughs> You're like, okay, so it probably had nothing to do with what I thought it was. And so now, like, uh, I don't I know. I like Hell more than Lucifer. I think I like Hell more than Lucifer as well. I like Hell more than Lucifer, and I know maybe in the art in the art community that's a really controversial. Yeah, take. maybe. Maybe I'm sort of going well, against the grain here, but you know, I, I can't see Lucifer properly because this guy's face is in the way. So maybe there's a really important <laughs> bit behind. <laughs> there's an important bit in the middle, yeah. Yeah, it's a little picture of a little devil. <laughs> um, I should find... If there's like a list, maybe we can still do that thing I suggested, actually. Pollock or five-year-old? Because... I'll oh, see if I can find a funny one, actually. Hang on, give me a sec. Talk about something random, you fucks. Boy. I sure do like... Um... Okay, this one boy. might be perfect. What? what? Did you find something that is Oh god, is this is, yes, this is the one. Beautifully artistic. Okay, so what I'll do, obviously, oh, is show you it, and chat, and then I will give you each five guesses as to what the title is, and then I shall reveal it when all of you fail, because that is the only outcome. Is this a Pollock painting, or are, you not, are we not supposed to know? Yes, this is a Pollock painting. I'm not going to lie about oh. that. At least, okay. according to Google, it is. And according to Google, I've got the title of it as well. So if you, just to make sure there's nothing else that you see in terms of a stimulant, if you want to boot up the stream and just see the image, and don't look at chat as well, and we'll go one by one, each of you. And right, uh, i got to go to the stream? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I was the one that's on I, screen now. Yeah, because if I link it, maybe the URL gives something away as well, so I'm oh, just going to... Okay, I got gotcha. you. So I'm looking at the picture. Mm -hmm. That's we'll go... the... That is a Jackson Pollock painting. It has a title. Okay. We'll go, uh, we'll go Fringy, do you want to go first? And then we'll go, you know, you rags, random film talk, and then, right, you know, so again. Like, I... You get five guesses in total. Doing? Guess a title for this painting. And when you fail it oh, five dude. times, I shall tell you what it actually is. <laughs> how, do, where the f how do I even begin to guess? What, um... <laughs> well, we it's not Hell uh, or Lucifer. Those are locked out. Okay. Uh, that makes it, it easier. Is it, is it, uh, Oh my god. I can't fucking wait um, to tell you the name of this. Uh is it is it called um Nightmare? No, Rags. 
Um, I'm going to go with uh, Tar. No. Random film talk. So I genuinely had Nightmare written down as my first guess. That's <laughs> <laughs> their life. Uh, my second guess is Autism. No. Fringy. Okay. Uh, is it called Cold? No. Rags. Graveyard. No. Random film talk. Fear. No. Fringy. All right. Who's, who's been closest? I'd say none of you. <laughs> oh, God. So it's not uh, some kind of abstraction, then. I, I don't want to confirm or deny anything. It's just that none of what you've said so far evokes what I, I think the title evokes. I don't know. Just so to speak. Ah. Uh, uh, shadows? Nope. Rags. Spirits? Nope. Random film talk. Drowning? Nope. Fringy. Uh, ghosts? I know you said spirits, but ghosts? Nope, rags. Um, I'm gonna say, um, industry. Nope, random film talk. Smoke? Or, or, um, you smoke, go with that. Nope, fringy. Okay, uh... Uh, light bulbs. No, <laughs> no. Rex. <laughs> Let me see. Um, discontent. No. Final guess. Radiofield talk. Uh, I'm gonna just. I'm gonna move my eyes over and look at chat, and the first one I see is what I'm gonna say because I have no fucking idea. Uh, lives of people. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. That was a good guess. So. From from the Tate, this one, and like I said, I, I just when I saw it on Google, I was like, oh, I have to. So this is at what it's labeled. So I'm going to show you it instead of saying it, just in case I've got anything wrong here. It's in fact labeled Yellow Islands. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Sure. Okay. All right. I mean, you were close-ish with um, light bulbs. <laughs> Yeah, I saw the I saw the yellow bits, and I was like, I wonder if that's what I need to be focusing on. But uh, I would never have guessed yellow islands. Yeah, I went for something dark and sinister. Well, so and it's very intuitive yeah, because yeah. of the yellowish yeah. background and the way that the black cuts through it creates all the islands. That's ah, true. right. I see. Even though I the yellow it... that I'm noticing is definitely like not the yellow <laughs> of the canvas in the back, that's a different shade for sure. I thought it was interesting how all of us went for things that are spooky. Yeah. yeah, but maybe that's the trick. You see, your mind is so mm -hmm. fixated on the shadow that you can't appreciate the light. Because there's light even in shadow, you know, uh, even in darkness. There is... Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty. Yeah, so this is what I mean. It's, you know, you haven't read the books that I've read. You haven't been to the galleries. <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe, maybe one day if I go to a gallery, I'll learn about Yellow Islands. Uh, so, someone in chat, just quickly, imagine playing Gardic Phone with Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that would suck. Like, Jackson, how... Jackson, what is that? He's like, Yellow Islands, what? <laughs> <laughs> just every image would end up as just a mess of spaghetti. You can hate it, but if your reasons for hating it are, it doesn't really look like anything. Yeah, no, I know. I. That's like the point. Oh my god. Okay. I... Oh, okay. so it, yeah, it's it's okay. supposed to be shit. Is basically even, that's what this argument is. But even if that's the point, like I can hate something for the point that it was made reason. for. By the way, oh, him, also, like, yeah. he just, like he was, he it seemed like he was shitting on that other guy's paintings for what they were. Yeah, like, he disliked what they were fundamentally, but that's valid because they were uninspired. Yeah, because he said technically they're good. Therefore, he... yeah, exactly. He even had to concede that, but then still shit on them for what they were. But you're not allowed to dislike this for what it is. Like, yeah, I get it. I just, I don't pull anything from this. I really don't. No. <laughs> it's not really about that. Really. Look how much paint is layered on this fucking thing. Oh, okay. My mind looks like. Oh, it's the amount of paint. That's what your mind looks like. What does your mind look my like? My mind uh, does not look like that. I'm not a schizophrenic. You might need to see a doctor. Uh, if you, like, when I said it looked like cancer, and he's like, that's what it looks like your mind. I did say brain, but brain cancer. Head. I had to take a hot dog break. Anyway, back to Charlie. He has okay. this idea on stream to create a fake alias and sell really shitty art on purpose. 
I thought it would be a really interesting idea if I did like some dog shitty Damien Hurst Jackson Pollock style art under I a mean, pseudonym. I mean, this is and, a meme as old as time, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's funny and uh, it works. What if, what, what, what if I pretended like that I intended to make it look like, you know? What if I was just memeing? What if I was trolling? And then just had like a really wealthy person I know buy it for an absurd amount and I just give the money back, obviously, but making headlines. Which a lot of people have already done. Prager, you actually did a... Ah! That's an interesting idea, by the way, to go a step further than simply making it and hoping people buy it, but to have a friend, value. yeah, pay all the money, give it back to them, so then other people are like, whoa, you're buying... Oh, that that's a that's a Charlie Moist yeah. Critical original. Look at it. Oh, wow. That is... Yeah, mm-hmm. That's, that's something really lazy version and we're gonna watch that now don't blame okay. me blame charlie i didn't want to watch any more of these why it's modern your, artists oh yeah okay. yeah no you didn't want to watch i want to make this video okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, bad with will wit oh will wit moment classic will wit the intern from prager you that looks like he's got nothing going on in his head i mean maybe maybe gloss houses you know i don't know he, Dennis, a two-year-old, and a five-year-old made a bunch of paintings, and he tried to get people to look at them on the street. Will is trying to trick people in public. But the first thing you will notice- Wait, I thought you said you can't trick people with that. You can't trick- Yeah, <laughs> what do you mean? Hmm. About all of I guess you can now. Is that they all look like ass. Oh, I can make that. Oh, yeah, can you? This is what you yeah. made. Every time someone says, Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa, wait, what are you implying? Hang on. That could be considered infinitely better or similar or worse. It's all up in the air. It's very much subjective. You can't just declare that this is worse than Pollux, can you? Can you? Um, better and worse? Uh, Careful there, yeah, buddy. Like, wait man, a moment. This... The, the flip, the, just how quickly he just <laughs> breaches his own system. <laughs> Like clockwork, man. It says modern art is like lazy and anyone can do it. I think back to these paintings. The video very quickly derails and it becomes less about trying to compare their art to modern art and instead about trying to make people look stupid for commenting on it. What do you see in this one here? A dagger at your back, apparently. It looks like a long sword dripping down the side. So this kind of represents like Japanese masculinity. This is funny. Like, I mean, I, uh, I think that the, the way to top this out would be a, um, a word randomizer with a little thing in his ear where he has to connect the, uh, meaning of the piece to whatever word ends up coming out. Yeah, um, that's, that's... Do you remember, um, oh, fuck, it's like a really funny clip. I think it's an interview for, that relates to, like, Mission Impossible, but Simon Pegg is saying words into someone who's getting an interview like the joke of it is that she's getting interviewed and she has to use the words that simon Pegg says oh uh, yeah yeah yeah. i remember, I remember laughing my ass off for that because it was funny as fuck but i can't remember what the context was someone in chat might but i'd love that in a sketch where you have to take you know the painting of some two-year-old and then someone puts words into your ear and you have to justify that that's what the painting's about uh, it sounds like it'd be really fun kind of like how these shapes are kind of <laughs> <laughs> like, this is a Japanese influence, and then it's all kind of all over the place. Like, Will Wit, more like fucking wet noodle. Couldn't even come up with what the paintings are supposed to fake mean. It's a meme, dude. Oh, that's the whole... It's a meme. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> also, what do you mean? Is his interpretation incorrect? Yeah, why can't, well, well, why can't he struggle yeah, you know to he's explain lying? it when it's so dense with meaning? He's, he's struggling to get it well, out. Well, the thing okay? is, is that it's, for him it's impossible, right? Because the fact that it was produced with a cynical purpose, I suppose he'd be like, well, you know, I wouldn't even bother trying to like do some analysis like I would of Jackson Pollock's thing because it's obviously bereft of merit or value. But the only reason he knows of the context is is because he knows he's familiar with the video that they're in. If he was well, presented sure, with would... the videos without the context... But the thing is, is that that's, uh, his approach is that he needs the context always, right? He yeah. has to always have it, and that's an, like, inextricable component of his analysis. It almost, to me, seems like his mind is made up before he even sees the art. That there was, there was no potential art that we would have just seen five seconds ago that he would have gone, actually, yeah, that one was all right. Uh, well, yeah, we've seen that throughout the video, right? Like, he's got a very strong bias, uh, against and for, depending on who made it? Not not yeah. the law, just who made it. 
He had all the time he needed to figure it out, and he couldn't figure it out. He just didn't come up with anything. Will tries to convince these poor hostages that there should be some kind of, like, artistic hostages. standard, and none of them are really buying it. Do you think there are standards to art? Um, no. I think that it's just expressing yourself, and everybody's expression is valid. I think every. Um, the problem That's is something that, that people say before they think about it at all, really. Well, but she might be correct if she thinks the question is what makes art art, and if she if she, if the question is just what you know, it sounded like he was asking what makes it good or bad. But the thing is, the problem is standard. What standard needs to be achieved for art to be art? And then she's like, oh, just expression. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of ways that that could have been interpreted. I don't know if she thinks there's no such thing as quality in art. There's just art. Not sure. Can't tell. Everybody has their own personal standards, right? But do you think there's like a higher standard of like what art should be or what things should look like, you know, in more sense? No, not at all. And then he does the big reveal. Oh, guess what? Kids. Did kids everyone have that opinion or just some people? I mean, it's, it's a normal opinion. I, I think a lot of people wouldn't want to say like art should look a particular way um, without further context. You know, like when you tell them, should life drawing be accurate to life? They'd probably be like, well, Yes, I guess. Yeah. Oh, but like his art broadly, you probably yeah, when don't you want say, to much. This is what I mean. I don't even know what the, what's the answer to the question, what should art look like or what should art be? Uh -huh, You're like, I don't well, even know what yeah, that that's that's an incredibly complex question. These incredibly If I told you that these were done by children, what would you think? I'd believe you. <laughs> believe it? Yeah. It would be so great if you had a Jackson Pollock painting among those. Ooh, yeah. Okay. There you go. They were. Take it to the next level. Uh, even though everyone already, already kind of knew. If I wait, but what? How does that help you? How does that help you? What do you mean they knew? They could look at it and they could tell. Uh -uh. Mm. It must not be very good. I no one looks at a good like painting and think that a kid did it. Yeah, we weren't looking at Prager. You guys paintings and thinking this was done by a child and it got put on the fridge like those were really good paintings. <laughs> However, if it were, we'd be like, holy fuck! Holy <laughs> fuck! Yes, that is true. And it was so objectively embarrassing that I already had to edit it down. I'm going to be honest with you. What you showed me was kind of interesting and funny. Um, I don't. The problem is like when they make a video that's supposed to prove like modern art is bad and that there should be standards, and then they come across someone who says, "I don't think art should be standardized in any particular way." I don't think that means the video like failed or is bad. That's just yeah, you got a genuine reaction from someone. That's fine. I mean, I don't watch Prager U, but like the clips he's given. He makes it sound like we're watching one of the worst channels on the internet, but they're mostly fine, at least the ones he's shown. Down to like three minutes, and it was still this cringe. I would just not. It wasn't post really it, cringe. <clears throat> I don't think so. You're I, I cringe. <laughs> I just wouldn't post it. The comments in this video are really funny Shouldn't because they're so this. clearly biased against modern art that they're clinging on to anything they can to make their point. Does it make you feel any kind of way? Uh, confused? Give that kid a medal. I'm a classically trained, realist artist. If you guys only knew how hard it was to learn the skill of the masters because of these people. Oh. It may or may not surprise you to know that the realist classical ateliers and academies are not eligible for accreditation and therefore promising students cannot receive loans or grants, yet at a modern art school you get a free ride for edgy period blood paintings you did your senior year of high school. That's Again, true, we that never sucks. Yeah, that, wouldn't that suck if you worked your ass off to be suck. able to yeah. be like, of a high standard, within the standard of maybe realism, whatever else, and then you're beaten out by someone who splattered period blood on a wall? Yeah, if that's true, that absolutely sucks. Yeah, it fucking that sucks. Suck. That'd be awful. Never talk about, like, real examples. It's just, like, gross. Oh, no, those... <laughs> there my... are real examples, though. <laughs> it happened in my fine art course. Um, there was a girl who a did... I can't remember if they were vagina drawings or sculpture, but the um, they were... It was either period blood or used tampons that were in the thing, and I remember being like, okay, okay, uh, I'm gonna go back to, I was drawing characters and cartoons and stuff, I was, uh, illustration and uh, life drawing, I, I liked them, that was more fun, and photography, I liked them too, it was a foundation course, it was fun, but that was a bit much for me sometimes, and if someone said like you're not looking at the meaning of it, I'd be like, no, no, no. I, I was following, I understood, she explained it as well. Uh, it's just yeah, not I my preference yeah, for art, that's all. Yeah. And I do think it's more impressive to draw photorealistic with, like, a pencil. That that blows me away compared. Gross shit that they make up. That never happened. As it a... does happen. Why are you pretending like it doesn't? It that's does, really... it literally does. We were you, just this talking... happens all the damn time. Not an hour or so ago. the banana tape to a wall. The shit in a can. 
That yep, was brought yep. up. <laughs> Why are you pretending like this doesn't happen? It totally does, and it sells for hundreds of thousands, if not millions. As an artist, I think modern art sucks. I have standards. Cutting to a little later on in Charlie's video, okay. he's insulted by an art critic's assessment of King Kate's work. We think it's stupid art for stupid people. How can you, like, like, how do you read this and not just get insulted? Like, reading pretentious garbage like this is so upsetting to me. The quote they used was stupid art for stupid people, which is definitely harsh, but I think King K definitely deserves it. He made simplistic, digestible, accessible hotel art because he knew that hotels and grandmas had to put something on their wall. He ch Um, I, I don't... I, just, I guess I just don't care that much. Like someone saying that the Kincaid stuff is simple and unchallenging or whatever. I'd just be like, okay, it's still pretty though. And probably took a decent amount of skill to make, so I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like it's, But it's something more than he usually gives. So I'll give him that. Even though it's not him, it's he's reading the comments, I guess. Churned out hundreds and hundreds of paintings and recreations just to make money. But isn't that what people hate about Modern artists, they just churn out whatever, they, they just throw- Not quite, it's that the, the pieces are making so much money when they don't feel they deserve to. Very straightforward reaction a lot of people have. Throw it on the- It's not like- I don't think anybody takes issue with people making money off art as a concept in and of itself. Well, some people might, but you know what I mean. Canvas and they sell it for all that money. What do you think this asshole was doing? They hate that Picasso can churn out a hundred canvases a day. Abstract art is so much more challenging. Well, to don't you think it owes to the the, the nope. amount of skill and technical, you know, like like the, how in depth and difficult something is to do if you can do it a hundred times a day and you're making like canvases of art? Like, isn't that you know, like if someone said if, if Michelangelo got hired to paint that ceiling in the Sistine Chapel? And after two days, he was like, well, I'm done. Like, wouldn't that worry the fuck out of you? Also, he, he, he's like said that an art piece being challenging is automatically like, super, like a better state of being. That true. I don't know. I don't know. I don't see why it would be. I don't I think Picasso I mean, can it turn out. Is it more challenging to have a sad face than a happy face? And does that um, mean the art piece is better uh -huh. now? I don't know canvas is a deck. Abstract art is so much more challenging to conceptualize and actually execute. Unlike a tree that Thomas Kincaid painted. They... Why, why that looks you... really fucking good. I don't understand how you could say that, like, the tree is easy. The abstract art is challenging. I just don't. That's horseshit. You're sitting here, like, I can't imagine the level of skill it would take to paint this. And he's like, oh yeah, but you can't even see the brush strokes on this white box. Look at the glow on the, on the light. I know he's talking about the tree, not the glow, but... On the ice. On the I like how cozy it, it is. Unbelievable. I find that how unbelievable it is how just quickly he will throw out these incredibly dismissive sweeping statements. Yeah, but it's not while challenging. Also while also presenting himself as being the enlightened, nuanced art guy. It's so I can't annoying. Even... It's like he's, he's gone backwards. Like it seems like he's actually gone backwards in terms you are of the past yes. compared to the way that he described himself before. This is just a backwards way to look at art. To, to yeah, like just constantly chill. denigrate. And he's spending the whole chill. time telling us how to think about chill. it, too. You like, know? like, I think that's the overwhelming vibe I get from this. Chill out. Like, just chill. Like, stop, stop freaking out. And, and, like, and, and being so, um, like, knee-jerk sort of responses whenever you feel challenged on your perspective on modern art. Why is it so relative, you know? Why is, it, why is it so relativistic? Like, all of its- wait, is that- that's not the right word. Why Despite is it so this, relative? Is so Charlie I mean. is still mad that people pay millions of dollars for Jackson Pollock paintings. Makes sense. And then, of yep, course, this, we think it's too. stupid art for stupid people, yet people paying millions for Jackson Pollock's absolute trash. The, like, <laughs> four people that have ever been able to do that. None of which were really- Huh? Been what? able what to? Is your his point is that it, the fact that it is worth that much seems absurd it, to him. It, it, that is, it doesn't even need to be true, necessarily, that it's happened. In theory, it would, it would be enough. That, that Pollock could ever sell those for a significant amount of money is offensive to him. That's, I understand that position. It's so straightforward. And then the fact that he's like, that's only happened like four times. Like, what? what? It's <laughs> like, happened four times? Apparently, yeah. I don't have no idea, but the point is obviously very clear. It shouldn't. That's what uh, Charlie's position is. Don't 100% necessarily agree, but I can understand why it would annoy someone if they see that happen. Really worth anything until after he was dead. Unlike Kincaid, Pollock so? made Lucifer for a friend and gave it to him as a gift. What does this have to do with anything? It doesn't. 
Wow, thanks for Lucifer. <laughs> and now it's on display at the at Stanford University. Okay. Kincaid's work, on the other hand, wow. is meant to be purchased a lot of times, actually. So? Which oh, this is so annoying. What does this have to do with anything? Well, uh, you so... see, Pollock made it for the sake of, like, an emotional, artistic intention, while Kincaid made it for sale. So there's oh, less okay. challenge and meaning in Kincaid's work. Just, I guess, intrinsically. I don't know. He's saying all of this like we should just agree with the, like, underlying sentiment. Alone he, drains yeah. his work of a lot of soul and... Yeah, see, there's no soul in Kin Kincaid's work. It's, it lacks soul. External meaning. Not that Santa's Night Before Christmas is all that engaging of a painting. Oh, either. fuck off, man. What the hell? Like... <laughs> You can't just draw Santa in a snowy place in a cabin and expect me to say that the art is meaningful. That's ridiculous. No soul. Charlie stops watching this video to start looking up modern art examples at SF MoMA. I am curious, what gets seen in high-class museums now? I'm pretty sure all of it is that super trash thing like a banana tape to a wall or like Banksy's balloon picture, stuff like that. Let me see. Well, I mean, even on just their homepage, like, their art collection here is kind of ass. I think it's good <laughs> to show kids stuff like this. I mean... Yeah, that, 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 like that, that has nothing to do with what Charlie said, necessarily. Yeah. Not like Charlie said, like do not show children this. Is that better or worse than the three blank canvases? You asking me, or do you, are you approximating what he oh, would I'm, think? No, 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 I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what you guys think. Um, I don't, I guess, I'll I don't take know. I'll take this over the blank ones, I guess. Yeah, this is something. At least it's like they had to work minimally to get this hung up, I guess. I'm uh, uh I feel like this would be an example to point to of how much work I'm doing that I don't think is there. I feel like I see a platypus, maybe a stingray. I see some animals here and it's like, yeah, but that's my brain fucking with me. <laughs> that's not, that's yeah, not that's painting. not. Yeah. Wait, the, the soldier said, "Doesn't this kind of look like the ones from the Prager video?" The kid it drawing. Does. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, it does. Really. But you know what? Like, yeah, this guy, this guy would see sure. right through it. He could tell when it's done artistically versus when it's not. Guess, this look, looks like something that would go oh, on man. your fridge. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, looking it does. at like a picture of I might demand higher standards this for my three children. panel painting, uh, <laughs> maybe not my favorite, but also SF MoMA is full of tacky lame shit anyway. It is a seven story museum, it has everything, it's for full everything. of tacky That's lame shit. Oh my god, that already looks really impressive. I was gonna that. say, why do we hate this now? So, kind of their thing. Yeah, if you get a chance to go, you really should. It's a great experience and it helped change my It's full of tacky lame shit. You should go. Okay, this, this, I think <laughs> this is one of those rooms I wouldn't spend too much time in. I don't know, it depends what's in it, I don't know. I mind yeah. a lot about modern art. I think you would even change someone like Charlie's mind if he actually gave it a fair shot. But anyway, he moves on to some random website called contemporaryart.com, but instead of actually engaging with it or talking about what he does or doesn't like about it, he just dances around it and uses it as an well, example to say- You didn't talk art. about yeah. why you liked or disliked a lot of the things in this video, and no, this right. is scripted. You just said it was my favorite. This uh, is he my said favorite it flavor. Flatter. Flavor. He that that flavor. was the most that I think he talked about, uh, uh, that and criticizing the, the Venus Meanwhile, you this is a guy on a stream talking about how modern art is kind of shit, boots up a bunch of pictures, scrolls down through them, and starts laughing. What, like, that's just normal <laughs> yeah. behavior. What you're doing is a full, uh, like, uh, coming up to 45 minute scripted video, and you can't even be bothered to tell us why you think something is good or bad beyond soul, flavor, style, spirit. Mm -hmm. All modern art is bad. You gotta really stop and digest this one. Actually, there's a there's a lot going on here. It's I like that one. I don't I don't hate that one though. No. That's uh, looks kind of interesting. That was a TV, Look, right? It's like it's all popping out of the TV and it's kind of interesting color scheme and there's a neat texture to it. Mm -hmm. Inductive, I think. See, look, I can do <laughs> art critique like he. Yeah, this, this yeah I don't I don't like this up. one so much. Yeah, this one's kind of <laughs> this one. Mm. If I... If I paid for a ticket of admission and I walked into a room that had so, this, I'd be like, give me my fucking money back. What I said about the, the film festival with YMS, I would only want to go to this if it was with friends, because I would want to feel insane. I'd be like, <laughs> let's walk right up to them and talk about them yeah, and laugh and then move on to the next one. That's the fun to me. It wouldn't be the pieces themselves. I need my tether to reality, reminding yep. me I'm not actually insane. You're tethered to reality. <laughs> if you lose it, you get sucked into the black hole. Like, <laughs> I can just picture, imagine the artist stand next to them, and they've got like the Kappa face, and they're just like, "Do you like it?" <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that they're right next to you, just hovering over your shoulder. You look at it, you look to the right, and their face is like they're right within, you know, like a few centimeters, just staring. 
Dude, and you watch like tell me about it. the guy who made this video is like, these are amazing, and the cab face artist is like, yeah. Man, now I feel like that a meme for like a potential, I don't know, like horror story parody cartoon would be like a, a, a realm where you have to find interpretations of the modern art or else you like disintegrate or something. You have to. You just have to keep coming up with interpretations of things that don't. And the longer it goes on, the more obtuse and abstract they become to the point that it becomes really difficult to keep generating new interpretations. I mean, that could... There's another Saw movie being made, so uh, that <laughs> what, could... The, the Saw trap is, present me with a really good interpretation of this <laughs> abstract art or you will die. Yeah. You will have your eyes plucked from you or something. Yeah, Jigsaw got pissed off with people like the guy who made this video and just plunked him in a room with a bunch of art and, and said, like... <laughs> You've got to you've got to tell me which of these uh, were actually painted by a five year old and which ones were painted by like a you know a painter. You must uh, paint well, me yeah, hell. I mean, it seems like it could be a it, it could be yeah that 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 feels like a game show was a you know Jackson Pollock or a kid like, yeah. in terms of a painting. The most art mu uh, exhibits I imagine. What does that mean? It's not. And listen, I don't even hate these paintings. Again, if I saw what they actually I mean, it depends like, on what it depends on what yeah art like because I mean I don't know that plenty I, of you can go to. Plenty of uh, galleries that are just filled with your more classical romanticism, you know, Baroque, all sorts of, uh, I guess, what you would, you know, what people generally think of when they think of, like, an art gallery. Um, also, I, I don't hate these. I kind of nothing them. I feel like they're awkward and weird. And then... I don't hate these, but I don't, yeah, like, what am I to do with them? Yeah, I guess that's to too say if I could... to hate. There's kind, of a, there's kind of a plaid, you know, pattern there that's kind of neat, but I don't know why we've taken blocks out of it. yeah. I hmm. looking at these, I just don't understand what I'm looking at. Which maybe that's no, the but point. You see, but... that's, that's the thing. You're you're a pleb. You're a philistine. You're not you're not enlightened. I dude. It re I I'm sorry, but I do feel like that's a lot of what this comes down to. Is it makes it's it's like a way to feel more enlightened and intelligent than the like the plebs. Be a lot easier to actually look like it'd be a lot easier to have an opinion on it. And I think that's why Charlie doesn't even have an opinion on it. He's just using them to criticize. He's just laughing at it because he thinks it looks bad. <laughs> it's very simple. There's nothing complex happening Isn't it here. It's so bizarre that we had two big Prager you like fucking videos in yeah. here and then it's like, yeah, here's Charlie talking on a stream just about why he doesn't <laughs> like Jackson Pollock and whoever that other guy was. Well, and to be honest, you're trying to connect them too with this loose <laughs> wire of like, you guys just like it when things look like real life. Even though he showed you us a clip where he explicitly didn't say that. Not like me. I I can't mm -hmm. fall for propaganda. I am above propaganda. We see all these losers like Charlie and the fucking PragerU people, they look at the artwork and then decide whether or not they think it's meaningful or well made. This guy, this genius, this non-propagandist, he'll look at what other people say about it and then decide if he... Well, but there is no deciding. He'll just absorb it, actually. But also a very authoritatively ordain that the works from people he doesn't like have no value, no inspiration, no nothing behind them. Yeah, but they're the wrong wing. So if they were the right uh, wing, or rather the left wing, <laughs> then he, uh, they, they'd be, it'd be great and good to go. Because there's something just infinitely hilarious to me that he's like, he had to be told what the meaning of these pieces were to like them. And yet he's right. like accusing that of everyone else, that everyone has to be baby fed to what they mean. It it is it is fascinating. It's it's just like good old cognitive dissonance. Is it cognitive dissonance or is it something else or is it just good old hypocrisy? I'd say projection, maybe. <laughs> like, like he's projection. He's doing the thing that he's saying everyone else is doing. Pretty You're sure. all, you need to be told how to interpret art, not like me. I know I'm. I, not I, only does he have to be, be told, he has to tell us of then. Already on art. Yep, that's right. General lack of self awareness. Oh. Mm. Quite significantly, yes. Criticizes yeah. all of modern art. He mentioned selling the paintings for 50 grand. Yeah, here's some canvases that uh, there's like some scribbles on it somewhere in there. I don't know, just hang it up, put like 50 grand on it. Someone's going to buy it. And we'll talk more about how modern art critics are constantly complaining about how much art costs when it's literally just a money laundering tool. I don't. He's, it's literally one, just a money so, laundering tool. Well, I mean, sometimes, <laughs> sure, but like not always. <laughs> Yeah, you could do it that way, I suppose. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just funny that like we can't, we can't just accept the point for what it is. It has to be something crazier or different. By the one percent, and it has nothing to do with the actual art itself. But where did fifty grand come from? You just made it did, exactly. It just, it's a big number. Fifty thousand dollars is a lot. You, you could do a lot with that. He doesn't think the random scribblings are worth fifty thousand dollars. That's the point he's making. Okay.
Very simple. You don't need to look into it so hard. That up. Yep. There is Most no record that this piece has ever been sold or ever had any offers on it. For all I know, every piece Charlie looked at. It's a joke. It doesn't need to have <laughs> actually happened. Didn't make any money. <laughs> I mean, the next exhibit is just a bunch of boxes and a sitting guard. Like, that is explicitly something to experience. Not okay, so this would be one if we were walking through and you guys started looking at it, I'd be like, are you sure this is an exhibit? Or are we, <laughs> like, should there be like a, are we allowed in this room yet? Are yeah, they is done? This, is this is a everything warehouse? still packed up? Yeah. And you'd need like a plaque saying series of boxes by, you know, somebody be like, oh, okay, okay. Thing to own. And I think that's an even better version of art. The only thing though is Charlie never actually looked at what it was. He just saw a picture of boxes and what didn't investigate any further. He's yeah, what that's it, what it is. That's I not hate necessarily this. what it means. Why is it that with uh, visual imagery of artistic works, I have to go and inspect how and why they were made instead of just seeing them for what they are? Why is that something I have to do? Why am I being shamed for not doing that? He's just looking at a picture of it. I don't think he knows what the whole thing is. And so he starts joking about what the piece could possibly be about. It's pretty funny, dude. It's a bunch of boxes. It just looks yeah. like a warehouse. So this is the thing. The reason it's funny is because if you've worked any normal job, got into the warehouse, you're like, oh, you're in an art gallery. <laughs> like, look at that. Isn't that crazy? What crazy meaning that is going to be attributed to it? Sorry, are his... No, carry on, carry on. Who is it? Like, you, you have to ask yourself, what's in those boxes? Are we purchasing too much? It, it's a display of excess. And you see how the boxes <laughs> aren't go. all... He's doing the meme, and it's funny. Yeah, yeah, it's a display of excess, yeah. ...lined up the same, there's a pattern to it. There's order in the chaos. And then you also have to wonder, <laughs> who packed these boxes? Is it Amazon workers that are miserable and you can feel the hate? <laughs> is it someone, like, maybe a, a home business with a family that packed these... There's just so many things you have to ask yourself. This really is a challenging piece. And then he doesn't look up what it actually is. He even managed to parody you. He doesn't you. look up what it actually he did, is. That's yes. pretty funny. It's like, ah, uh, this wrong. is invalid. But yes, do you catch that? Charlie the Ed said it's a really challenging piece. This guy, not a few minutes ago, said, like, the better pieces are the ones that challenge yeah, you. Yeah, that's right. Oh, my it's God. Funny. Also, are his interpretations way. invalid because he was wrong? They were yeah, because there's a correct he meaning. You have to line yes, up with what the artist right. there wants a... you to think, or else you're wrong. There is no such thing as good or bad art, but there is such a thing as correct and incorrect interpretations <laughs> well, by, of uh, <laughs> By this of guy's logic, meaning. this is like super life of the author. You you uh, are having look, the yeah. you are having the incorrect um, takeaway from this art because you didn't even look up what it really meant. The author has determined the way that the art is meant to be experienced and and um i guess uh meant to be i got what's the word the way that the art is meant to be like interacted with or what, what the takeaway should be from it sort of yeah in this case in i think anything, it would be experienced in any way that you think that doesn't line up with what the artist wants is an incorrect interpretation. Mm. Which is, so this is like the I mean, opposite of death of the author. This is like the eternal yeah. author. The et yes. At, at which point, at which point you wonder like what the point of the art existing independently of a big paragraph that explains it to you. What is even the point of that? Yeah. Yeah. Because what's, yeah, what's it, the point of it existing in a vacuum? It needs to always have footnotes. Uh, all of the preliminary sketches and just all of the, the writings a of the total the explanation, to top to bottom. <laughs> this is what this means, just so that you know how to engage with the art. Because if you're not engaging with the art as I intended, as the creator, you yeah, are doing right. it wrong. You've done it wrong. If you play a video game and you mess it, like Molly, you engage with The Last of Us 2 wrong, memeing about it. Being oh, yes, buggy. of course. I they broke didn't want it. You to play it that way. That's, yeah, you broke it, which is that's very cruel um and also um i like to i'm really surprised i hadn't noticed it before but this this uh genuine gentleman here his glass frames are hexagons mm -hmm. oh, which is are. very unusual i've no, yeah, i don't think i've ever neat. seen those pretty, that those are amazing um yeah oh, oh my god i just noticed he got shadow the hedgehog on the uh that's the other stick i was waiting for a while because I saw Dr. Robotnik there, because he was often facing that way. But now I see he's got Shadow the Hedgehog as his other Shadow sticker. Robotnik. What's his <laughs> other tattoo? It's like a 
like a leg with a chain or something? Can you know. see all of me? Walking? Something relevant. <laughs> uh, lady threw away expensive, expensive modern art. First off, I don't believe you, but second, <laughs> modern art she mistook for trash. No, she didn't mistake it for trash. That is trash. <laughs> oh, that's, I've heard about that, yeah. A cleaning woman in an Italian gallery accidentally threw away thousands of dollars of art by New York modernist Paul Branca when she mistook his crumpled newspaper, cardboard, and cookie installation scattered across the floor for guarded variety trash. The pieces estimated to be worth around fifteen thousand dollars were apparently intended to make viewers think of the environment we are obviously very sorry for what happened city marketing <laughs> commissioner antonio maria vasile said the gallery says they do not blame the cleaning woman who did not realize she had thrown away two works of their value it's Man, just fucking if, priceless if you're the kind of artist and you're having your your work mistaken for trash and thrown away <laughs> that's not that can't be very good on you the cg I remember, I remember it was because uh, there was a sleepy, uh, there was a sleepy cast episode where they were talking about hating modern art, and I remember that one of the anecdotes that was brought up, I think it was there was this guy who everything that he made, like the town that he lived in, always perceived it as being like amazing, and so one day because he was so pissed off about it, he like took a shit and then put it in like a glass cabinet or something, and then put it up on display just to push it as far as he could, and everybody thought it was great. Just. Shit in a can. It's Why not? I don't know. Is that true? Does that sound familiar to anybody in chat? Of somebody who got so mad that they shit I can the believe box it. And, then, and then put it on display. And then, let's, and let's, then everybody. What uh... you're highlighting is exactly what Charlie's <laughs> joking about. It's what we've joked about. And this yeah. guy's like infinitely offended by it. When it's like, just join the joke. There's plenty of good modern art. There's plenty of shit. Literal shit. <laughs> Actually, mean. He also doesn't understand even what he's looking at. So none of the jokes really land. No, they did. I liked them. It, was it, was, it, it worked for us. We thought it was funny. Especially the part where he said what they made with hatred by Amazon workers. Like that That sounds just funny. Like the, the it doesn't quite light up. It's like crooked with anger. Because Charlie isn't talking about what's in front of him. He's talking about what he thinks is in front of him. No, Charlie, it literally is what's in front of what, him. What do you mean? It's, I guess not literally. Wait, it's a sorry. Picture, can, we hear but... that, can we hear that one more time, please? Means And he also doesn't understand even what he's looking at, so... None of the jokes really land. But he does understand Charlie it. isn't talking about what's in front of him. He's talking about what he yes, thinks he is. is in front of him. Charlie, um, he's correct. I mean, no, he's correct. I mean, he was he was like, engaging. He's not talking about what's in front of him. He's talking about what he thinks is in front of him. Isn't that what I we mean, all do all the time? <laughs> isn't that what everybody does? Yeah, Just isn't that clear. what it means to like exist? <laughs> like like most things that you deal with are apparent. As they appear. Yeah, like, um, if we're gonna get this obtuse about it, like, how often do you talk about what you think is in front of you versus what you know is in front of you? You'd be like, why are you even separate? I mean, do we want to like... even wheel out, you know, do we even want to wheel out the whole idea of, like, perceiving the world, world as full of representation or any of that shit? This review is just wanna... cringy. Shut up. Like, it, why yeah. don't you just say, he didn't look up the meaning, he finds it shit when he may not have thought it was shit had he known the context of it. It's a fine yeah. point you can bring up. He's still making fun of how on its face a lot of modern art is basically just stuff. Silly. Yeah, a lot of it's very silly. It's silly. You're making a fool out of yourself. There's so many more boxes than that. I think there are wow, so many different that doesn't ways change to anything. this installation. <laughs> and I think Why is his more wrong? boxes than I thought. There are so many ways to interpret it, but his is wrong. Because his There's was more memes. Boxes, so it's better. His was memes, though. Uh, My yeah, interpretation sure. of this piece of art would change fundamentally if I knew that uh. there were more boxes. <laughs> Yeah. What he thinks is in front. So many Charlie, more boxes. you're making a fool out of yourself. There's so many more boxes than that. I think there are so many different ways to interpret this installation, and I think writing it off is a little aggressive. What are you scared? Too many boxes? He engaged I mean, with it. He did. He did the opposite of what he's saying. He did. Charlie looked yeah. at it. He laughed. Then he gave a bunch of jokes about what it could possibly mean. Obviously, implying that if he was given the true meaning, that he would find it as meaningful as his own made-up ones, because there's so much of a disconnection. It's insane, like, to the point where it almost makes the artwork irrelevant. Now, I'm not saying that that, that would go for any explanation behind it, nor would it necessarily account for the uh, efforts put into constructing it or anything. It's just that this is a very common sentiment, and it's super easy. It's not right-wing. It's just a perspective, a very normal one, like I said. I mean, the fact that the boxes are filling a synagogue is significant. Charlie didn't even know that, even though- Well, and the synagogue is on Earth. The thing about Ooh, that. Wow, and Earth is part of the cosmos. Allegedly. Oh my goodness. Is that what you know or what you think, Rags? It's what I believe to be true. Oh my no god, we've added a third what one. Favorite. What we know, did... what we think, and what we believe. Yeah, did you choose that though, or do you... Ooh. Uh... I choose all the things I believe. Ooh. 
regardless of context. Ooh. That was he was written. Like, but Charlie was still so mad at the picture he didn't even like see. He was laughing, dude. He was, he was big. Nah, was. He was big mad. I don't even care if he was mad. Whatever. Who cares? <laughs> That's not even critique. That's just refusing to engage with art. Charlie is getting. It's not critique, it's refusing to engage. What if you just don't buy the engagement that you're told to... Isn't this what he was talking about at the beginning of the video? You're telling Charlie how bit. to engage with it. You're yeah, babying you're him. That's him not a very... You're, he's engaging yeah. with it is wrong. You told you're us that's bad and conservative. Stop being a conservative, sir. You're you ruining being art. a bit of a conservative, my dude. I think you need to chill. Mad at this art because he doesn't understand it. And uh -huh. that's not, yeah, that's that's the key. We don't understand the art. <laughs> when someone presents like, to you just like a me. shit in their hand and they ask you to sniff it and you say no, <laughs> it's you not understanding. <laughs> you just don't get it. If you got it, you would really, really appreciate it and admire Sniff it for what it, it is. You just don't understand it. Sniff it. Not even a neg on Charlie. He admits that he doesn't understand it. He doesn't get it, and he's not. Trying to, so no wonder and he's still you're engaged. Not trying to. I just, I find it funny he's that his equivalent trying of trying to. is looking up the meaning as according to the author. That's what trying to understand it is. <laughs> trying is accepting. I think that's so lame. You know. But that's his recommendation for all art. Imagine like just you watch a movie or you read a book or whatever else, and you immediately go for like anyone the, the author's breakdown of exactly what all of it means instead of just thinking about it yourself, even briefly. Like, that's his recommendation for all- that's how you- he sees art as a, um, uh, like, like a, a thing to be completed. Mm. Uh, which is lame as fuck. I am all for analysis of artworks that I love and hate and even feel neutral on. Um, but I just don't like the idea that that's, like, the companion piece that you must consume after the art in order to understand the art. I think that's bullshit. Frustrated. You have to try a little bit. In the comments of all these videos, you see the same like NPC talking points stuff. Like if you have to explain <laughs> why art the NPCs, is good, plenty not like of classical me. art nope. still needs an explanation to make sense. It's called context. You can appreciate. Wait, this wait, what do you? What? Uh, sorry, what do you mean that you need an explanation to make sense of like? What does he mean by that? Like NPC talking points stuff. Like if you have to explain why art is good, plenty of classical art still needs an explanation to make sense. It's Give me an example. To make sense, what does he mean by that? I don't know what he means by make sense. Because if we see like a painting of just a sailor in a storm or something, he's like, yeah, but you don't know what the storm, it, you don't know what the guy's trying to do, you, you can't make sense of this. I'd be like, I mean, what do you mean I, I can, can? I can make sense about using my own brain. When there's just like a circle and a dot and then a stick, and it's like, well, yeah, I'm going to need someone to tell me what the hell this is supposed to be. Like... And you, you know, to make sense of it. But yeah, guy in boat in storm or whatever. making the argument that, like, oh, yes, those dumb conservatives need to be told how to interpret art. And now he's arguing and we he need to be told for all flatly, of art. Flatly admits that for all of art, you need, which you don't, by the way. No. No, I, I, I like I said, I, I take issue fundamentally with the concept that uh, art is like to be experienced and then, uh, you know, understood by watching, reading someone's analysis of it, mainly the author, and then. You like I have it's the Blade Runner shit with with Chris Sugman. I have the correct understanding now. It's like no, can you? Yeah, I, I would prefer right, yeah. you encourage your own interpretation before locking yourself into the author's interpretation. Mm -hmm. And also, I'd step up for a moment. But um, one thing I'm wondering too is it is it really worrying that he hasn't told us how to actually interpret the church art box thing? Because he said he didn't look even up? look up what it really supposed to mean. No, we uh, have Charlie to look didn't it up. engage with it. We have to look it up. Because I'm trying to look it up, but well, I'm I've got to um, like, find it. I'm hoping he's um, going to have a video to follow this video up to explain the art of this video as well. Uh, stacked boxes art it, you know? synagogue. Maybe called context. I hope you can appreciate the aesthetics of art without context, but you're not going to understand the piece it. without it. Starry Night takes on an entire... Uh, wait, do we want to right. guess? If you have the right answer, do right. we want to guess, so, maybe? So, let's see. Um, I found... This is the... Uh, it's called Merlin... Merlin? Merlin? No, wait. Merlin Carpenter by Delmi? Or Delmi by Merlin Carpenter? I don't actually know. I fucking hate that when, like, I can't tell if, is this the song or the band? I have no idea. But, um, yeah, I've, I found a, a, a picture here, but I don't, okay. 
Um, I'm gonna keep looking. Industrial. Or... F- let's see. Acute supply chain. Um, lacking. Let's see. Our our front Merlin out front Merlin Carpenter has parked a brand new bright red forklift and positioned its metal risers as it to hook onto the temple's arches and pull the structure right out of the ground. The gesture is playful, if not aggressive, in its precision. No, this is different. Inside, for archive elastique, Carpenter has stacked neat columns of thousands of unmarked cardboard boxes of identical size. Whoa. Large enough to accommodate an onboard Remoa or a bulk order of surgical masks. Okay. The uh, the exhibition was installed last fall, only days before the country's second COVID lockdown. And as the French museums and cultural spaces were shuttered again, this time for much longer than they had been the previous spring, Carpenter's boxes became portraits, in a way, of the suddenly sealed, inaccessible places, and of the digitally enabled mass consumption so many turned to in the meantime. Of course... <gasps> oh! Of course, an Amazon warehouse comes to mind when navigating the narrow passages between Carpenter's brown boxes. Oh, no. Charlie's interpretation was not only valid, but one of the primary ones. You didn't even look it up. Oh, my God. You didn't even look it up. You just just crossed your fingers, and you hoped, you lazy fuck. You hoped oh, that Charlie, he was wrong. Oh, Charlie, look at you. Media literacy oh, gone. Oh, Charlie was right. He <laughs> accurately engaged with the art. And Oof. you're <laughs> You told him he was wrong. And he did it without looking it up. Oh, my <laughs> God. He did it better than you. He arted oh better God. than you. It's a, it's a quadruple iron. Unbelievable. <laughs> Molding. This... Wow. <laughs> oh, Mold. God, Ethan. Oh, All you had to do was look it up. I just I just googled stacked boxes <coughs> art synagogue and it popped up. Wow. I like that yeah, even sure the enough, thing um, was like, you know, obviously Amazon would yeah, be a vote. <laughs> we, know, we know what you're looking for. Meanwhile this guy's um, like, you're not even trying to engage with it. So let's see. Um da, 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 da. remember that interpretation's uh, only valid until once you've been told it. If you came up with it on your own it's not. That's 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 all I'm learning from this. Right. Uh, it says, of course, an Amazon warehouse comes to mind when navigating the narrow passages between Carpenter's brown boxes, but so does a medieval labyrinth, a devotional path. The parcels are held shut by clear plastic tape, each strip of equal measure, and laid Whoa. down just as carefully as Daniel Buren's stripes, which, almost 25 years ago, covered the synagogue's arches, their outlines still decipherable under layers of house paint. Carpenter is still talking about painting, even when rendering it, almost disdainfully, invisible. Oh, wow. This was by Lillian Davies. A uh, great piece. Um, yeah, incredible. And it, it really is incredible. Um, yeah. um, that's actually incredible. That that's amazing. Everyone, remember this for the the EFAP to uh, the EFAP three hundred best moments. <laughs> remember <laughs> the years the off to a good start. Six. Charlie yeah, won the war a against a guy who doesn't know exists. <laughs> Charlie, uh, yeah, Charlie beat Ethan at engaging in art. And on that note, uh, Mr. Random Film Talk is going to have to leave us, slash, oh. go on to other places. But before he goes, <sighs> perhaps he can tell everybody what he gets up to in the world and why they should subscribe to his channel. Yes. Um, well, yeah, I mean, firstly, thank you so much for having me on. This video has been enlightening, if not frustrating. Um, yeah, so the next video that I'm going to be making is the fourth part of my Hobbit series, which is going to round out the whole thing. Uh, parts one, two, and three are currently on the channel. Um, it's going to be quite long, which I am told people around here are fans of things that are long. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know exactly how long, but it's it's going to be a chonker. Um, after that, I genuinely don't know, but that video is going to be up, I uh, would hope, within the next couple of months. Um yeah, and uh, if I've been told apparently that during this stream I've hit twenty five thousand subs, which is yay, was a, yay, which was a bit of a milestone because again I wanted to hit that before Tuesday because Tuesday is one year from my first ring of Springs of ah, Power videos. Not so, bad. Yeah, I don't know how quick that actually is, but it sure as shit feels quick to me. I, I have no frame of reference for this kind of thing though. But Congratulations, that was my goal. of course, and. Keep Thank it you. up. You'll be at 100k in no time, and, well, no limits beyond that, of course. Yes, uh, the sky is the limit, mm. as they say. Well, um, but, uh, appreciate hanging out with you, sir. It's been a good time. Thank you for joining y- us. 
yes, uh, it's been good fun chatting with you guys. And um, yeah, I, I hope you're able to survive the rest of this video. I'm sure you we bet we will. <laughs> We've been we're we're hardened veterans. Yes. Uh, yes. All right. Thank you, guys. See you. See you in a bit. Goodbye, bye, sir. Bye. Bye. Good. See ya. Makes sense. It's called context. You can appreciate the aesthetics of art without context, but you're not going to understand the piece without it. Starry Night takes on an entirely different. You're not going to understand the that again. Meaning isn't actually inherent in any work of art. Meaning is something that we imbue onto the things we create, we find, or we use. So this idea of you cannot understand something unless like like a piece of art uh, unless you get like the context behind it. I mean, then, like, what's the point of any piece of art that we don't have the context for? Like, is it inherently less valuable to us? Is it, like, if we don't have the context of its creation, then, I mean, what's the point of the art? This is what and, I mean. It's, uh, what if, it really robs the experience of <laughs> fucking contemplating art, which is seriously, like, a big thing to do with all of this, is it not? And also, art can have no context and be way more interesting than art that has context and it's, oh, it's, a, it's a, some boxes in a room. Well, like, uh, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. That, that could still be shit. But if I found, like, if I didn't have, if we came across, like, a Monet painting or a Leonardo da Vinci whatever or a Raphael sculpture and we didn't know the context behind it, I think I could, I think I know which one I'd find far more interesting and, and, and worthwhile of my time, even if I didn't have context behind it. I've seen someone mentioning music, and I feel like that really nails the point. Someone can like a song just for the, the tunes, like they just, just like it, and then they could also like it because of the lyrics and what the lyrics might mean to them. Then they could also like it for what the lyrics mean to the author as opposed to what they meant to you. Or you could like it for all of those things. Or you could like it because you listened to it while something great was happening in your life. All of these <laughs> are valid options. All right, Bayouin has some art. <laughs> I'm gonna My post God. It. It's, it's really something else. This is really something else. Oh, what have we got here? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Look at that chin. <laughs> this, this, <laughs> this is so topical. Look at the fire extinguisher. Yes. <laughs> yep, we got our fire extinguisher. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, Fringopolis, Longius, Birth of Ragus, and Random Thought. A thousand, to being a thousand, free. A thousand hundred dollar free. He's just trying to get rid of them, but this guy. Empathy. <gasps> oh, empathy! <laughs> I yeah. get it. That's Two and a half reference. million dollars. Yeah. Now this. Now this is art. <laughs> yeah, this will show those conservatives. <laughs> <laughs> I just, Ugh. I like the idea as well. It's like, so the fire extinguisher is a part of it. And the people who made it are like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I no, don't know. Like, we better leave it there just to be safe. I don't want to fucking destroy a million dollar project by accident. So, uh, let's just say maybe. Some good gorgeous. shit. Thank you very much. That is, that's really gorgeous. <laughs> um, hopefully Random Film like Talks sees it as well. Well, uh, I'll add them in our group so we can at least be aware. Anyway, wow. but yeah, because uh, you got the chin right. It's beautiful. That's quite a chin. Ah, oh, it's a good boulder though. That's a very good boulder. Look, the light from heaven is <laughs> shining down upon that magnificent boulder. God approves of this mm -hmm. boulder. This is his creation. However, the problem with this boulder, as you all probably have already guessed, is. It doesn't look like I can walk under the boulder, so... But so, even then, mm, still of, clearly yeah. better than the rest. Well, that, if you could walk under it, then it would be worth, what, like, 10 million? Oh, easily. At, at least double. Double the price, easily. Bare yeah. minimum. Yep. Levitation. Yeah. Empathy. Meaning when you realize that it was painted from an asylum. That was the view that Van Gogh had through his window. Learning about art can be really... That is awesome context to have, but you can also appreciate yep, it greatly really without that context. Yep. yep, I mean, that's definitely that's how art works. Context. But you're not going to understand the piece without it. Sorry, See, not... like, all I get from this whole video is his desperation for you to be uh, tracked into a particular meaning from a thing. 
which is like the whole opposite of his point, uh, as I thought it was stated anyway. It takes on an entirely different meaning when you realize that it was painted from an asylum. That was the view that Van Gogh had through his window. Learning about art can be really know, fun maybe. when you care. And it can- Learning about art can be fun when you care. I don't know, you've be been incredibly you. dismissive of lots of incredibly talented and amazing pieces of art. The impression so. I got from Charlie and from uh, Preggy U Man is that they do greatly care about art and they're frustrated with where it's gone in certain places, which I feel like almost everybody probably has that perspective. It's just in different formats and standards, yeah. right? I mean, if you were to tell me who between Ethan, this Ethan guy, and the Robert man, which one of them cares more about art, is like, I'd answer Robert in a heartbeat. Well, he just... what would happen if he were here right now and he said, you guys, you hate a lot on uh, Star Wars, Marvel. Have you even looked into how they were made? We would be like, what? We're judging the stories as told. And it's like, yeah, but do you know what they went through to make those? Do you know what they meant by the stories they were giving? You're like, um, unfortunately, I, I, every time we dig into any of them, it gets much worse. Like Quantumania, for example. And uh, it, it was just ah. stuck into the point where it's like, do you mind? Like, you, you know, what are you even trying to suggest? That, like, no art is completed in terms of your perspective on it until... You get every last morsel of exactly how it was case, made. It's insane. What if what if we have our hypothetical I mean it's probably not even hypothetical, almost certainly exists, our hypothetical painting for which there are no notes about it. We don't even know who made it. Uh, and they died. That's like, the, that's the thing that you know he said like it's it's painted from his view from the asylum. It's like what if you didn't know that? What if nobody knew that? What now? What if it were what if it was unknown? Is it like this work would be incomplete forever? How could you even know what it means for it to be complete and incomplete unless you knew the totality of the information that there is this to is know really, about it, a piece of art? It actually and how breaks could you the whole ever thing. know the totality of the piece of art? There's always going to be information that you could include that isn't typically included or that is lost to what time. What if it's forever. a lie? You can't know. Yeah, what if yeah, exactly. What if it's bullshit? What if he never went to the asylum, or that it was actually his brother that made it, and he? What took, if, what if know... he said? What if he personally told you? Me being in the asylum personally didn't influence it at all. It honestly didn't. Yeah. So it, it, it it's so annoying to listen to him say like that is the thing you've got to focus on and understand that that is the meaning right there. Whatever they tell you, it's like fuck off. Your appreciation mm. for art in general. Art is a scam is the next video we're watching. Wait, it what? starts out and Charlie's watching this video with like 400. What the hell is that? <laughs> oh, fuck off. Are they just like some <laughs> colored circles on a wall? And then you look at Charlie's expression like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mormon, I'm just like, I don't have the energy to conjure. Yeah, up I don't really like... have an expression for this. I'm just full I'm balls on a cliff. Motor. It's it's certainly not my my uh uh fringy Lisa or Mona Fringy expression here. I'm not I'm not very happy about this. I'm just yeah. you know the views from just, an art doing. gallery in Portland. And the first thing it shows are these acrylic half be. circles glued to the wall. Charlie is just a little too excited about hating on this one and misses the point of it completely. Which is a bummer because this installation but is he's, actually he's really watching cool. it now. We can it's see What's the point? Please tell us. I'm starting to tear Oh, This is incredible. <laughs> I need to pay a visit to this. Each disc is color coded and that color matches a frequency that the app the artist developed translates into a sound. This isn't a visual exhibit, okay. it's an audio exhibit. So Okay. So right. that's the audio equivalent <laughs> of the visual sludge where you're like, it'll make a sound. It's like, okay. Like, ooh, wow. Are that you reminds okay? Me of most things. Are you okay with me saying that shit? Is that okay? Am I allowed to have that opinion or not? And then well, if he was like, no, you have to experience it first. You have to listen to it. I'd be like, okay, fine. Fine, fine, fine. And then it just Whatever. goes... Boom. This is what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I want him to accept the fact that some people can just find this to be shit. Please. Yep. So, yeah, when you're bullshitting and not paying attention, it does look like you're pointing your phone at a stupid orb, but I don't know. <laughs> It's not an orb. What the fuck? What if? What the fuck do orbs look like? In He's your never world? pondered his orb. He doesn't know what they look like. He hasn't pondered or orb. That's like the only time I've ever seen something like that. Is that not? I don't care. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, <laughs> I've seen stuff like that before. Uh, <laughs> you know, blotchy pixel circle. I've seen that. Yeah. And then he makes fun of this big oh, room well, installation. Oh, is that? Which, oh, I yeah. think that. Done with that, I guess. Was that supposed to change my mind? I don't know, I was Rex. I, I was memeing know. when I went, ooh, but that's just what it does. It yeah. just goes, ooh. 
Not and my I'm like, oh, this is what okay, I mean. My I can whole, do that from home. My whole frustration with all of this is just, why are you criticizing everyone for being so normal? This is the most normal reaction to all these things ever. Most of the people who love this stuff are all very engrossed in the culture of it. Shocking. The video has fucking 400 views. What do you expect? This isn't Da Vinci over here. This artist's name what? is actually Jordan Rathis, and she has done a few of these. Wait, open did he room say Da Vinci? It was a joke. Exhibitions of ah, her work, okay. most of it yep, being art right. films. Not my thing, but when I looked through her website, she did an art installation on a steamboat, like an old steamboat. That's okay. awesome. I wish there were more pictures. Uh, okay, is it just awesome? th that in I... and of itself. There you go. Okay. Uh, all right. Is it just like unusual, therefore good, yeah. or? It doesn't like, you don't like need any more context. Hyper, he hyper values. Well, it's unique. Yeah, yeah unconventional okay. seems to be on its on its face, like just valuable. Pictures of it, but this is the only one. Listen, I don't have to be completely impressed by something to give it credit for creativity and originality. Okay. I wanna you don't have to be completely impressed to give it credit for creativity and originality. Yeah, I agree. I don't think anybody disagrees. You can think of something origin that something is original without it being impressive. Mm -hmm. Make it clear that this isn't Charlie's fault at all, but holy shit, if you go to the comments of this video, it's like nauseating. Ah uh, yes, I intend to simply spit on a canvas and sell it. Truly what a wonder modern art is. You can't say that's extreme when someone shat in a can. Yes, if anything, I would prefer the spit on a wall to the yeah. shit in the can. Again, not a thing at all, actually. You, what do you mean uh, that's not a please, thing? Okay, see, I feel like this is an honest video. He might open with, that's not a thing, but what if it were? For, for you, in your, your world, when, if that were a thing and it was sold for a lot of money, what, is that, what, do you, what do you think? Is there a limit? <laughs> you know? Is there something someone can make that'll make you go, wow, that's shit. Is it possible? How come, you can sh how come you can shit in a can? And that's art. But he's just like, no one would spit on a wall. That's ridiculous. Oh no, don't get Stop it. Stop being so ridiculous by saying spitting on a wall. Humans, we are the most intelligent species on Earth. Also humans. The dude who makes the resin discs is punching the air after he figured out about QR Why are you codes. reading yeah. like one like comments? Why aren't you reading like the ones the that have hundreds ones? of thousands of likes? Because they're probably be detailed. Many of you. We don't want to do that. Interesting yeah. or insightful or uh, funny or something. Completely misinterpreting the entire video. Not even paying Whoa. attention in Charlie's stream, well, goes to the video, wrong. leaves a comment on the original video without watching it, still getting it wrong. You didn't pay attention. That's so Damn. embarrassing for you. Again, it's not Charlie's Yeah, it's so fault. embarrassing. It's, yeah, it's, it's the worst thing it's that could have so happened. We're, we're the embarrassed ones. I feel so <laughs> embarrassed right now. I'm, I'm not the one who called Birth of Venus lame, but you know what? That's, you know, that's on you. The man. guy who made a shit in the cat, he's probably feeling pretty good right now. Yeah a really big audience and they're very unfunny so charlie moves on uh looking for a video defending well you haven't so much just made me crack a smile this whole time and you've clearly tried so i don't well, know if... i've smiled slash laugh when watching this video none of it was from him but you know oh yeah charlie yeah he made yeah. me smile yeah that was fun jackson pollock and then gets mad at the title of the video oh i already hate the way this i already fucking hate the title how to understand a Jackson Pollock painting. I agree. As if you're yeah. too fucking stupid yeah, to get it. <laughs> if I'm yeah. too stupid to get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. It's this is uh, really lame to quote, understanding, isn't it? quote Homer Simpson, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> I don't understand it, though. Is that not your problem? No. So yeah, I I saw Hell and Lucifer and they both sucked balls. Well, but like again, intellectual honesty. So if I just just can, can I just make something anything at this point? It's what we were talking about earlier uh, when I was responding to someone in chat. Just take any movie and just be like, this is about a thing that's just completely not what it's about. And then if someone says like, what? Well, I didn't get that at all. Can I claim they didn't understand? Am I allowed to? Mm. Or does it rely on you know what is in there? Provably. And when you say Jackson Paul, he's like, clearly this is hell, dude. I'd be like, you're full of shit, and you know it. Clearly this is hell, sure, buddy. Like, you have to be able to concede that it's a bunch of stuff and splashes and clashing that could be interpreted in a billion ways, which I feel was proven with the 15 guesses as to what Yellow Islands was. I don't, I don't mean to say that that's, like, proof that it's meaningless or anything. I just mean that it's, it's perfectly reasonable for people to quote-unquote misunderstand, or rather... There's nothing that's going to lead you to the correct interpretation as said by the author. Now is there. 
Mr. reads what the author's intent is and then claims that that's something that's very, very interpretable if you simply understand. Like, that's just the height of being full of shit. You can't look at Jackson Pollock's paintings and just be like, it's obvious, if you knew. Yes. You don't. I mean, can't you tell? As if these people would have any fucking clue if there wasn't a big... Yeah, this sort of means it's, it's not what it was supposed to be. It's not some kind of admirable position to be like, well, I was told the law, um, so I know it's like I get it. I think it's obvious. It's like, uh huh. Get it. If the video if, is one, if you had a if you had a really Jackson act. Pollock like gallery, you could just take all the little info cards and just switch them all. Yes, you could, and it wouldn't make a difference. And I don't buy that this guy would ever have noticed that. Like, if he'd switched Luther, Lucifer and Hell, would he really have known? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I still I can't blame him for clowning on it. Making a painting which is about the substance of paint itself, the fact that paint is liquid. <laughs> and when we see paint... Oh, come on, that's funny. <laughs> that's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> the painting is about painting itself, about the liquid of paint. You're like, oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, I mean, honestly, why even take it out of a can? The canvas normally... <laughs> <laughs> why? Own. That's so true. Why can't the paint can achieve the exact same thing? Why? Yeah, Tell me like, why. Why even, why even take it out of the wrapper? Just don't even buy it. Leave it at Sherwin Williams and let someone paint their living room with fucking it. Fucking kick it down a staircase. Have I not achieved the same thing? It is made to resemble something else, whether it's the sky oh or my God. a field. or Whether it's the sky, a field, or flesh. What? They're very commonly like mistaken for each things. other. Is Jeez. that a- what? Oh my god, look! Oh, no, it's just- it's just the sky, guys. I thought it was flesh! <laughs> flesh. But what Pollock does is just present us with paint as paint. But again, he just keeps focusing on- <laughs> Then he calls it Lucy. I... <laughs> so then who knows? Selling the art. That's not what this is about. He was the first person to see You know who- you know what else presents paint as paint? The fucking can that the paint comes hey! in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually kind of smart. Has anyone done that? If you just take. Has anyone done that? <laughs> Get it on the exactly. ground floor. Go, go, go. Like paint cans. Like if I put paint cans on like a table at an art gallery, could I sell that? The video keeps going and. <laughs> By the way, he said like he keeps focusing on the selling point. Yes, because Charlie has no issue with anyone making these things. Go nuts. He has frustration that they would be at the top of the art world or sold for millions or hundreds of thousands. That's obviously mm -hmm. his criticism. Frustration. And Charlie keeps saying that it wouldn't be that hard to make a Jackson Pollock painting. I agree. None of them have the energy, the spontaneity, and the sheer skill in handling paint that he has. Oh, very skillful. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like that's a lie. Uh, like just I, I, like the show, skillful show way me, he handles paint. Yeah, show me how he does it, and then I will concede if if somehow you show me something that I just couldn't even conceive. If I'm like, wow, look at the look at the technique he's using. I I couldn't do that. Like, show me well, it. Well, wait, we can we can look, right? I can go to YouTube, and I how when were these made? Where uh, Jackson Pollock making? I'll be generous and call it art. Um, how to paint like Jackson Pollock? Twelve years ago from the museum. Oh wait, a video. Of Oh, uh, oh! This is a this is a video of Jackson Pollock action painting. Oh, this is so exciting! Do you want to do you want to find out together? Do you want to watch? Yeah. Okay. This, sure. Uh, uh, yeah. Do you yeah. want to take a detour and just just so that we've got context and we know? Um, One sec. I'll just make a note of where we are. Thirty-five, twenty-four. Okay. Hold up, this may be copyrighted, so... I'll mute it, sorry. Yeah, you could you could mute your watch together if it's coming through there, so it's up to you. Okay, so okay. far... It's, it's so far, pretty, pretty good, pretty good. It's the way, yeah. The way that he's smoking clearly hallucinogenic while he makes his paint. Okay, that's... Yeah. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, the way that he dips and then splatters that way. He's got a very strong back, I bet. Oh, yeah. Oh. You could just tell. You could tell. Oh, that kind of skill. Oh, my gosh. Wow, yeah. Um, the doobie in his mouth, yeah. 
I mean, what am I even meant the to do with this? No, the closeness <laughs> of the, the brush to the canvas. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Gonna, so the technique. The now, notice how he holds so the can. It's so the spontaneous. The freneticity, okay? That's yeah, what that's he right. has. Right. There, yeah, that, the kineticism. The, uh, he, the spontaneity. The sponsor variety -ness. Oh, and look, he littered. Wow. Well, yeah, you know smoking, what? You right? should let it How just land on the painting, and yes. it can become a part. And yeah, that's of it. well. No, some of the smoke particles, you know, they imbued in the paint, mm. and nobody's done it like him. Nobody ever did oh, it like look that. Him go. Look at that! It's yeah. So controlled oh, and yet uncontrolled. God. Yeah, I know, and it's so really reserved just like the paint, and yet the paint bold. speaks for itself. You know, it's but yet he gives liquid. voice to the paint. He <laughs> gives voice to it. Yes. <laughs> Feel bad. Pollock this isn't this isn't Pollock's speak. fault. He was just doing whatever the fuck he wanted. <laughs> this is everybody else's fault. <laughs> wow. Look oh man, him, this is so inspiring. Look at him. I've, uh, I, Robert, I could Robert doesn't have shit dream. on this guy. Listen, uh, yeah. to try and be nice, look, do whatever the hell you want, like I said, but like this, you can't yeah, convince no, me fine. this it is fine. something that this like only he it could do or that was a highly yep. skilled thing that he's doing. Like, I, I just don't and believe maybe, it. And maybe there's a lot of stock to put in the fact that he was the first person to really do it like that, you know? Yeah, but the audacity like... you have to appreciate. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Oh, wow. This, this is a minimalist piece, you could tell by the fact there's not no, much it's, here. It's but the it's beginning not done. of the it's piece. Not done. Yes, this is just the beginning. You could tell this is the base layer. You could tell by the lines. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, this has not convinced me of anything. In fact, creating... I think it's further solidified my position that anyone could do what he does. No, he's creating volume in the spaces with the paint. You could see, yeah, there at the bottom. And then he, then he has the balls to sign it. <laughs> Whatever, I don't mind that part. I, I don't, this is the thing, I have no issue with him doing this at all. I have issue with the guys being like, this is something that only Pollock could do. This is Pollock's talent coming through. It's like, That's okay. Skull me. Skulls of all the great masters looking at him, going... What the f***, man? So, yeah, uh, that did not make me think that uh, anyone else couldn't do it, I believe. You know, uh, Jackson Pollock's most expensive painting is worth $200 million. I'd rather not know that. I'd rather not yeah. know that. You didn't have to tell us that, and now we know. So. Well, now you know. Wow. Yeah, uh -oh. million. That he has. Oh, very skillful. <laughs> Does he see how much paint is on this? That doesn't mean skill. Wow, there's so much. Wow, there's so much. There's so much paint there's because so the much amount paint. of paint on a canvas means skill. It, it's more skillful to put more paint on. Oh, damn it. It's co it's covered and it's really big. <laughs> like especially. You you even sound what? desperate oh, to his... explain it. You you don't know that's how to explain why it's skilled, so you went with big and lots. It, what's the Ethan is so stupid. He thinks that's a counter to what Charlie said. Don't you see how much paint there is? As if the skill is literally in just placing volumes of paint. That's it. Like you could, I said. You, an infant could knock over a can of paint. Yeah, kick it down the fucking staircase. It'll splatter everywhere. It's so skillful. It's, it's so skillful, it's indistinguishable from accidental. Especially if it's on the ground, he had to walk around. Whoa! Wow! He had to allow gravity to let the object fall. He had to walk around it. Wow! He had to. Can you imagine being so? This is indistinguishable from parody, around? by the way. This could be a Monty <laughs> Python sketch. I could believe this it. Is, yeah, this is like a Tim and Eric thing you'd see at three a.m. He had to walk around it. He used lots of paint. You know, a lot of people don't really rely on those two aspects when talking about some of the most talented painters in the world usually say, holy fuck, look at the incredible painting they made. He had to walk around and on it. He could swing his whole arm out and still be painting on his canvas. That's Whoa. So, so it's just because why, it's big? Why, why are you doing this? Why? This is what why I mean. Do you, why do you, why poor why poor Jackson Pollock, real? who's probably just having the time of his life splattering some shit, and then he sees this guy being like, what he's doing is unrepeatable. <laughs> and it's like, uh... That's unlike any other artist. Listen, maybe it's just me, but knowing this yes. like mentally so? ill, manic, alcoholic freak was sitting in like a barn, drunk, flinging paint everywhere in anger, gives a certain emotion to these paintings that I think is very valuable. So that doesn't I, counter okay, what Charlie said at all. I don't even think it's Charlie's not said it doesn't contain it's emotion. Valuable. If it's valuable to you, that's chill. That's, that's fine. fine. Right? Nobody's ever taken issue with that. He's talking about skill, and you've said no. This takes a lot of skill, and what no, you've cited you said, is that's not a lot skill. Of paint. 
I'll say it's a lot it. of this paint, is though. the part that is like the anger and hatred. Oh, how God. do you know? You don't know how yet. Do you know that's not a, if, how do you know that's not yellow islands? How do you know that this isn't a, like a, ooh, it's a lighthouse? How do you know it's not heaven? How do you know it's not him saying this was me on my vacation? Yeah. The brief time away from my family who hate me. This is what I yeah, love. this is grilled zucchini. I sure do like it. This is pasta. Oh, yum. How do you know? Because he told you? Because you looked at the law? Can I find, can I put, let me do this, like, Red Jackson Paul. Good luck. <laughs> You're gonna try and find this one and see the name. So, let's see, um, yeah, of course, all you have to do is you just have to look for the yellowy whitey ones, <laughs> and then this is the yellow whitey ones with some of the black in it, and then once you find those, it's, it's if basically. If you do find it, me and Frey, you should do a quick back and forth guessing the name. Um, well, actually, oh, I, I think I've, I've already got it. I've already Come found on, it, man. actually. Have you got, have have you got a know. name? Okay. Um, yeah, did you have it? I, didn't, I, I, it. I do have a name. Okay, so, is it one word or two words? Uh, it's five words. Oh, what? Oh, I know, yeah. I'm never gonna be able to guess that. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a hint. It was made mm -hmm. in 19... You cut out after 19. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, it's, it was made in 1950. That makes this so much easier. Yeah, that's that's your hint. It's an oil painting. Uh, I'll give you. A, a, it's at the Tehran Museum of Contemporary Art in Tehran. So. Um, the Grand Pizza of Death. No. Oh, I'm out of ideas. Oh, <laughs> uh... Flames. It's five words. <laughs> oh, oh. Flames, 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 the, the flames. The flames of flame land. No, but that's closer than Mahler. Oh, hmm. The Grand Pizza okay. of Islands? No, we're further away now. Damn it. Uh, dude, I... Nah, what is it? What's I also it give up. This one is called... Mural on Indian Red Ground. Oh. Which is the best one sure. yet, because it has red in it. Yeah, there's a base of red. The, so. title, the, the yeah. title has the word red in it, and the paint has the color red amongst it. So that's actually, like, the best one yet. Not bad. It lives only in this man. Oh, my God. The painting really tells you everything you need to know about the man behind it. Oh, <laughs> I never stopped to really think about... The gestures required for such precision. <laughs> like, it, it looks chaotic to the untrained layman's <laughs> eye. <laughs> the, the Philistines. But when you really take a step back, you can see the laborious nature <laughs> of each and every splatter. Okay, so now Charlie is like completely the misunderstanding pauses. the narrative of the video and is now implying the narrative that, like, of the video. Saying... How is what Charlie said any less ridiculous than what the video said? <laughs> well, what this guy said, fucking yeah. throughout the whole video. Let's be honest. Paul like meticulously planned every stroke. And oh, he's memeing, dude. We already know he splatted it at random. That's the <laughs> yes, joke. Yes, we know. Jackson, Jackson Pollux, the, he is the meme. He's the but splatter no one... man. If someone ever describes anything that I make as being akin to Jackson Pollock, <laughs> it's an insult. No one says that to be like, no one's like, oh, it's just like a, a Jackson Pollock painting. No one says that as a, like, a term of, like, uh, as a, as praise. In every little dip and drop, the entire purpose of Jackson Pollock is to not do that. Charlie gets mad again because someone is describing Pollock's painting style by painting with gestures rather than brushstrokes. You know, using his whole arm. His arm, it's who he is as a person that's creating <laughs> um, that canvas, that painting. As opposed to someone who paints using their body as well, but actually paints something. It is still... <laughs> <laughs> but actually paints Does, something. Do they not? Do they not think that like all of the great masters uh, of involve their bodies? And all yeah. these people don't like use their bodies and their entire arm to hold the brush, or how they might steady it up close to them, or the techniques of the brush. Did, did uh, how come you get to just be like, oh yeah, he just slung it everywhere. It's like his whole arm. It's like a baseball player. Them as a person creating that art, they make this weird distinction. They look for any and all fucking 
absolutely asinine explanations for why anyone should care. Even though Charlie's right. So, I, good God, I totally agree with him. I guess, uh... 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Really mad at this it. is desperation. Uh, it's a distinction that characterizes his entire body of work. That is why it looks like this. It looks like shit. Like, what he, yeah, what is he saying? I, I don't understand. Like the, He's saying that it's... the reason why it looks like that is because he moves his whole arm. Okay. A lot of artists do that. That's great. Yeah, like, I don't know. It's really strange. That you know what? Like, oh, yeah, you know, that's if, super unique that he moves his arm. If his brother Jeremy Pollock didn't move his arm, only ever flicked his wrist, and that was the restriction and created art, that wouldn't be any less valuable, right? Mm. Like why? And of course, alternatively, if somebody else now moved their whole arm, that wouldn't mean shit, because Jackson Pollock was the one who did it first. Pretty much. If I somehow put multiple fingers up my ass, sniff uh, sniffing them to get the, the fumes up there to really, like, <laughs> delusion myself, like, hugely <laughs> enough to find any kind of meaning in this, there's no- Wait, that's a painting! <laughs> Oh wait, that's a painting. Oh, he's looking at a painting. I didn't know. I, I legitimately didn't know. I thought this was like some graphic or something. Or I, 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 I legitimately didn't even consider. <laughs> that's a painting. This, no, I mean, this, this has been a roller coaster. <laughs> a reward in it for me. I don't get anything for it. I don't know why he says that there's no reward for finding meaning in art. The meaning is- We often find reward in meaning. Ah, yes. see, the, 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 yes, the meaning is- But that's what he's saying. The meaning is the reward. But, but yeah. I, I don't think that anything is disagreeable with what Charlie just said. The reward. It can change your perspective, make you feel seen, help you understand other people. You just have to be open to it. I've yet to hear a. Um. So does it? Um, is it always there? Even... There is never a time where the, there's a lack of meaning ever. It's not even necessarily valuable. It just. It just feels to me, like we actually are demeaningifying meaning, <laughs> because. It's everywhere all the time, and it doesn't matter where it comes from, just just embrace meaning. Simultaneously, Kincaid's work sucks. How boring. His Santa and snow images. Soulless. No flavor. Single argument other than non sequiturs and emotional language. Why it's not worthwhile to engage with modern- It's so fucking baffling to me, he puts up such a hard defense for a fucking blank canvas, but that he went so hardcore on the, the snowy cabins. Yeah, yeah, those are shit, and Venus sucks. I, but the man, this blank canvas is so amazing. Well, no, I mean, like, what's your end him. game here? Like, what's he up? Said that, he said that Venus was a masterpiece, but you know, it's dull and the composition's not. And it's great. a bit busy. Come on, it's a bit busy. Yeah, yeah. It's crowded, crowded. Turn art. There's literally nothing at the end of that tunnel. The only reward is to the artist that put no effort into it and sold it for a lot of money. <laughs> to people that have been brainwashed that to make them believe that it's worth that Damn price. Based. Does Charlie think mm -hmm. that the people who are attending museums are buying the art? Again, we're at this... Some of them, maybe. Sometimes, mm -hmm. yes. Just... Actually, yes. And ironically, Wh Whoever buys it is the people he's talking about. It's weird yep. part where we're mad that paintings cost a lot of money. The only person... No, he's mad that such no, little work and effort paintings... could be sold for such great amounts of money. Yeah, it's these ones that suck. And he's correct. Another basic human frustration when you feel a lot of reward goes to a place that doesn't deserve it. It's just a normal human thing. He needs yep. to worry about that. Is the bozo buying it? It just really isn't about the money. It's just not. And also, let's... I think it's exclusively about the money. If people were making random images of shit that he didn't, didn't go anywhere they were in their own house and stuff, he wouldn't mind. It's the fact that they sell for so much money. And they're considered great works of art. Those are the two big factors. Be serious for a second. Modern. And by the way, you've defended the shit out of Pollock's like greatness as an artist, so you can't say that that's not <laughs> happening. Art has yeah. money laundering happening in it, sure. But classical art is where the money's at. The most expensive painting in the world sat on a Saudi yacht for two years. <laughs> yeah, this little tea girl Jesus is the most expensive painting in the world from Leonardo da Vinci. It's not even. Yeah, you know what the hair. second most expensive painting is though. It's like another. It's. It's uh, it's an expressionist, like, abstract painting. I don't even know. Why is he bringing this up? It does not. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm it seems like it's, I, it seems when they're talking about the thing of money, he's, like, saying, oh, you think that these are too expensive? Well, so are these ones that are too expensive. The most expensive like, painting in the world from Leonardo da Vinci. It's not even finished. Hair does not look like that. Classical. 
What are you doing? Wait, what? <laughs> what, it, what are, what are, are we trying? Do you think that tearing down Da Vinci <laughs> it's is never... in any way? <laughs> what are you like, doing? Wait, wait, I thought, wait, I thought the point was it's not supposed to be photorealistic and well, portray but, so, reality as it so is. So I think the generous interpretation is that he's parodying those people, but he showed ah. us a clip of Prager U Man saying it's not about being realism. It's not about being realistic. He, he showed us that clip. Why do you keep saying this? as parody know, yeah. and making fun of them when that's not what their positions are. Why do you keep doing this to me? Not, I don't even know why he's brought this up, because it's like, Charlie's point is fundamentally that he thinks it's bullshit that these uh, paintings are worth so much, and he's like, well, yeah, but also, you know, money laundering, and also some paintings that are expensive aren't, like, abstract or postmodernist or... Which has nothing, um, it just doesn't address you know, the it, points at all. It, it, it doesn't mean anything. Classical paintings go for way more money, are owned by way worse people if they're not already stolen from the country they belong Again, Jackson Pollock, like, it's called number 17A. It's like the fifth most expensive painting ever. <laughs> like, there you go. I, I, think I don't know why he's saying this. I guess maybe on Jack average, but, yeah. He's, he's like, you should be mad at other things. Already stolen from so, the country yeah. they belong to. I don't think anyone's mad that Jackson Pollock trickled little dribblings of paint across a canvas, or someone submitted a canvas they bought from Michael's as art. <laughs> someone <laughs> submitted the one they bought. <laughs> it just, like, didn't add anything to it. They're mad about the price that it sells for and the people that defend it. It's never... There it is. This is exactly yeah, what I... Right, like, yeah, it, yeah, it, exactly. it was never about the fact that people do it. That's fine. You can do whatever you want. Really the piece itself. So, I guess Charlie's biggest problems with modern art are... The price it's sold for, and the people who defend it. Yeah. Even though he said in the last video that no one defends modern art. Art, like modern art is one of the most bafflingly outrageous things to me. And the thing is, I never see anyone defend it. I literally never see anybody online defend it that isn't also laundering money with art themselves. Like, it, it blows my fucking mind. So there you go. He's, he's included the people who... Uh, defended as those who are interested in the money aspect, and then his primary concern is the fact that they sell for so much. Still seems consistent. I don't. I don't see any contradictions. Yeah. yeah. The people, whatever. Are people I, th I think he's trying to solidify the point as nobody really likes modern art. This is all bullshit. Something's going on. Like that seems to be his position, though. I'm sure he'd say it's hyperbolic that there are I think people a lot who of do. People... It's just that he doesn't meet many people who say they like modern art. Which, by the way, I agree. I don't meet many people who say they like modern art. It, it, when I referring there's... specifically to those types, you know. Probably a lot of people who th who would like employ Occam's razor to think like no no this is some scam people don't actually like it's that reason that no no way I think most the most common reaction you get showing someone a Jackson Pollock painting would be like huh and you're like do you yeah. like it it's like uh, you know and then you tell them to and then you tell them it's worth sixteen million dollars and, and then like, they probably the start what? to not like it yeah and then they're like wait what. How, but, but how come my super talented friend on the internet, who is an incredibly capable artist with... How come they are struggling to make a living? He's like, well, yeah, that's the thing, man, you know? But I don't think he knows anyone in real life who likes modern art. I don't think he knows any gay people. And again, the... Well, was there... Okay. <laughs> was there a crossover between people who like modern art and gay people? <laughs> I missed that. Do you have to be gay? To, to, well, the hang on. Laundering money with art themselves. Like, it, it blows my fucking mind. The people, whatever, art people are freaks. But I don't think he knows anyone in real life who likes modern art. I don't think he knows any gay people. I don't think I, I do. Well, I, I can like it on occasion. Some of it is, like, appealing in a sort of way, I guess, but... I'm surprised like, you focused on that no... instead of the gay people comment, but okay. Oh, wait, wait, what? I was thinking of something. What, what gay people comment? Oh, My mind roll it again? Clearly wondering. Right, one more time. Make sure we go back enough, because chat are freaking out as well. Blows my fucking mind. The people, whatever, art people are freaks. But I don't think he knows anyone in real life who likes modern art. I don't think he knows any gay people. And again, the price... Gay people like modern art? He is seemed, the... the way he said that was that he probably doesn't know any gay people because he doesn't know anybody who likes modern art. Gay people? Is that a thing that gay people like modern art? Is I, that don't, a... I don't know. Is that a thing? <laughs> Gay people like modern art? What? It, uh, yeah, I... I don't know. If that's a joke or something, I don't... If it's a I, joke, uh... D d d I mean, the, the laugh factor comes from it being sincere. Because, like, I just... Uh, like, like, the yeah, fact that he's I, like, I you probably don't know any gay people. Because 
you don't know anyone who likes modern art. It's like, what? Only yeah, gay people like modern art. You're like, <laughs> Straight oh, people aren't too into it, you know? Bit homophobic of you to say that, but I don't know why you'd insult still... gay people by saying they like modern art. Plus four is irrelevant. Doesn't reflect on the art at all. It's not a dictation of quality. And the only people pay... Um, that's true, but it can still frustrate anybody that something like Transformers or whatever else makes shit tons of money. That's totally normal. Yep. Yeah. Paying for it are rich freaks with more money than they need. I would much rather have the money go to a museum where they actually spend it on public education. Some nonprofit museums do college grants. It's not really a bad thing when art is sold, generally. But what That's a way to put it. It's not really a bad thing when art is sold. All right. I find Didn't so he funny. also say that it's just money laundering? I feel like in the specific case of money laundering, it is bad when art is sold. <laughs> Like, is it that, that, that context, but... I, I, yeah, I, okay. Hmm. ...is that Charlie never actually brings up an example of art that sells for too much. He just keeps making up examples. Like, we looked at uh, Diana earlier, which was a potted plant that was store-bought and put on a shelf. And that was the art. I'm not mad about that. I think that's fucking great. I think that's a, a wonderful joke. But if I heard that sold for a hundred grand... If. If I heard that sold. If. He said he's making it up. If he, yeah, it's he a hypothetical. signaled that he was making it up. That would be upsetting to me. Okay, 100k actually. If it's such a horrible problem that is so frustrating that you start the video mad about it, why are there no examples? I think there are plenty of examples if you actually go to just like the top. Bring just did it. Well, again, like I said, <laughs> you look at the top five most expensive paintings, Jackson Pollock, one of his is number five and it was sold for $200 million. Like, 2015, and you don't have to go far for another Jackson Pollock one that sold for two uh, hundred. Sorry, 140 million. Because oh, once you go. adjust for inflation, then it starts to get a bit crazier. Um, yeah, like they're expensive. They cost a lot of money. I mean, to bear in mind, like 200 million dollars, you can make a movie, a big expensive movie for that much money. Mm-hmm. Charlie has been misinformed about modern art. He said Jackson Pollock a bunch, but not exactly a fair example using one of the most well-known artists in America. That doesn't change anything. I don't, I don't even know why you would say that. Like, all he needs to show is that art that he thinks is shit is selling for a lot of money. You saying, yeah, but he's famous, if anything, just proves the point? No shit mm -hmm. he's gonna sell for a lot. He's not even making the money. He's dead. I don't think- I don't even know what- like, why are you just not addressing his points ever? I don't think there's anything anyone could ever say or any explanation for any of this that would ever actually change my mind on the interpretation of empty canvas work and splatter paintings. It is all trash. If nothing changes Charlie's mind, that's fine. I didn't make this video for Charlie, and I doubt he'll see it. Go to- I mean, there's not much in this video that's going to change his mind. You've not really done you didn't much make of anything many arguments. to do so. No. <laughs> I, the, the, it would be real. When you try to tell us about the artistic integrity of, like, Pollock's work, you said he uses lots of paint and he moves around. And then he moves his arm and walks like that, around the canvas. As I said, that, that, that was just insane in terms of, like, you, you kept that in the video, too. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, one of the, that's, a, that's a nice halo reach, is what that is. <laughs> Learn for yourself. Art is subjective, not in a, I think this is good and I think this is bad way, but in a way that's unique to everyone. Your appreciation okay. and your taste in art is reflective of your subjective experience, your identity, your personality. These are all factors in observing art. And I think it's- Right, and his, and all of that has fed into him thinking that this is bullshit. Yeah, I was gonna say, none of this contradicts anybody yet. More important, yeah, experience this... and think for yourself rather than letting you don't do that. You explicitly <laughs> told us you have to get explanations. <laughs> That's right, you need the explanations. I don't even like it's, it's and actually and unbelievable. Again, it couldn't be that it couldn't be that Charlie came to this conclusion on his own, or hell, you know, maybe some of the propaganda reached him, but he also had other propaganda reach him and just other. <laughs> earnest perspectives reach him and then he came to this conclusion um yeah just you know psa don't be like this guy don't decide that art is worthwhile or not based on its law you can you can decide it for yourself and you can incorporate that you if you are interested based on its own yep you can, exactly I think narratives you like charlie <laughs> look at the art and think about what you think about dictate what you think I'm going to end this video by telling you remember he he didn't even connect charlie with Prager you he just said that was no, the case no he didn't <laughs> or what, what did he say? Sorry, I had the phone.
Well, we're, we're at the conclusion of the video, and we're just pointing out, yeah, like, how, okay. remember, yeah. the, the intro was, like, he connected Charlie with Preggy U, but there was nothing. There was no Because he was a useful idiot, right? He was a useful uh, yeah, fool or something? Useful yeah. idiot, but there's, there's nothing to connect them whatsoever other than Charlie thought Jackson Pollock paintings were shit, and Preggy yeah, U, I guess, I mean, made fun of similar stuff. But, like, there's... But, they, I mean, Jackson Pollock paintings, I think if you showed most people, they wouldn't be that impressed I by think them. That's pretty universal. You can find people who you know, dislike Pollock people. from all walks of life. Yeah, I can, I can imagine so. Regardless whether they're left or right wing or centrist. Because it's yes. not actually like some big political statement, you know, these canvases of art. They, you could try and say it's inherently political. Blah, blah, blah. You could just say that. But the moment you give it this the, 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 the little tiny iota of thought, it doesn't really mean anything about one of my favorite art pieces. It's just a fan. And a oh, for fuck's sake. Box oh, here we go. Awesome. into the wall in the museum like any other. Covered in okay. plexiglass, blowing through just a few holes at the viewer. At first There's glance, it's just a fan in a room. But the description reads... But the lore... Ah, the description <laughs> oh, but the reads. lore. Ah, but the lore of the reads. fan. Yeah. So now, like, at this point, I have completely disconnected from the fan, and I'm just focused on the little story. And that's going to be, like, probably... Is it going to be, like, completely... we should do that, right? Listen to his explanation. Ig like, brush the fan from memory and just listen to the explanation. Do you need right. the fan at that point? Let's let's I'm think about that. I'm already there. I'm oh my already God, here we go. there. Get ready for the lore right. dump, everybody. Soon Is after that, my, uh... Museum like any other. Covered in plexiglass, okay. blowing through just a few holes at the viewer. At first glance, it's just a fan in a room. But the description reads, Soon after the death of his lover, Stephen Arabino from AIDS, Los Angeles conceptual artist Boscovich discovered that Arabino's family had completely cleared out his apartment, including the artist's possessions. Save for the electric box van in this work. An entire person existence and relationship had been erased, like so many were during the AIDS crisis. Voskovich encased the fan in plexiglass as a kind of evidence and created cutouts to allow its circulated air to escape and be felt by the viewer, almost like an exhalation. In a sense, restoring Arabino's breath. At least as a facsimile in memoriam, Voskovich makes a tender, broken-hearted gesture. Wait, in facsimile? Facsimile? I think he means facsimile, yeah. interrupted the story. Yeah, oh, that looks okay, all right. Towards some form gone. of eternal life. Oh, that's it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. okay, but if, oh, if, yeah. if you didn't have the plaque there, how could you have ever possibly well, ascertained that? I feel like it's worth saying straight away, um, that's a better short story than that is as a piece of artwork. Yeah, I think that's yeah, a great absolutely. short story. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a really, that's a great uh, story, but like, I mean, how could I have possibly? It's like, why do we need a fan that? for that almost? How could it's, I have uh... possibly gleaned that just from looking at it for what it was? Yeah. What if someone just didn't have that story? Maybe the plaque fell over or it got delivered to the wrong room or whatever. And, and someone just looked at it and they came up with their own meaning about an enclosed fan and like what it's supposed to mean or whatever. I, yeah, I just. I mean, like, I don't know, I just, like, it feels like we're, we're attaching so little value to being able to look at the piece as it is on its own in a vacuum. Even, even acknowledging that getting the additional context or explanations from either the creator or, you know, like, just anybody else can be valuable, absolutely can be, but like, why are we putting so little stock in being able to extract value from it for what it is on its own? Because sometimes you have to. Sometimes there won't be an explanation or, like, any additional context. Sometimes a creator won't explain what they were intending. Sometimes a creator dies before they could explain it and it's unfinished. I feel like it's probably sometimes a really healthy important. thing to yeah. kind of, like, give the thing itself a lot of, you know, um... I get, I don't know, not, maybe not necessarily reverence, but, like, um... Like, you don't don't lose the the art piece itself you know behind the story or let the story do all the heavy lifting yeah. and that kind of it, thing it feels like we're barely appreciating the work for its own sake which feels like an important part at least to me of like absorbing something that's been created is like what is it you know without any explanation from the creator without any of the explanations that you're going to be getting from people who've, you know, already come to their own conclusions based on, like, what can you draw from it, you personally? Yeah. It feels like, it's it's interesting, because he's trying to put a lot of more stock in the idea of, like, your subjective experience of, you know, consuming art, which, like, I mean, yeah, but 
<laughs> but at the same time, like your process emphasizes heavily, like finding out basically where think. you're meant to focus your attention, how to think about it, what to think about it, rather than developing it on your own. Because without that story, I couldn't have. How could I possibly create? No one could have guessed that. Yeah, no, been even no. close to that. Meanwhile, if I didn't know who made it or the story behind it. Meanwhile, to once again make the point with this lad, I think there's lots that we could discuss as yep. to what it means with what it's doing, especially when in motion, right? Um, and then, if you were curious enough and you were like, what do are, what are some people think about this uh, thing? And read about it, it says, uh, the piece is cold, can't help myself. And, uh, got, uh, for example, um, it goes without saying that there are plenty of theories about what can't help myself is actually about in the comment section. Continuously cleaning up pieces of yourself as you endlessly fall apart, writes one user, hinting at an underlying commentary on mental health. Alone, while everyone watches you and uses you for entertainment. No piece of art has ever emotionally affected me this way uh, as much as this robot arm has. Reads another interpretation. It's programmed to try and contain the hydraulic fluid that's constantly leaking out and required to keep itself running. If too much escapes, it'll die, so it's desperately trying to put itself back together to continue to fight for another day. It's so like, that's super interesting. That's yeah, it, really interesting. it was already fascinating. Oh, and then you get to read these interpretations art. and think about what it is, and you're just like, oh, yeah. this, this is what I love about art. This is great. And the thing is, I feel like, you know, because if I presented one, you could just make th th this is like almost an observation about the nature of, like, existence and kind of, like, persisting to retain a sense of self, you know, as you, like, gradually decay away over time. Like, that it's ultimately like, futile, pointless, fruitless, and eventually you're gonna run out of energy. Like, I feel like that's a reasonable interpretation I could pull from it that in some way kind of differs from the one that was presented there. But I feel like I can actually draw that from this, from this, like, piece of art, essentially. I don't need to be, it, it, it yeah. And yeah, for the record, <laughs> there's, there's loads of examples that I think are great and that I love, but there's also loads of examples that are absolutely horseshit. And it's just like, what the hell is this? And we need a way to be able to distinguish them. And that's probably the main question I, mean, well, I would have for uh, Ethan is, have you ever come across a piece of art that you felt was just bullshit? Yeah, has there ever been one where you thought, mm -hmm, uh, I don't know about or, that one, buddy? do you always wait until you get an explanation of how it was made before you make that call? I just, I don't know. It's uh, it, 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 it's weird that the the additional context behind a work as it is, whether it's a painting, and I guess I presume we would extrapolate this from him to like films, books, and everything. That it's like it is it is incomplete without this information, rather than this being additional information, perspective, and commentary that it's, that you know can whether you agree with it or not can influence your uh, your opinion on it. Yeah, like, exactly, like the Mona Fringy, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I just thought we put some excellent artwork up, you know? I mean, I do like it. So there you go. Do you guys, uh, <laughs> do you guys know Nighthawks? Are you familiar with that painting? Uh, maybe, I'm not sure. Hmm. Because I really like Nighthawks. And I'd be curious if you, oh, no, it's too powerful. Too big. <laughs> yeah. No! Oh, yeah. well, this <laughs> screenshot it or? There's, yeah, oh, it's hold on. I'll, I'll get a. Get a... Here we... God damn it. Hold on. Alright, well, I was going to say anyway that uh, it's quite an intro to the next, the sixth year of e EFAP, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that was something else. That was really uh, in starting strong. We've already got some good memes from that one. We, uh, um, yeah, but that was pretty painful. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but, um, I that really, I think, is in all the years of EFAP that we've done, there is this element of if you're talking about X, you should sort of like I expect you to be an expert or to be learned about it or to be in some way, you know, able to speak on the thing more than a layman. But that was like worse than average. Um, oh, I yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, really yeah, yeah. Like that one. That's a really and, famous and the, one. It's parodied endlessly. Yeah, Simpsons even parodied it. But I guess oh, yeah. the thing would be, like, there's plenty of different interpretations of, of Nighthawks that you can find. But I feel like this is this would be you could you can look at that and like make something of it without 
This room is um, like it's, not like it's essential that someone explains to you what this painting is. It's it, infinitely it frustrating to me. And, a vibe, and there's a story that's present here that you can glean without being told what you're meant to think about it. Well, that's the thing. Imagine like seeing this and being like, "I'm not, I'm not, I haven't, I haven't consumed the art yet." And it's like, "What do you mean?" You're like, well, now I need to look. Yeah, Hopper didn't tell me what I'm meant to think about it, and I didn't consider Nighthawks within the context of all of Hopper's other works. Like, it's essential. I need all of that information. Otherwise, like, I'm not, you know, I, I'm lost. <laughs> I can't make sense of it. Um, also, uh, Solar Sands, if you want to add me on the old Discord, we can get you in for an episode if you want. Apparently he's got some context to add Ooh. for the uh, the video coverage. You can Please do. Get time okay. to wrap it, I imagine, then we can bring you on for um, whatever it is you have a speciality in. Maybe art, maybe... Movies of some kind, TV shows, games, who knows? But we can uh, we can sort it out, because obviously we'll be heading off at this point. Yeah, we've seven done hours. our damage. <laughs> what a was video. That seven? Hmm? Nearly yeah, seven hours. Wow, yeah. look at that. Yeah. Oh, we did it. We did it. We talked. We, we solved art. We figured it out. Yeah, we know that. We, yeah. No thanks from this Ethan fellow. He was um, profoundly uninformed, bizarrely opinionated, uh, tribalistic. Nothing about that struck me as intelligent or insightful. Isn't so, it boring how maybe much... Next time just, uh, maybe next time just elect not to make a video. Isn't it boring how much politics infects videos? I mean, yeah, that one he's... felt like he couldn't even remotely... But then again, if all arts... Pol Damn, man. That sucks for you. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> Sorry, you're so infected by it. <laughs> it's like a virus. Really... What are, what's the political memes of, of Mona Fringy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, until we talk to the artist, we can't possibly know or appreciate right. it. Yeah. And we wouldn't want to get it wrong, so Oof. don't even think yeah, about right. don't even because think about having an interpretation. You can get it wrong, even though it's all based on your like subjective experience of it. You can get it wrong. You kept trying to like yeah, go for like not even true, trying. Yeah. Also, you know, you vinyl figures. Your vinyls. That's right. Yep. Look at that. What a segue. Remember, limited time. <laughs> this is actually the last time uh, we'll Speaking be promoting of art. live on EFAP, because by the time That's we stream right. next, it'll be over. It'll be over, remember, so remember. Yeah. Remember earlier, Robert was saying, you need to buy the good art. You need to encourage that sort of thing. Go, yeah. go and buy the good yeah. stuff. Let me tell you, this is the good stuff right here. Yeah, and there's only, the what, memes. four and a half more days? You got four and a half days, and then that's it. Then, then yep, they're gone over. forever. That's it. They're gone. Like Jackson so, Pollock again, paintings. There's no as we're more new ones. Of the stream, if you were thinking about it and you were sort of holding off and you were waiting and you were pondering it, um, that, you know, you still got time, but you are Do running it. out of time. So you are running yeah, out. Yeah, like don't procrastinate. If you, if you wanna, you'll forget. If you want to grab them. That's right, and then you'll be really sad. And remember, you get all, all three of them together because you get a big old discount, and they you do. They belong you together. You know? yeah, we, yeah, we do belong together, as if the last seven yeah. hours wasn't proof you enough know, that we belong together. When you've got together. all three of them together, they they form their own grander, broader, you know, artistic... Metatron. It's, it's, they make a statement together, yeah. Good stuff. Yes, Buy them, please. Got, they help us out a lot. We uh, appreciate uh, yeah. seeing them out there. And uh, you will be sad if you don't get them. It's true. I mean, Scientifically when, verified. I mean, I mean, I'll, yeah, I, I, yeah. Like, I think they look really great. I'm really happy with how they're They do look out. really excellent. Make sure really hit it out of the park once again with these. Mm -hmm. So yeah, patronize the good. So, yeah, link in the description. Go to, go take a look. Uh, if you were thinking about grabbing them now, now it's now or never. Basically, it is now or never. That's true. I will say uh, we got. Uh, it'll be a meme fap next. Uh, so Ooh, the following right. Saturday, and the Saturday after that, uh, well, there's like three different episodes of three different guests I'm trying to set up, so mm. EFAP will be good for a while in terms of uh, crazy events, and from what I understand, you know, we're, we're, we're running low on new releases for movies, so we'll just have to check out some videos, I guess. I yeah. guess so. Yeah, Never a shortage of people who, uh, have who, opinions. You know, who, yeah, who have opinions. You know, uh, like Ethan here, uh, he had a lot of opinions. <laughs> a lot of opinions on art. Some of them... Not as crazy as others. We'll, we'll say that. Yeah, that's a nice way to put it. Yeah. Um, and of course, uh, recordings still continue on them super chats, but uh, we've we finished up the anniversary ones. That'll be out Wednesday, and then uh, yeah, we're just we... getting chugging away on uh, all the episodes, getting them all done. Obviously, like and, I said. Oh uh... uh, yeah. Sorry, it sounded like you had more. I was just gonna add something else. Uh, like I said, the vinyls have four and a bit days left. 
So links right. in description, links easily findable, makeshift vinyl figure. It's all there. About to run mm -hmm. out, and then um yeah, like the this this good old EFAP EV episodes on the way for Ahsoka as well. Yeah. I know uh, you guys um are unhappy at the idea that episode four is out and episode one just came out, but as you probably noticed, the editing is top notch, so it takes time. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, it's uh, but episode two with quicker. It's it's very nearly done. Uh, it'll be out soon, and then obviously straight on to episode three. Yeah, episode three we'll will be quick because that, that episode that was wasn't very long. long. Yeah, thankfully, but uh, episode four was a bit of a chunga, so uh, <laughs> it's a bigger episode, a lot of discussion. So you know. Yeah, so yeah, the... on their way, and I hope you enjoy them. And apparently, five is going to have big happenings in it. So, oh. Ooh, wow. of course it is. Of course it is, dude. This show, man, it's so bad. Yeah. Like, and by by the way, guys, when it comes to like trying to actually edit these episodes, it is unbelievable. Like how many dr big pauses there are between every sentence that you can just like whoop, chop them out. Yeah. And and then of course to illustrate how long those pauses are is. It's so long. Remember the part when, uh, like Ahsoka was talking to our uh, what's her name as they were traveling through that, uh, that that facility where they were building the ships, and it's like, you know, Sabine's not ready to be a Jedi, and then there's a big pause. I'm curious. Big pause. <laughs> How do you know when someone's ready? Big pause. You just know, and then about twenty seconds of pause for the rest of the scene as it lingers out, and then we cut to the next scene. Oh, just wonderful. I love it. I love all of That's the That's good writing. That's really it's good great. writing. It's, yes, it's building, it's building character, you know? It's just building It so is. It's it just so is. It is. You know, when, when the characters are just walking towards each other for like a minute, holding their lightsabers out, it's really, it's really brilliant and inspired. You don't want to overdo it. You oh, don't want to get a, a coolness overdose. You got to pace them out. I wish to have it on record that since the release of Quantumania, I've been trying to sort out the Halloween arc for this year, and it has been a fucking nightmare. Absolute crazy nightmare. The copyright protection on this series of films has been insane. You'll be finding out what it is probably in like 10, 15, 15 days, I think we'll put out a trailer for what it is, kind of like last Ooh. time with the... We did one for Final Destination Resident Evil, but it'll be a new franchise this year. There will be 10 films in total for this franchise. Oh, and this oh, franchise don't you go complaining! Whoever the fuck organizes this franchise in whatever particular way of a copyright on YouTube kicked my ass hardcore to the point where it was picking up like four seconds. It was insane. And uh, I have had to do some... This is like a warning ahead of time. You won't see the first one until the end of... Probably the end of September. But that uh, the copyright protection is insane in these videos. You've never seen it this bad. And just trust me, it's what had to be, okay? <laughs> like, it'll be annoying. You'll rarely be able to see a lot of what's even happening in the films. But hopefully the most important parts are shown. You can still kind of make it out with the cover. But my god. Sometimes it would be, like, all covered. And then the, the copyright thing will be like, Oh, this selection of ten minutes. It's just like, how could you possibly have clipped all of that? Most of that isn't even the film. It's just like, yeah, well, fuck you. It's like, okay. You have to go heavy and crazy on it. A lot of speculation here. I'm seeing some scary movies. Saw, Halloween, Long War. I don't know what that is, but... Long War? Could be any of them. As, as per usual, you'll get your, uh, your trailer, and it'll confirm it. And, uh, well, hopefully you guys enjoy. This one has been worked on by several editors. And, uh, well, we're looking forward for you to see it. Halloween is set to be a lot of fun this year, I think. Hooray! Also, thank oh, you very much. Yeah. A lot of people bought the figures already. <laughs> it's, uh... Absolutely, oh, yeah. Really? Thanks, guys. Like, <laughs> thanks, guys. Seriously, oh, yeah. like we we have fun and everything, but they really do help us out a lot. They're a, they're a huge help to us, and we love we love supporting Makeship because they do incredible work with these. So huge props to those guys. Yeah. And again, like it really does help us out a lot. Um, and boy, do you get something for your money? These are great. <laughs> I've got all mine up here. On my little loft ledge, and boy, they look great! Just a big lineup of all my, uh, all my friends, and it looks yeah, I great. Got a whole bunch of my plushies just <laughs> around in the office. Last one I got was my, I got my RimWorld Thrumbo, and uh, all the boys. It's great. Yeah, get them, help them out. Yeah, seriously, awesome. thank you. The, the support thank is you. super duper appreciated. Thank you, it's, thank uh, you. It's very really much. cool that you guys like these so much. Mm -hmm. And well, I suppose. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to talk about before we head out? No, just um, it it I I seem to always be well not always. We have um, 
it, it makes well, videos like this really appreciate the way that we engage in art and sort of, I guess, challenge the way that we perceive it, the questions we ask ourselves and each other, how we just how we discuss the entirety of the topic, because so many people seem to have these bizarre um, like they have this at the same time, it's overly broad and tunnel vision at the same time. There's no consistency with the way that they view the topic. And I mean, I, I think we do a really good job sort of, you know, g giving these things good discussions because, boy, Ethan is uh. Well, what a mess. <laughs> what a mess. So hopefully he gets his shit together. And, uh, you, know, you know, good luck to him. He's got a lot to learn. Sure, He's got plenty of great videos to come. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. he's, I'm sure he's got... It, this was just the bad one. The rest are total bangers. Yeah, I'm they sure they're all great. great. Yep. Yep, they're all cool. great I will never watch them, but, you know... No, I'm I'll sure never watch them, no. So sometimes sure the low fine. is so low that you just... I have better things to do. But maybe I'll check out Solar Sands. He's got some Jackson Pollock stuff and some art discussion. Mm. So then he was referenced in the video. So who knows? Perhaps we shall see him here in the future. <laughs> who knows? But yeah. yeah. For now, toodly pip, cheerio. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah, we'll see everybody. you next time. Bye, everyone. We'll see you later. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye. bye, -bye. Toodaloo.